Does this work? It's been a while since I did one of these. I forget how to even make it work. One way to find out, I guess. All right, I can hear myself. I see myself. You're not able to see the view outside because of lighting, unfortunately. Looks like we might just have a kitty coming over in a moment. I had to get this. Yeah, you know, when I got this place, I wanted to have a dedicated room just for doing videos or streaming because, like, who the fuck needs multiple bedrooms before they have kids? But the thing is, the downstairs room that I have is... It just doesn't have the natural light that you have up here. So I don't like using it for almost anything. Because, like, I feel like I got this place literally for one room. And it was worth it. It's worth it. I think I showed you some of the views in the last video. I only showed you a portion of it, but it gets better than that. Are you natty? I don't really have muscles anymore. You know, like, I think the peak for me was the beginning of 2022. I was able to bench press 225, touch the chest, no cheating, no bullshit, for 11 reps. Like, 9 to 11, and the one time I got 11. Right now, I probably couldn't even do more than 6. Uh, I, I kind of feel like I, I, I had a lot of stress in the months between September to December that kind of made up for a lot of that. So, did you know that purely by soldering a wire to your MacBook motherboard, you're in fact turning it into a PC? You know, what really drives me nuts more than anything is that I did not have that on recording. So the two things that, like when I did my real estate series, uh, one of the things that I did is I was going, you know, before I started that series, I had somebody laugh at me. They actually said, ah, this is your dream, your dream, uh, that you must be dreaming. He's like, ah, oh, yes, fine. you know, screw your dream, something like that. And I forget exactly what he said, but it was something, it was the place that wound up becoming a Popeyes on First Avenue around Second Street. He was, he literally laughed in our face. And I said, this is, I'm, I'm recording every single one of these next time. And that's what happened with the hearings. In 2015, there was an assembly person that said that a lobbyist said that if I solder a wire into a MacBook or I replace a fuse or a chip, I'm essentially converting the MacBook into a PC, but I'm defrauding my customers because I'm pretending that it's still a MacBook when it is not still a MacBook, which was just the biggest pile of shit I had ever heard in my life. And I just, I, so ever since then, then I've recorded all of the hearings that I go to. But one of the things that I will always regret is that I did not record that first one. Why are you always angry? I don't know what you mean by always. I think that you see me for about six minutes every two days. There are an entirely other 23 hours. It's about 23 hours and 54 minutes to my day that you don't see. So usually, you know, I come on here, I talk about something that, uh, I, that I value, that I care about, and usually what you see, the thing about anger is I think anger is a natural line of defense of your human dignity. So if a company says that you're a scammer it's, and they have no evidence for that claim, it's natural to become angry in defense of your human dignity. You know, I think that anger is unhealthy if you're like, you have a discussion with your wife about, um, you know, something like, how long you should spend helping your child with your homework and you, you know, you break the coffee maker. Like, that's unhealthy anger. But, you know, becoming angry at a company or a person who has cheated you, who has screwed you, who has lied about you, who has slandered you, I don't think that that's unhealthy at all. And, you know, one of the things is that like, literally the moment I turn off a video where I've talked about something like that, I usually go outside of my balcony and look at the, look at the lake or everything else, sip my overpriced H-E-B coffee, and I enjoy Life's pretty good. Life has its ups and downs, but it's pretty good. But I think it's really important to, sp to separate becoming angry at something that genuinely deserves it and the type of anger that's unhealthy, that leads to abuse, that leads to uh, breaking things, that leads to scarring your children as a result of screaming at them. There's actually a video I did a while back uh, on this entire concept. Let me see if I can find it. I have not even added my new scenes in OBS because this is such a new computer here and a setup that I never really made the time for it. So let me, let me see if I can add my browser scene so I can show you what I'm talking about. Because this is, this, I think this is an important one. One sec, we're just gonna copy the scenes over to here. Please, God, for the love of God, tell me I don't have shit I'm not supposed to have on my fucking screen. I always, this always happens when I wanna show you something. Uh, it's, it's very, very, very bad. Uh, let's see, so the, the, I'll show you the type of anger that I think is very unhealthy in a moment. This was actually a popular video that I did where, you know, I, told, I asked some people if they would leave my store because of the way that they were screaming at their children. Uh, okay, that's not it. Here we go. Let's do this. And let's put this down. Run for local office. Use power for good. I don't believe that I really have the ability. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't think that I would win, and I think that 
Uh, the thing is, people see one side of me, but they don't see the rest of my beliefs. And no, essentially, the problem with running for office, and the reason I think so many people despise people that run for office in general, is because at the end of the day, y you have to be okay with having power over other people. You know, you have to be okay with uh, the idea that, like, I get to say how your money is spent. And a lot of people don't like that because they don't feel like, you know, having somebody else say how their money should be spent. It's a, it's a very... It is, there's a reason that people hate politicians to the degree that they do. So, let me... Okay, so this is the video, Don't Scream Around Children. So essentially, if you are the type, well, if you're the type of person that is uh, so angry that you regularly are, are like, you know, so you, don't, you didn't get your way with a conversation or, you know, somebody is, is talking when they're not supposed to and you scream and you yell and you berate and you beat them, uh, that's the type of anger that I think really uh, is, is fundamentally inappropriate and I, I really don't feel bad for people that... Um, that, uh, that, that see co consequences in their own life because of the way that they've let out their anger. But I think anger is a natural line of defense against uh, when somebody's insulted your human dignity, and I think it's a completely proper emotion. And I think we live in a world where people don't get angry when they should. And even necessarily being angry, it doesn't mean that you scream, it doesn't mean that you break things, it doesn't mean that your blood pressure goes up, it simply is a, a defense of your human dignity. Anyway. Just wanted to ask, is anything repairable or replaceable in the 2020 MacBook Air M1? I honestly, it's a MacBook. I'll just leave it at that. It's a MacBook. What do you think about Brave's mishaps, and do you trust it? I mean, it's open source. You don't really have to, like, it's, it's one of the things about software being open source is there's not really a large requirement for trust. You can see what they're doing. And if at any given time you're not particularly happy with what they're doing, you can uh, move on to something else. I have Firefox, Brave, and Brave, and Chrome installed on my machine. I use Chrome on those like 1% of occasions where I just want to test that something is not breaking because I'm using a, a not natural browser. And I switch back and forth between Firefox and Brave from time to time. I don't have a relationship with the quartering. I guess, you know, I don't really care if people use aspects from my videos, talk about my videos, or anything like that. But I'm very much like a... I don't, I don't usually, yeah, I'm not, not much when it comes to talking with, having relationships with other YouTubers in general. Uh, like, there's, there's a couple that I know in real life. Like, I have a lot of respect for Rich Rebuilds. I have a lot of respect for Jessa Jones. And they're people that I actually know and talk to uh, outside of YouTube. But in terms of, like, other people, I'm just not really. What operating system do you use? Uh, did you see my email about Tesla publishing semantics? but also charging 165 per day for toolbox mode. I did, and that's something that I wanted to talk to Rich about because I really kind of wanted to understand it better before discussing it, but I haven't had the time to. Is there a possibility of Grey coming an iPhone if Apple allows third-party applications in their platform in good faith? Uh, you know, one of the reasons that I don't spend a lot of time thinking about hypotheticals is because, like, get, is there a chance of this happening, like, like, it's kind of like saying, if Shakira were open to going on a date with you, would you be open to marrying her? Like, when you have ifs that are just that far off from happening, I don't see it as a good use of time to think about. Is the migrating of the articles complete? No, there's a lot left to do. It. He, uh, I've been a really bad administrator that wiki, and I, yeah, that sucks. But you keep records, that makes you 100% better. Records of what? I'm confused. I don't like vinyl very much. That's going to piss people off. <laughs> Have you heard about the EU law in the making? Does man's manufacturers to offer repair for a reasonable price? If so, any thoughts? I mean, the, you know, the thing that I think is going to fail with a lot of stuff like that. I called you once and you have been angry with me on the phone for asking prices. Now, you are you're probably being an asshole. Uh, I don't know who you are. If I had your phone number, I could look up the call recording and I could play it live, but I... Uh, 99, I'm very, very patient with customers on the phone. I've actually spent, at times I've spent 15 minutes uh, talking with people who had absolutely no intention of using our services, who just wanted to know how to fix something themselves. And I'm, I, in fact, you know, that's one, of the, that's one of the areas I'm actually the most reasonable. If you called my business and I've been angry at you, you were probably being an entitled little cock rag. But that's, that, that, that's, I, I don't buy that at all. I've, I'm, I'm exceptionally patient with people on the phone. Did you know that in 2022, photography bag manufacturer Lowepro made four videos explaining how to clean and repair their backpacks? I did not, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, mo that is awesome. I, I'll, I will look into that. I don't have photography bags, but I do have backpacks and laptop bags. And if that's the case, I would actually want to write them down so that I'm going to write them down right now so I have a note for them in the future in case I want to use them. Uh, Lowepro bags. 
look into. Get one. Yeah, the thing is, I'm, I'll happily spend three times the price to buy something from a company like that just to support people who are trying to do the right thing rather than buy some cheap-ass Amazon shit. Uh, let's see. You're in a live. It's not pre-recorded. Correct. Hi, Lewis. I work in IT for a very large repair warranty company. Companies like Apple prefer to partner with other large companies. They can control their influence. What are your thoughts? You know, there's one company that I went over a while back. I forget the exact name of it. It starts with an S. Um, uh, let's see. It starts with an S. It's in the tip of my tongue. Where? What was the name of this? C, okay, no, and it had an S in it, CSAT Solutions. So this was an employee interview with an Apple warranty services contractor. There's this uh, illusion that people have. What do you think of undercover journals like James O'Keefe or Project Veritas? Would you support that method to get info for right to repair? Uh, the idea of, of hiding a camera and talking to people, I think, sometimes is good, sometimes... I, I'm, I'm a fan, I don't mind there being more information out there than less. I, I honestly have not kept up with any of that stuff, and I don't really watch that stuff. I try, like, for my own mental sanity, I try to avoid going down those rabbit holes. But the the very, very base that I know about him is, like, you know, he'll hide a recorder somewhere, I'll have a conversation, and I'll post it. Uh, some people will say, wow, that's revo revolutionary. Wow, we got some really good information. Other people say, that's all out of context. And again, at the end of the day, I think it's up to the individual to decide what they think of that particular phone conversation. And one of the things that, like, I would be open to that. And, you know, in fact, that's really one of the things that I was trying to do when I started recording all these hearings because a lot of the stupid shit you'll hear people say, uh, they know, the thing that I find interesting about it is they know they're being recorded and they say this shit anyway, which is really, really amazing to me. It's like, it's not even like you have to hide the camera. You know, when they say that, the, that the game will play the console, the magnetometer will explode, they install TikTok on your phone, all this shit that you hear them say, Clinty, I just put you on camera. Why are you running away, Clinty? Clinty, psst, psst, psst. come back. They, they say all that shit when they know that somebody is, is recording them. So I can only imagine what they say when they don't think somebody's recording them. But I'm always for more information rather than less. Uh, there, was a couple of, there were a couple of other conversations. There was one that I had. Uh, th this was a really fun one. Anyway, with CSAT, I think that the point is with those, a lot of people think that when you go to Apple to have something fixed, that it's being fixed by like, you know, the engineer that made the device with everything. Like, it isn't. It's, fi it's being worked on by a contractor that pays people horribly, that has like, you know, a facility of like 300 people in a couple of bathrooms. It's, it's really not uh, what people think. So anyway, back to the, so one of the things that I did, one of the recordings that I had, Let's, let's find this. This is my purse. This is the most fun one that I ever did. This one is called Farm Bureau Claims Farmers Don't Want to Fix Their Stuff. Leaked Lobbyist Email and Phone Call. I'll post this in the chat because this was actually an example of that type of um, journalism that I think was really useful. What I did was I called a member of the Farm Bureau. I'm not a member of the Farm Bureau. I called a lobbyist for the Farm Bureau and I had a long conversation with him because he had emailed me and he had said that, you know, you're not going, uh, like, you know, farmers don't really want to fix their own stuff. And I just kind of thought to myself, man, I bet Kevin Kenny probably has some shit to say about that. And uh, I, I spoke to him and he said some really radical shit. And I just, and you know, I didn't release the phone call at the time. And I felt horrible that I didn't release the phone call at the time because my lobbyist was just suggesting that I play the game. But in reality, by, by not releasing that phone call, I essentially, uh, I accepted their premise and let them win. I should have released that as soon as possible. How goes Texas? Got to go to any ranches yet and go hunting. You know, I've been to some. I've, 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 I've been to some interesting places. And I really, um, yeah, like I, what I've been trying to do is every weekend I drive out to the absolute middle of nowhere. Like I've been to, you know, like, I don't know, I guess Mason, Hico. I, I, I'll just go to some random small town in the middle of nowhere and just kind of drive around, say hello to some people, you know, walk, like walk into, a, walk into a restaurant, go to a park. Just like sit by a lake or something. What do you think of Samsung's S24 AI features that require paid membership after two years? I mean, I don't have a problem with people charging money for services. Like, of all the things that I have a problem with when it comes to Samsung, that really isn't one of them. Like, you know, I've paid for AI products before. There's a Fast something, I forget the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, there's ChatGPT. Like, I've, I have no problem paying for services. The problem that I have with, with Samsung in general is the fact that I can't install an operating system of my choice in the device, no headphone jack, no micro SD card slot, tried to destroy the entire independent repair industry by essentially taking to court every single fucking company that's ever sold an aftermarket LCD AMOLED screen by claiming that it infringes on their patents and that they're the only ones that should be allowed to sell or make screens for their devices. Uh, you know, 
astroturfing Reddit. Uh, there's a lot of th and lobbying gets right to repair by claiming that we are going the, they're going to install TikTok on people's phones and then installing TikTok on people's phones themselves. There's a lot of stuff that Samsung has done that I don't like, but charging for a service that they I, I just I don't I don't really. It's not something that, that, that really like gets to me and bothers me. What phone do you use? Essentially, they all suck. This is a Pixel 7. I've got like three or four different phones, and they're all used. I, I try to avoid buying any of this shit new because I, I feel sick supporting the manufacturer of any of these garbage devices. Uh, this, you know, you can install operating systems of your choice a little bit easier on the Pixel than on other devices, uh, which is one of the things that I like about it. The problem with the Pixel is even though you can install operating systems of your choice a little bit easier, is that you don't get a radio. If, if you're, you, you, like if you stand on, this is kind of like a 1980s phone, like you stand under a tree and you no longer get 5G. Google is very, very stubborn. They don't want to use Qualcomm chipsets. And while Qualcomm is not exactly the best company for certain other reasons, when it comes to making radios that are good, they're damn good. And everybody that's tried to not use a Qualcomm Qualcomm radio, whether it's Apple with the iPhone 7 with the Intel series, where not only did you have the issue of you know them having to throttle the Qualcomm ones just so that the Intel phones wouldn't seem like shit, but you also had the issues the base bands were dying on them. Uh, this thing, like again, I don't think I've ever had this phone with 5G in the entire time I've owned it where I had more than one bar. Uh, even with when you turn off uh, 5G, which most people have to do in order to actually use the Pixel series of phones because they use these garbage radios. Uh, you see, there's a lot of trade-offs in general. Uh, so I chose this trade-off because I can install an operating system of my choice. Again, uh, installing Lineage, Calyx, Graphene, whatever the hell you want on a Pixel is fairly easy, and it's fairly easy to like get, get rid of the crap that you don't want on there. There are a couple of studies that I've linked to in older videos where I talked about Calyx OS and Graphene OS. So you can really see the, the extent of data that just gets sent uh, when you use a Samsung stock phone, and it does suck. It's not, it's not great. I'm not a fan of that. Kitty! My kid, literally, the moment that I moved the camera so that the kitty could be in view, the kitty ran away. Congrats on two million. Thank you. I admire the hell out of your pragmatic and stoic approach to life. Thank you. Uh, I don't think you should look up to me personally, but uh, I appreciate it. I want your reaction to the Drake leak. Honest, dude, I don't, I, don't, I really don't, um, I, I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't really talk. I try to avoid paying attention to, to like, grown men that text 15-year-old girls. Like, he, he has that, like, fuck Drake. Just fuck trick. Why do you complain about government overreach, especially in a small business, while advocating for government overreach? You know, when a company says there's a drawing that we've created, and if, if you were to show this drawing to somebody that you can be put in prison because of intellectual property law, when a company says if this company tries to sell me a chip that they can uh, be taken to court because of intellectual property law, uh, I you know I, I don't accept the premise because essentially when you're, when you're talking about government overreach and you're talking about right to repair, you're specifically talking about companies that have gone out of their way to use the power of the government to make it more difficult for us to do repairs to begin with. They started this, not us. They're the ones that would uh, send takedown notices to Kyle at iFixit because somebody posted a page of a fucking schematic that shows a refuse was. They were the ones that were paying Patrick and Townsend $1,200 an hour to send me notices asking me to take down my videos. So I would ask that you take that shit and, uh, and, and, and shove it personally. You know, when I talk about government overreach, I talk about businesses being fined for things they didn't do. I talk about laws that uh, a government cannot cite when they are finding you, when I ask how do you obey this law and they can't answer my question, when I talk about uh, governments that you can pay your taxes in 2012 and uh, as far as 2023, they put liens and warrants on your business for not paying those taxes that you have receipts for having paid 11 years ago that you don't even realize are on your business because they don't tell you when they send, your, they send the correspondence to a P.O. box 600 miles away in a state that you've never been to. That's different than saying, hey man, you have gone out of your way to make it as difficult as possible to repair properties products that we own. You're kind of trying to erode property rights, and you're trying to use the DMCA, use intellectual property law, use the, the, this type of legislation to stop innovation, and more importantly, to stop the concepts of, of, of property in general. Let's put a stop to that. Those are two very different things, and to not notice the difference between those things is, is, means that you either lack an ability to, uh, to work with nuance in general, or you're just a low-quality troll. Or maybe you're just that dumb. But again, this is a YouTube comment section. So... I'm cutting myself from streaming services and going with Flack for music. Any software suggestions for playing Flack and Linux? I currently use VLC. VLC is a fine piece of software. You know, you have Audacious, which is pretty good. I use Rhythmbox just because the, the GUI is, is somewhat usable. I kind of like Rhythmbox, but I'm, I'm always going to have a soft spot in my heart for FUBAR 2000. It's one of the, like, I, since switching to Linux, essentially, I've been able to find software that does everything that I need. So I used Linux in 2002, 2003, and I used it up until 2015. When I started doing video streaming, I switched back to Windows, and then I just got so sick and fucking tired of dealing 
dealing with Windows 10 that I switched back to Linux full time in 2020. But the one thing that I miss from the five years that I did use Windows is FUBAR 2000. FUBAR 2000 is the best by far, and not having it is, uh, is, is yeah, it, it kind of does make me a little sad. I miss FUBAR 2000. Collaboration with Occurs Farms and Gas when uh, I don't understand acronyms. I don't. I, I don't really do collaborations with people, to be honest with you. I'm just not a collaboration kind of person. Like you know, if if I know somebody, like my 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 YouTube channel is really just a. It's not scripted. It's just a process of me living my life and talking about whatever is going on at the time. I don't. So I I don't particularly. Yeah, I I don't really uh like I don't script collaborations. I don't arrange them or anything like that. It's just. Where is Blackberry? Blackberry's sitting on the other couch. Her, she, she sits over there. She sits on top of the... So I have this chair, and then I have a love seat over there, and she sits on the top. Do you see Fairphone release schematics with Fairphone 5? Would you consider dialing it? You know, I actually emailed them, because they said that they released schematics, and I thought that was pretty cool, in spite of the bullshit that they did about the headphone jack. The schema them releasing schematics kind of balances out with them lying about their reason for not putting out a headphone jack, and I, admittedly, I do kind of put them ahead of a lot of other companies there. So I actually asked them about buying a phone. To be clear, I did not want to do some sponsored shit where, like, they send me a phone. I actually wanted to pay full price for it, but it doesn't seem like the Fairphone 5 works in the U.S. yet, and when it does, I'd be happy to buy one and pay full price and give it a shot. What Linux distribution do you use? I can't answer that question. It's kind of like asking, like, what what news uh, what news magazine do you read? What 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 uh, news do you watch? Like stuff like that. You essentially, no matter what you answer, people will always um, like rage at you. So I no no distribution wars here. Have you heard of any good open source car radio with GPS, Bluetooth, etc.? I've hated my car radio and decided to build one using a Raspberry Pi 4B and uh, some acronym shit I don't remember. No, I, I have not, unfortunately. I have not. I'm sorry. You know Amazon Basics stole Peak Design's bag and then got trolled by Peak Design for stealing the bag design? Amazon tends to steal a lot of stuff, and I'm really hoping... Like, the thing is, I always kind of wondered how Amazon would work as a business model. And like back 11 years, no, 10 years ago when I did that video, yeah, 11 years ago when I did the video on how they screw over suppliers, I honestly thought maybe I was wrong about it until recently where I realized you really can't buy a lot of good quality stuff on Amazon anymore. Like for so many different things, the stuff you get is actual garbage. And I really do think that's going to start biting them in the ass very soon. Like, I, you know, th there's not a lot of value in Amazon Prime anymore. It doesn't matter if you can get things with next day shipping for free. Uh, if, if all the items you can get with next day shipping for free don't work, I would rather take a 40 minute drive to Home Depot than save the 40 minutes. I'd rather wait a week to get the right thing from Home Depot via ordering it than get the wrong thing via Amazon three times in a row because I purchased a product that fundamentally lied about its capabilities. How do you like people in Texas? What's the price about regional differences, pro or con? I, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't think really think it was a surprise. You know, I kind of, you know, a little bit more friendly, a little bit more open and, uh, you know, this, this, you can't really generalize. Like, do you live by a lake? Do you live in downtown Austin? Do you live in Hico? Like, there's, you know, there's all different types of people depending on where you are. My workplace has an educational STEM lab. Their policy is that anything created there is their intellectual property. How does that make you feel? Uh, I could understand if a company like Texas Instruments does that. You know, for instance, like I've spoken to people at TI about working on certain projects that I've recruited uh, for, for other people before. I'm not going to talk get go into detail with that, where they'll say, like, anything that you create while you work here is TI's intellectual property. And I can understand, you know, again, if you're paying somebody $250,000, $350,000, $450,000 a year, saying, while well, we're paying you this fuck ton of money, what you create is our intellectual property. But when you're paying for a school, when you're paying, again, you, they're not paying you you're paying them i think that that's disgusting and i would probably try to go out of my way to never use it fuck them do you know any way to make the google pixel 7 output hdmi from USB-C? been looking but can't find a solution i do not because i've never had the desire to do that i use my computer to output to my television and monitor and i use my phone as a phone to you know look at it as a phone i wouldn't want to do the rest I've heard a lot of negative stuff from Apple before watching your videos. About what? If you were ESN, what laws and regulations did you try pushing for? Don't know. When and why did you go back to the ThinkPad after the framework? Uh, the pr well, I still have my framework. It's sitting right over there. I, uh, the thing that, that I, I still use that. But the, problem, the thing is, so there's two things. So the first is I used to have four servers in my closet. 
Surprised that you related Yarhar activity to FF9, my favorite game. Yeah, yeah, I think I actually included a thing from Necron in a recent video that I did a few weeks ago. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I had my ThinkPad was being used as a, as a Nextcloud server in my closet. I had another laptop that I was using as a free PBX machine. I had another machine that I was using as a NAS. Oreo, stop that shit. I don't mind a cat meowing, but when he does the screaming and cry, Oreo, stop that shit. Cut that out. He does this thing where he like, does this ridiculous whiny cry, and it just drives me insane. Uh, so so I, I set up one server that has like a 55,000 CPU benchmark score with 64 gigs of RAM, a bunch of NVMe SSDs, and uh, two, uh, almost 200 terabytes of storage with uh, XFS and um, uh, no, ZFS for RAID with like four redundant drives. It's fucking gorgeous. So I virtualized all my other stuff onto that one machine, and because everything's virtual, like I had a mess. I really did. I just never had the time to set up stuff properly. So I had like four different laptops that I used to use that I was using for random servers, like uh, you know, again, my phone system for work, uh, my my system for notes and contacts, and my calendar because fuck if I'm using Google for that. My system for storing photos because you don't have a fucking micro SD card slot in these phones anymore. Uh, PF Sense router, Open VPN server all that shit. So I, I virtualized all that stuff on a one very, very powerful machine that has a ton of redundancy, and now I have my laptop back. I really, really missed the track point. So I still use the framework, but I need my track point. Like with Linux, palm rejection is a joke. It sucks, it's horrible, and like, especially in XFCE, which is my favorite. You get better palm rejection if you use GNOME, but then you're stuck using GNOME, and GNOME hasn't been, GNOME hasn't been good since two. Thoughts about Ace Magic PC implementing malware? I have never heard of that in my life, and I feel bad. I will read your stuff eventually if you get to it in the free chat. You don't have to give me money to answer the question, but I highly appreciate it. But I don't know what that is. I've never heard of it in my life. Uh, I've no, I don't know what an Ace Magic is, and yeah, I haven't bought a pre-built computer like that, except maybe I bought an Intel Nook. I don't really know if that even counts. I haven't bought like pre-built computers for 15 years, so yeah, over 15 years, actually. Yeah, I'm, I need the track point. Like, I have my trackpad turned off in the BIOS. Trackpads suck. I just can't use them. Having a track point is beautiful. The other thing is, in order to use DaVinci Resolve in Linux, you need a discrete GPU. Uh, it, with Windows, you can use DaVinci Resolve, which is my favorite video editor, because it has never crashed in four years. Never crashed in four years. Good luck saying that if you're a Vegas or Adobe whatever the hell user. Thank you for continuing to be passionate about right to repair, data privacy, and our rights to consumers. Thank you for speaking up, you and prior odds. I appreciate that, and I appreciate the $5. Thank you very much. But admittedly, at the end of the day, I would be lying to you if I said I was as passionate about right to repair now as I was 10 or 5 years ago. I feel like I've kind of gotten blackpilled at the reality that there's just... It, a lot of that is just kind of lost, unfortunately, at the end of the day. Uh, that's not the answer that people like. It's not the answer you're supposed to give. But, yeah, i got to be honest with you. Like, I've always tried to be honest with you. I'm just not as... Ex I, I, don't, I don't share the excitement that, that I did at one point in time. Um... I forget what I was talking about before that. What AI were you building your repair assistant on top of? I do not know yet. I'll be honest with you. I'm still in the data collection phase. So I wanted to do this project just because I kind of wanted to up my skills and like I just wanted to you know up my skills with SQL, Python, data engineering, and all that type of shit. I like I like to have fun with stuff every now and then. Like when I really went crazy with my free PBX setup and tried to get my caller ID working on my CRM system and all that shit eight years ago. Sometimes you just kind of get bored doing board repair all day and doing the same shit all day, and you kind of want to broaden your horizons. So what I'm really focusing on right now, again, I literally have not gotten to the point of model training. I had an appointment yesterday with somebody who kind of professionally does that, who also wants to talk to me later this week, who, you know, really cool dude, uh, and I, maybe I'll talk about it when it's done. I was thinking of Mistral 7B, but right now I'm really just in the data collection phase. Like, I have to define what 6,000 signals do. I have to grab all of my threads. After I grab all of my threads, I have to then annotate and say, here are the definitions for all these random jargon terms. So what I want to do is I want to have a base of really good data before I even get anywhere to the training phase, so that I can try different AI models, try different LLMs, and see which one works. But in order to really do that, I need to have a, a, a good base, and I'm still working on that, and I'm slow. How would you, because I'm kind of a shit programmer, uh, how would you go about telling people not to support a company? I oftentimes try to make my friends stop it. They have too much trust in them. I, in my opinion, I would not try to make people do anything. I would present information, and I would let people come to their own conclusions as you present information, but more importantly, as they have their own experiences. You know, if you have somebody, yeah, like I, I, I try to like present cases and you know like I have people come to their own conclusion I'm not going to tell you to stop using something uh, usually unless it's an HP printer that's different what are your thoughts on framework 16 do you think they should make a printer uh, I think it would be cool if they made a printer but I think the reality if they make a printer is that the reason that we have shit printers nowadays is because people want to spend $15 less up front even if it means they'll spend $5,000 more in ink over the course of the next you know two months uh, like I I, re I really think that the reason it is the way it is it's kind of like when I had my supply company and I would make the price of the screen uh, let's say one dollar above somebody else's you know Blitz computers would say we can have up to 15 dead pixels because of ISO standard Blitz 
those computers would say, you pay for shipping both ways, even if the screen that we send you is bad. I would say, I will next day fucking ship you a new one. I will guarantee no stuck pixels. I will include a return label in the box. I cost $1 more than Bliss Computers. I got 10 sales a day. If I lowered my price to be one cent below Bliss Computers, I would get 900 to 1,000 sales a day across Amazon, eBay, and my website. So the reality of the world is that a lot of people don't want to pay for value. And the reason that we are where we are, the true red pill in life is that it's not some sort of evil conspiracy, but rather we are the problem. We are the people that make the decisions that lead to us uh, getting fucked. We are the people in 2004 that chose uh, that to have Google read all of our emails and, choose to, and chose to give away all of our personal data because they gave us a gig of free storage when Yahoo gave us like 50 megabytes. We are willing to give away everything for the ability to have attachments and free storage. You give us shit for free, we will give away all of our rights. And that's a big part of the problem. What's your opinion on a full Linux phone like the attempt to Ubuntu try with Ubuntu Touch? I tried it. It was a fu- it was horrible. Like I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I was rooting for it. I wanted it to win. It just it was it was it was so bad in so many ways. Uh, I, I really wish it that it would do well, but I don't know. If you play, ran for presidency centers, how easily would you destroy or dominate the 2028 ticket? I would do horribly because I'm not as informed on a lot of the issues as I should be, but more importantly Importantly, a lot of the thoughts that I have are thoughts that would... I kind of think about long-term solutions, and uh, long-term solutions require going through short-term pain, and I don't think uh, most people are willing to go through short-term pain, which is why we elect people that lie to us and tell us the things that we want to hear in the moment while simultaneously fucking us in the long term. Uh, and I, I, I don't think that I would... It, it, so it would be a combination of I think I'd be focused on trying to solve problems in the long term, but above all, I think that some of the solutions to the current problems we have uh, are, would be horribly painful or not even work because of how bad we screwed ourselves over the years. I, I wouldn't want to run for president. At the end of the day, you have to be a person that's okay saying, here's how I'm going to spend your money. Here's what I'm going to force you to do to some extent. Uh, and I don't, I, don't, I don't think I'd feel comfortable doing that across a bunch of different verticals and a bunch of different topics for 300 million people. Starting an Etsy shop for cat stuff, ideas or advice? Ask people what they want that, that, that they can't find online and make that stuff. You know, a lot of the, the, the stuff is don't make what you want to make. Don't make what you think is important. Make the stuff that people want. Ying framework uh, is going to have a compare. So anyway, well, back to the framework 16 thing. Uh, yeah, a GPU would be awesome. Like that computer is great, but in Linux, if I want DaVinci Resolve to work as a video editor, I need a GPU. In Windows, it'll work with the Intel one. In Linux, it won't even load. I, like, I need a discrete GPU. It's not like I do a lot of video editing. My videos are literally like me yelling into a microphone with like one, you know, one cheap ass old camera. So it's not, I, I don't do effects or anything. How's the new bed working out? If it sucks, here's a fiber for a different one. Thank you. Also, looking at Hacko FR301 for basic soldering thoughts. Well, when it comes to the bed, the reason that I haven't followed up on it is because I have been so stressed out from September through January that I really, like, it, it wouldn't make sense for me to do a comparison because it wouldn't, like, there's no basis for comparison. Uh, the amount of additional stress that I added to my life has essentially made it so that there's no way I could do a fair comparison. In terms of the Hacko FR301, the Hacko FR301 is an improved version of the Hacko FR808, which I think is great for desoldering if you're doing a lot of that. I still prefer using a lot of flux and a lot of wick on certain situations and I still prefer using hot air because for some reason I could just never get all the solder out of the hole you wind up trying to pull a switch out it just doesn't want to come out so I would tend to use wick and uh, and a soldering iron and then use hot air on the back with some flux and then pull it out so I bring up politics where do you stand in the Palestine Israel situation no, nice try no uh, I'm, I'm not in no, 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 no. I watched this documentary a while ago because I wanted to understand it. It was one hour long, and I tried to get, a, I thought I'd have an understanding, and at the end of the hour, I was actually more confused than I was at the beginning. So then I watched a five-hour documentary, and at the end of the five-hour documentary, I was literally more confused than I was at the end of the one-hour documentary. Uh, I, I do think that Israel had to respond. There's only so much. It, the one thing that I noticed is there tends to be this thing where, like, you know, the, you know, like certain people that are pro-Palestine will say, I can't believe they did that. I can't believe this is happening. Oh, my God. And it's like they, they kind of ignore the fact that they like they poke and 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 they poke. And like Israel overreacts and they probably shouldn't overreact to the extent that they do. But it's like, you know, like stop fucking, like stop fucking with, it. I don't know. I, 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 ask somebody else, man. I, I, like ask Ben Shapiro, ask Destiny, ask Noam Chomsky. Yeah, ask, ask somebody that has even some fucking remote knowledge of what's going on in the area that can give you an actual answer based on information, based on evidence, uh, based on an understanding of it, because I don't have that understanding of it. And for me to, to claim that I do or say that I do, I would just be bullshitting you. I, can I give you my impression based on new articles that I read, based on people I talk to? I can give you an impression, but at the end of the day, that impression is based on bullshit. And I'll try to tell you when I know about something and I feel like I have a good knowledge, working knowledge of something, and when I, I know jack shit. And, and for that stuff, I just kind of know jack shit. Oreo, will you just cut this shit, Oreo? You cut that out. Oreo, if you want attention, you can come upstairs and come to the chair. I'm not going down there, no. I watch your videos, and I like them. Here's $2. Thank you. 
when you lived in New York, you think that you experienced hearing loss from the subway sirens, et cetera. No, I did not because from a very young age, from around 15 or 16 years old, I spent the money that I made on Shure E3C in-ear monitors. I did not use standard headphones. I used uh, these. Let me show you. So I had these. These are, uh, these are IEMs. Uh, uh, the Shure E3C was a pretty nice old in-ear monitor, and what I liked about it is that it wasn't just a normal headphone, it was an earplug, so when you got these, they blocked out noise from outside, so you had about 10 to 20 decibels of noise reduction, so if I'm on a train that comes by at 111 dB, one of the great things about these headphones is that I won't hear that stuff, I won't, like, I, it, I, it's reduced, and I would keep those on even if I wasn't listening to music because I don't feel like going deaf. Their printers weren't great, but Kodak tried to do the higher cost printer, low cost ink approach, and failed hard. People seem to forget this. Yeah, at the end of the day, a big part of the reason that we get fucked by companies in the way that we do, uh, I'm not, again, I, I'm not trying to do the blame the victim shit, but at the same, but like, I've been on the other end of that as a business owner enough times where people have, like, everybody in my industry, like 100% of them complained about Bliss Computers. They complained so badly. They don't understand, they don't, you know, they think an LP154 WP2 TLC one is compatible with an LP154 WP2 TLA one. And when they send me the wrong fucking part. They charge me. They bill me $15 to send it back, and they bill me for the shipping of the right one. And a big part of the reason that the world is the way it is is because when other companies show up, get it. 6,000 feedback on eBay. I literally am charging $1 more. I am saying, I am a repair shop owner. I know what models fit what. I know that if you want an lp 13 wx one tla one because you have a customer that has 10.4 operating system Tiger on their A1181 and they do not want to upgrade, that that is the only part that will fit into that computer along with an LTN-133 ATL1 or an N133-L1-L1 IL1 that will fit into that computer that will not require a flashing of the EDID code or an upgrade to Leopard if your customers want to upgrade to have brightness control. Control. I know what to sell you because I do this for a living. I cost one dollar more. If anything, I pre-test a part. I make sure there's no stuck pixels. If you have a problem with it, I will spend money out of pocket to overnight you a new one before you've sent the old one back so that your customer doesn't have to wait and I will give you a return label for the old one. No hassle, no RMA form, no bullshit. I cost one dollar more, 10 sales a day. I lower the price, five cents below Bliss Computers or anybody else. I'm selling a thousand parts a day. Uh, th at the end of the day, a lot of the reasons that the world is the way it is, like the on like the like the red pill that you get into in your early twenties and mid twenties is oh my god, there's these horrible conspiracies and all these people are evil and blah blah blah. The red pill that you get into in your early thirties or mid thirties is that the world is the way it is for a fucking reason. And uh, you know, the more you look into those reasons, the more depressed you may be. Uh, but but like you you get closer to reality, in my opinion. In my opinion. I'm not keeping up with the chat very well. Thank you, DJ LSD. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm behind by 15 minutes, but I, I am behind because I am trying to read the chat. You can only stop the government. Let's see, what kind of notebook do you have? This is a ThinkPad P50. It's pretty old. I've dropped this thing off a ladder numerous times because I have used it to hang cameras before. And, you know, like, you know if it to move the camera and whoops, you're hip or you're... Knocks into the laptop. It. How do I start speaking fluently and confidently like you? Oh, well, I actually made this recommendation for somebody I was romantically involved with, a best friend who wanted to start a YouTube channel. One of the things that's exceptionally helpful is to actually talk to yourself. So what I used to do is I used to put headphones on so that people that thought I was on a conversation, a phone conversation, and just like walk down the street, you know, do my walk or do my running, but actually talk my thoughts out. And the thing is, you could think something in your head, but it's one thing to think it in your head. One of my uh, teachers from one of my college classes that I failed, I tried to go to college three times, I failed every time, Stafford Gregor he worked at uh, LaGuardia Community College. He was one of the very few professors that actually was good. Stafford Gregoire. Shout out to Stafford Gregoire if you're at, still at LaGuardia Community College. I hope you're still improving the lives of your students and the people around you. He's a genuinely good dude. One of the things he said is when you write things down, when you say things out loud, when you type something, you think it in your head, it sounds smart, but when you say it out loud, you may realize it sounds stupid. So one of the good things you can do is practice actually speaking what it is you're saying, and whether you've written something or you've thought something. And one of the great things that I really got out of YouTube in the early days was having to say my thoughts out loud really forced me to sort them out. So one of the things that I think would be very helpful in becoming a better speaker is literally talk to yourself. Like walk down, walk for an hour a day, sit on your treadmill, put on a Bluetooth headset, put on a Plantronics Voyager Pro, let people think that you're not completely crazy and just talk to yourself and allow it to come out, allow it to flow, allow your ideas to flow. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, the reason that these conversations feel as real as they are, or they feel like actual conversations, is they're conversations with myself. Like I'm having a conversation with myself and you're eavesdropping on it. But the more you make that conversation with yourself seem real, the more it'll uh, come off well to other people. Viability of peer-to-peer -peer IPFS social network 
where users bear cost of sharing, like in content, as devices serve share content, zero uh, percent, zero percent. People do not like switching. People don't like switching to new shit for the most part, um, un unless something else dies. So uh, the, the whole thing of like, let's create new platforms. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to see them work. I would. One of the things about being a pessimist is that when you're proven wrong, that means the world is actually a better place than you thought, which is a great thing. But yeah, pessimist on that. Big black pill on that. Have you thought about uploading your videos somewhere else besides YouTube? I have, but the re it's a waste of time because nobody goes to those platforms. I've uploaded my stuff to Vimeo in the past. I stopped because they started getting very expensive. I was paying $1,000 a year, and at some point I used up all my storage, and it would have cost like six or 10000 a year, and at that point I said no because I was getting three views a video. I've used Odyssey. Literally nobody uses that platform. I've used Rumble. Literally nobody uses that platform. So I have uploaded my videos to other platforms, but at the same time, it's kind of a waste of time because nobody actually checks them. The fact that we need rights to repair is absurd. Companies are so greedy, they think their ability is diminished. Yes. Can't wine run FUBAR 3000? Like, why, though? Why? Like, well, anytime you're running something in wine, it's going to run fuck. It's, it, it, nothing works compared to when, like, just running it, a program that's native. Like, getting scaling to work sucks. Getting basic features to work sucks. The increased likelihood of crashing. I don't want to run programs in wine. Uh, the additional functionality I get from using the program that I prefer is made up for by the genuine bugginess of the experience when I'm using wine. I use wine when it's, like, something I genuinely need to work and I can't dual boot for some reason. I have my I have a framework around there for when I need to boot into Windows and rather than torture myself with wine, I just I'll just I'll boot into a Windows install that's not allowed to connect to the internet that has none of my data on it. Uh, what watch do you use? It's some piece of shit Garmin. Uh, I'm ashamed that I'm using a Garmin watch, but there was the collaboration with me once. That was nice. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed getting dinner. Uh, you know, props to Uncivil Law for introducing me to Freitas Freitas seafood, seafood. They have a great filet mignon. Oh my God, the Risotto, the mushroom risotto at Freitas. Oh boy, I gotta go back there. I watch with ad block. Here's five dollars. Keep yelling into the mic. Thank you very much, and I hope you keep your ad blocker on, my friend. Hope you keep your ad blocker on. I uh, again, I do have two million subscribers on this platform, and I've you know again from the early days to now, I've always I've I've always used an ad blocker. I actually on PF Sense, I have a PF blocker NG, and I have a nice list of shit in there, so that when my, when my phone attaches to my VPN, uh, even on my phone I can't see ads. Literally on my phone I cannot see ads because my phone is attached to my VPN all the time, and I, it's it's routing. And using PF blocker, uh, my PF sense router for everything. Uh, I, I don't see ads on anything, and, I, and I'm fine with it. I'm autistic. Please forgive me if this is an appropriate question, but am I right in thinking I heard you say in one of your videos you had an autism diagnosis too? Uh, I did. That was a while ago. Uh, there was uh, there's quite a bit more to my brain that I'm not exactly uh, comfortable mentioning uh, here. But yeah, th there's there's quite a bit going on there based on the way that I grew up and just kind of. Uh, you know, genetics, who I am, et cetera. I'm, I'm, I'm really learning a lot more about myself uh, as I get older, and I'm kind of happy that I know more about myself because the more I know about myself, the more power I have to kind of uh, do things and accomplish things and feel things I wasn't able to before, which is pretty exciting. What's your camera camera setup? This is a Sony A5100. I use it uh, with an a, with HDMI out into some major wall capture card, and then I have this little sen uh, DPA4065 or 4066 microphone, which I always buy used, and that goes into there. Are you comfortable sharing which Android OS you use now? I have a phone with Graphene OS that essentially sits in my drawer unless I'm doing a video or like I'm showcasing something that doesn't actually that doesn't really connect to anything, and all the accounts on it are off. And I have another phone where I kind of kind of switch back and forth between college and lineage. Calyx and Lineage from time to time. I genuinely believe that of all those operating systems, if you want something that is genuinely secure, that uh, that is genuinely state, not, not just secure, but has all these like small little features that you're best off going with Graphene. Again, like Aurora Store versus Sandbox Google Play. Sandbox Google Play, any day. It's just dealing with applications that you already bought, installing. It's, it just, it's a smoother experience, and I do think that it's genuinely programmed better from what I hear from people. My personal discomfort from using Graphene as my daily driver, and the reason my other phone is like literally just sits in a drawer, some of the stuff that the main developer says and some of his obsessions over certain people, including myself, it just leads me to not... Again, it's op is it open source? Yes. Am I barely fucking able to write data engineering code in Python? True. Do I, am I really the person that should be fucking auditing an operating system? No. Uh, again, if you're somebody who is not pissed off the primary developer of the operating system to the point that they're so obsessed with you that they uh, like talk about you nonstop for almost a year, by all means, use it. Uh, it, it use it. It's, it's a great operating system. Otherwise, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, what is your workout routine and diet? Uh, you know, I try to do a full body of, let's say, you know, a few sets of heavy squats, a few sets of heavy bench press, a few sets of weighted pull-ups, skull, skull crushes and curls on a Monday. On Wednesday, I will do uh, heavy deadlifts, shoulder press with barbell, uh, weighted pull-ups, 
skull crushers and curls again. And then Friday, I will do the workout I did Monday. On Sunday, I'll do the workout I did Wednesday and so on and so forth. For cardio, I'll just do speed walking. I used to do running, but my knees are kind of shit. It's a genetic thing where everybody gets osteoarthritis. My dad's had knee replacements. My grandpa's had fucked up knees. So I'm, I'm not really going to do that. Uh, but I do like speed walking. I do that for cardio, and I also do highway fit for my midsection in general. I need a new printer, and I know thanks to you to Void HP. Is there any printer you can recommend? They all suck, but I would suggest Brother. Particularly the older brother models, the older bro brother multifunctions, you could find them for $100 used and they're exceptional. How would you get an electronic repair? I'm interested in doing it as a career, but not sure how to do it. I'm going to do, uh, you see, I can't answer that in here. I actually plan to do a full video. The TLDR is I wanted to be a psychologist. I went to college. I flunked out of college. I wanted to, I wanted to create loudspeakers. I mixed up loudspeaker engineer and audio engineer, so I wound up getting an internship at a studio. And that is, audio engineer actually means person who records music. So I essentially was so dumb that I went into the wrong profession. After a year and a half of that and working at Avatar Studios, I realized I sucked at recording music. I also sucked uh, socially, so I wasn't really good at dealing with musicians in that level. Also, since I wasn't one myself, but I was very good at fixing things and making things work again. So I kind of moved to the tech room aspect of things. And then when I needed to do a session for somebody after that studio closed, thank you very much, Garrison. I bought a MacBook because I needed to use Logic and that session wasn't Logic. And I bought this MacBook while I was broke off of eBay and it arrived broken. The seller gave me some money off as a result of me getting it broken. I fixed it. I didn't need it anymore. And I made $200 off of the resale, about 250 bucks. So I thought to myself, huh, you know, I've never made more than 400 bucks over the course of my life. Here, I just made 250 bucks in about 20 minutes. Let's try that again. And, I, and then I wound up having another conversation with somebody when I needed to buy a part on Craigslist and he said I don't know why you don't, you know you you could fix stuff for a living instead of just sell buying and reselling and I said no I can't these people are doing it for 159 all these play they have stores they have licenses all this other shit nobody's going to trust me and then he said wait what are you talking about you realize that that all those people are lying right you realize that when you call them they're going to say oh yeah it's 159 come on in but then when you show up they're going to say oh that's 159 is for the part thank you Dr. Evil Genius good to see that uh, oh, you know, you, you realize it's $159 for the part. If you want us to do it, it's $300. And then I actually, so I checked in with them, and he was right. They were all lying. And that's when I decided to open my repair business, and it just kind of snowballed from there. I kind of made my website to the specific flaws of those businesses. They say they'll fix it the same day, but they don't have the part in stock. Check it out when you call them. I have it right in stock here. I'll show you a picture of it. I will sh The price that I post on my website is the final price you pay. No bullshit. No, that's for the part by itself. And what... So that conversation led to everything. So it's one of these things where the way that I got started was by bumbling around for several years, trying different things and being okay with failing and having conversations with people. The conversations that you'll have that will affect the entire course of your fucking life are conversations that you would ever imagine would. And one of the things that you really have to do is kind of be out there in the world, trying new shit, being open to bumbling around, stumbling around, not knowing where you're gonna go, feeling that sense of uncertainty and really embracing that sense of uncertainty and realizing that as long as you're doing something, it's better than doing nothing, which a lot of people are not comfortable with, but is very important. It's something that I did 17 years ago, and it's something that I'm going to have to do again right now. It's something I'm actually taking part in right now, trying all that new shit and stumbling around. But you got to do that in order to find what the next thing is. I can't tell you what your path is going to be, but I can tell you that it's going to be a lot of random searching around and stumbling around and being okay with being uncomfortable. I have a Garmin smartwatch, though I have one of the expensive models. I'm very happy with it. I use the built-in flashlight all the time. That's a built-in flashlight. I didn't know that's a built-in flashlight. I think this is the Forerunner 955. It works pretty well. Also, thank you, Paul. It's been a while since I saw you. What do you think about piracy in the music industry? There's some big issues with bands like the Beatles where it's impossible to use their music in any content. Do you need to use their music, though? Love that you don't. Uh, tree kiwi farms like Voldemort. Do you see the site was able to finally sue people who were defaming them? Do you think KFS crusade against T1's blocking legal content is important? I don't know what T1S means. Uh, I have commented on that site only in my old threads. So one of the things that's been used to defame me in the past is people have tried to call me a, quote, kiwi farmer and then associate me with the most negative parts of that website. Uh, I remember doing research on this because I remember reading a news article that said kiwi farms is this website where they go after large creators and they encourage them to kill themselves and all this nasty shit. And I kind of thought to myself, you know, I have 1.7 million subscribers. I wonder if I have a thread of myself. And I, I, needless to say, I do a search. There's a nine-page fucking thread where people are talking about me. And I've been one of those people my whole life where if people are talking about me, I'd like to be in the room for it. Uh, I, I use the Notes app in Nextcloud, and I take notes, and I schedule my day in five to 15-minute increments. It is the only way I've been productive. I have severe ADHD. Like, not the type of ADHD where a teacher diagnoses you with it and says, you have ADHD because you find my shitty class boring. Like, the actual ADHD where, like, I am unable to live my life unless I take my day, and I literally arrange it in 15-minute increments. Like, wake up, take shower, get dressed, do this, uh, scan this paper, sign this paper, send this paper, file it, send to a can like literally 15 minute increments from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day is put in a note app. 
Uh, it, it's what allows me to live my life. And it's, I have a video on that on time management that I made a while ago. But back to the Huey Fromms thing. So I remember reading all this and hearing that like either site, one, I've always been that type of person where if people are going to be talking about me, I want to be in the room for it. If people are slandering me on Mac rumors, I'll be in the room for it. If people are talking about me in r slash Apple, I'll be in the room for it. If people are talking about me, I'll be in the room for it uh, to set the record straight in general. So I've made a couple of comments in my own fucking thread about me to clarify things about me. And there are certain people that have essentially said, you are a Kiwi farmer. And it's very weird because I don't think anybody would say you are an r slash Appler. You are an r. You are a Mac rumors person. Like I I'm not exactly the, uh, you know, commenting on a thread about myself on r slash Apple where people are saying that I am a, I am a fraud. I, my, my repairs are all bullshit. I uh, do a bad job. My business is a beard. Essentially, I've made up my business to fool people into thinking I do what I do so that I have a purpose to have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's very difficult for me to kind of wrap my head around that type of stuff. But typically when you hear that, it is a very low effort slander. What somebody's trying to do is essentially it's like a drone that pours red paint on something and then uh, that, that's and, and gets the warhead to attack. So if you put red paint on something, you have these warheads that are essentially programmed once you see red paint on something to attack it. And when that label gets used, it essentially, it's being done as a low effort way of trying to get people uh, to, to attack uh, based on... Yeah, just based on preconceived notions. Uh, I've, I've read that website. Some of the shit that you see on there is genuinely fucking disgusting and horrible. Some of it is just, it's 10-year-old it's kids being fucking idiots in the room. Like, I, everybody here has been in a class or at a table at a lunchroom at some point in high school, junior high school or elementary school, where all the kids were just saying the most fucked up shit in the world just because they were in that stage of their life. They were exploring that edginess about themselves. They were just saying fucked up shit to say fucked up shit. Is, is that who they are? Some, like sometimes, yes. Most of the time, not. And that, that's kind of what I see on that website. When I, when I read that website and uh, I, I see what people say, I think of that website in many ways as that, um, as that, 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 that lunch table in junior high school where people are just one-upping each other, saying the most fucked up shit for the sake of, uh, uh, for the sake of humor and getting things across in, a, in that way. Again, the problem with websites like that and the problem with how people talk is it's very difficult. Again, that is the type of place where somebody who is actually a crazy sociopathic fucking lunatic to hide. One of the best places to hide is, if you're actually insane, is to hide in those places. And, you know, that's kind of one of the lessons that, that you learn when you go through high school and junior high school and all that. And I've kind of already, I, I, I've already learned those lessons of figuring out the people that are like, uh, okay, you're just saying this because you're, you're 12 years old and going through puberty and, like, you have shitty parents and, you know, and no real father figure. And you're actually going to fucking shoot up a school someday. Like, it's very, I've, I've kind of gotten that, that skill down of figuring out which one's which and which to not associate with. I forget how I got on that tangent to begin with. Uh, this is the video that I did on that. So this video is titled Less Anxiety and More Productive, uh, More Productivity Through Discipline and Time Management. And that's the video that I've done on general and dealing with ADHD and, uh, you know, what I do for it. Yeah, I've commented on my own thread. And I, sometimes I, I've commented on my own thread on that website the same way that I've commented on threads about me on Mac Rumors, where everybody's calling me a scammer and lying about shit I've said or the way I've uh, responded to people on r slash Apple. Uh, and one of the things that I always hope to do when I comment on these things is I always kind of hope to plant a seed. I'm not going to change people's minds overnight. I'm not going to change who you are and I'm not seeking to change who you are. What I'm hoping to do is plant a seed that ends up in the world going in the direction that I think would be a better direction. And that may result in somebody, you know, again, not changing your mind overnight, not trying to change who you are, just maybe plant a seed in how to be a little bit of a better person. And I'd rather be in the room for those conversations if I believe I may be able to have an effect on it than not be in the room for those conversations. And that kind of starts with actually engaging with people on their level. And engaging with people on their level is one of the most important things if you actually want to see the world change in the way that you want to see it change. Side business, you're motivating more than I was. Thank you, Chip. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And I hope you hope I've... Yeah, I'm happy to hear that you've been motivated there. You know, one of the things that my dad said is you always have to kind of meet, he said two things. A, you don't deserve respect from anybody. You have to earn respect from everybody that you talk to. A principal doesn't have authority. A boss doesn't have authority because their name tag says that they're a boss or their name tag says that they have that, uh, that, that uh, they are the principal or they, like somebody elected them to office or whatever. You, this is, there's a book on this. It's actually uh, really useful. Uh, let's see if I can find it. I don't think my dad read this book, but he said the same shit that you're going to read in this book. It's called The Five Levels of Leadership, and the lowest level of leadership is essentially, yeah, let's see, can I find the book? 
The lowest level of leadership is where you say, like, you are beneath me because of X, or you are beneath me because of this. It's a book, and I, for some reason I can't find the fucking book, and I'm not going to take the time to because I'm on a treadmill and I'm losing right now because I'm, uh, I'm at the chat. I'm at 134 in the chat, and it is 2.04 right now, so I'm a half hour behind it already. Uh, but, yeah, like, I, you, you kind of, my dad always said this. You have to meet people where they are, and you have to meet them on their level. If you, have, you know, you can judge, and you can scream, and you can yell, and you can say, I am this, I am the teacher, I am the boss, and you're not going to, you know, you, you may feel justified and morally dignified, but uh, you may feel morally uh, righteous, but you're not going to create change the way you want to see it in the world that way. So yeah, are there people that are going to be out there and say, like, I, Lewis has made posts in his thread where people are talking about him that he doesn't have the ability to delete, where he tries to clarify things about himself. He is a piece of shit. Yes. Do I really care? No. I think that the average person that watches my channel and the average person that has a brain understands who I am, what I stand for, and uh, what I mean when I speak. Uh, why do you start your videos by saying, I hope you're having a lovely day? Um, well, I start my videos with, I hope you're having a lovely day, uh, because I hope people have a lovely day. You know, I kind of hope that, I hope that people hope that I have a lovely day, and I hope that, you know, I, I'm not really going to get uh, what I want out of the world and out of people if I don't provide it. So and it's kind of like that general rule, universality, you know, put out in the world what it is you want to receive back yourself. And, you know, like, well, what's wrong with a little bit of positivity? I'm a generally positive person. I don't, like, again, people think that because I talk about topics where people are screwing each other over, or, you know, I, I try to change the things that I find to be negative about the world or be a part of the change I want to see in the world, that that means that I'm, uh, that I'm unhappy. And I'm not unhappy at all. I'm a pr fairly happy dude, and I want the world to be a better place. I want the people around me to be happy and excited to be alive, and I want to be a part of making other people happier as often as, as possible. Glad you covered Pro Tools BS. My, uh, many audio plugins need a cloud service to run. I would love to see you talk about IOC. Dude, uh, Pro Tools has been bullshit since I was like fucking 20 years old. Remember the dead days where you needed to use their interface? Oh my God, Pro Tools HD. You need to buy these $7,000 cards that have the processing power of a fucking 386SX in order to use Pro Tools HD. Like, fuck Pro Tools. Fuck Digi Design. Fuck Digi Design. Fuck Digi Design. Why do you not frame your videos to show kitties? Uh, I did, but they don't want to show up. Again, the only reason I have the keyboard here is because the kitty wants to sit over there. If the kitty wants to sit on the love seat, Blackberry's really found that spot and she loves it. I'm not going to pick her up and bring her over here if she doesn't want to. Uh, oh, you said, why? Do, I hope you have a wonderful day with such a threatening aura. I don't think it's a threatening aura, really. I finished C++ lessons. No, I, I did chapter one of Dennis Ritchie's C programming language, and I wanted to move on to a project that I thought would be a little bit more, uh, that would have a little bit more practical use. So one of the things that I've been doing is I've been working on this board repair, this AI project is uh, I want to train a large language model in order to like understand board repair. As th I'm using Python for this, so there's a lot. You know, again, I have to take all the threads out of my website, then I have to take all the jargon out of it. So this is my code for grabbing all the threads from my website and creating a JSON file from it. This is my code to uh, take all the jargon out of it, like what are all the chip names, what are all the resistors, capacitors. So there's a lot of uh, weird regex and you know, regular expressions in MySQL I needed to do to get that shit to work right. Uh, then there is also defi um, like defining them all. Uh, so after I define all the signals, what I need to do is I've grabbed all the signals essentially in the order of how often they're mentioned. I figured the ones, the signals that are mentioned the most often are the ones that I need to define first. And then what it does is it annotates each one of those files uh, it annotates each one of those JSON files to say, like, here are the definitions of all the different terms that you're going to see used that you may not understand in this particular thread. So you get it. I have no fucking clue if this is going to work, but uh, here's the way I see it, is if this works at the end of the day, then I have something really cool that may be helpful for other people and that may actually help people be, be get into board repair because ChatGPT and Google Bard are garbage when it comes to board repair. They're amazing when it comes to code and other things, but it's fairly shit when it comes to board repair. And if it fails, even if if it fails, I will look at this and be like, you know, God damn, I kind of got a little bit of a data engineering project done. At the end, what I'd like to do, oh, thank you. I've never thought my emotional intelligence was pretty good. I actually have, have friends like a Dr. Evil Genius who showed up in the chat earlier who were incredibly helpful for me and provided me with great resources when I need to like, kind of up my, my game with, with it and really understand my emotions better. I've tried to become a lot better in my, you know, as I become 34 and 35 by addressing some of the issues that I've had that have caused me to have lower emotional intelligence that I could have had. But yeah, I have some friends that are also very helpful with that as well. Thank you. Anyway, even if this project absolutely fails, like not only do I want to have a training process for it, but I also want to continuously ingest new articles and continuously ingest new threads. Uh, I've, you know, one of the things that I've uh, I thought about is 
like you know, even if I fa even if the entire th project fucking fails, man, I learned a lot of skills as a result of it. Like that's a lot of data engineering skills, a lot of Python skills, a lot of MySQL skills that are pretty cool to have. Like even with my phone system, even if I failed to get caller ID set up, I wanted to have a caller ID set up in a way where when a customer calls my business. I know the status of the ticket immediately. So if it says shipping, the shipping person answers the phone. If it's a data recovery, maybe Steve or Ohana Chris answers the phone. If it's a customer that's annoying, Kevin answers the phone. And if it's a new customer, I answer the it, It's one of those, even if I figured if I fail completely, I've learned a lot about asterisk. I've learned a lot about free PBX. I've learned a lot about routing, SIP, SIP, ALG, how to deal with it all. So, you know, you learn a lot of skill sets while you're working on these projects. And even if they fail at the end of the day, you know, you, uh, there, there's a lot to be said for it. Like my supply company failed horribly, but I also learned a lot about business management, e-commerce, inventory management that was very useful to me, even though the company completely failed. And I took those skills with me to later jobs. Uh, in terms of starting a hardware company, I don't think so. I'm, not, I'm barely even qualified to work at a hardware company. Uh, like somebody asked me this this morning, like, have you thought of starting a hardware company are doing something like what Linus did with Framework and it's like Linus is worth like 20 to 100 million dollars if he wants to invest in you know starting a fucking computer company or investing in one he you know the additional zeros in the net worth are really helpful with that I have not been successful enough in life to have the resources necessary to be able to do things like that I have not had the success in life to be able to attract investors I have not even been able to attract investors or loans from my own company much less for starting a new company that has improved I feel like my company has a proven track record and I've never been able to get financing for it. So my ability to get pro uh, financing for something that's proven doesn't exist. My ability to get uh, financing for something that hasn't been proven, I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm bad at. That's something that I don't think I'd be good at. I don't even know if I'd be qualified for it. I'm, you know, again, I, like, I'm not even qualified for like customer service at Framework. At the end of the day, fundamentally speaking, I don't think it's something I'd be qualified to do, and I don't think it's something that I'd be able to do. So I try to stick to things that I'm able to do, but more importantly, I try to stick to the areas of the world where I feel like I can offer value. I don't think I'd offer value doing that. I don't think I'd be particularly good at it. And as a result, I, don't you know, I, I try to not think about things that would wind up being a, a bit of a waste of my time. What chair are you sitting in right now? This is some Ashley uh, piece, Ashley something, Ashley furniture, Ashley signature chair. It's pretty good. It cost a few hundred bucks. Do you think it's worth learning AI? I mean, what does that mean, though? It's kind of like saying, do you think it's worth learning computers? Like, what are you talking about? You, are you talking about learning from AI? Are you talking about learning how to create an AI? Are you learning how to prompt an AI? Learning how to take a business, a small uh, information from a small business and use that to train an AI so they have a better uh, ability to have something that can answer questions for their customers and their new employees? Is there a search engine without corpo and government crap? Results, I want to find people talking about a topic, not seeing any other goon takes on it. Um, I don't really know. I'll be honest with you. Even Google kind of sucks as a search engine now. I, I really feel like I do better. I, I feel like I get better results using even lower level uh, LLMs than I ever do off of Google. I, I very rarely, if ever, use Google for search anymore because all I get are these garbage affiliate marketing pages that are designed to sell me something where somebody's writing really lame, generalized uh, not useful content in order to impress an algorithm rather than writing content that's genuinely useful to me. I don't really get much use out of search engines anymore. And uh, Go Sadly, Google is the best one, and I don't even get one off of that. What's the best alternative to Microsoft Office or Word? By the way, I'm literally reading comments from 133. I'm that far behind here. The reason I have two computers is because I have the old comments open here and the new ones open here because Google doesn't allow you to scroll back far enough uh, in it. What do you say the best business laptop, $1,500 range? I would say a used ThinkPad, but a used ThinkPad that is one of the higher series, like T-series, P-series. I don't know about the new ones. Again, I'm literally using one from 2016 here, and uh, you know, I'm not sure about the new ones. If you were in government in Texas, you could do something about corporations being sneaky jackals. I don't know about that. This is the ThinkPad P50. Does Fudo make a Gray J desktop app? If not, are you interested in developing one? Uh, we're in the process of developing a, a, a desktop app application at the moment. Again, you know, like we did get that notice uh, from Google and uh, full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. You know, we responded to the notice and uh, we, we were creating another application. Like we're, n we're not the company, you know, we're, we're not a group of uh, college kids in the dorm room. They are, uh, you know, it, it is run by somebody that has like a, a lot of fucking money and they're going to be... Uh, yeah, not easily scared. Life's been busy, but good to see you too. My Garmin watch is one of the fifteen hundred. Holy shit! Yeah, this one was like three hundred bucks or so used. Not sure how it compares to the cheaper ones. Uh, I think I'm in your Discord too, Paul. Have you gone partying on Sixth Street since moving to Austin? You know, I did once, and it was a very strange experience. Um, uh, let's see. Do I have? Do I have a video of what that was like? Oh man. Oh man. Okay. Let's see. I can't keep up with comments. 
How do you have the self-confidence to not care what people think about you? I have issues regarding being really sensitive. Any suggestions? I don't know. I, don't even, I honestly don't think I have a lot of self-confidence. I think that I, I, think that I fear... Um, hmm. I don't know if I have a lot of self-confidence. I just think that I failed. Uh, I, I'm open to failing at things. Yeah, I, th I think I've accepted that I'm going to fail at a lot. I'm open to failing at a lot. Uh, I think I got comfortable at failing by just failing a lot. And uh, yeah, okay, it's like this is the type of shit that happens to me on Sixth Street. Like, what the fuck is this? I'm just, I'm just sitting here trying to play basketball. I'm just sitting here trying to play some fucking basketball, man. Listen to a band doing a horrible cover of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, wait, you'll see. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck is this bitch? And why, what are you doing? I'm just trying to, I'm just minding my own business here. Minding my own business, playing my game. Can you imagine if I did this shit to a woman? I would get kicked out of the bar. My picture would be on every fucking website. I would be considered a goddamn criminal rapist. But it is what it is. Whatever. Anyway, I try to avoid Sixth Street at this point. It's no, no thanks. I, you know, every now, like I, I used to go, like you know, like once every couple of months. But nah, not 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 for me. Not for me. Not for me, man. Not for me. Uh, let's see. You know any cars that don't have technology, excluding old cars? Um. Um. 1984 F-150, Dodge Dakota. I'm trying to avoid companies with ethical policies. I'm wondering if you know a place that documents them. No, I don't. How involved are you in the development of Redacted? Uh, I hired the pe I found the people who did it. So one of the things when I started at that organization, like honestly, the stuff that I thought I'd be valuable for was not what I was actually valuable for, and I didn't realize how many of the skills... I didn't really come to appreciate how many of the skills from running my business transferred over to this. So, you know, like, you know, the owner had a list of things he wanted to do, and I just kind of looked through this list, and I saw that some of the dates for them were like, you know, 2020, and it's like, we're in 2022. What have you done towards this already? And, like, not a lot had gotten done. So it's like, okay, let's storyboard this. Let's break this down into smaller pieces. Let's figure out exactly what you want to do. Let's come up with a timetable and a schedule to find people. Let's find people the same way that I find people for my business. Let me find people. By, again, I'm not putting a fucking ad on Indeed.com. I'm going to throw, throw breadcrumbs out there, see who's interested, and uh, find the, you know, when I, so I, I hired the developers. I, I helped storyboard. I hired the developers. And, you know, we just had a process of checking in regularly. And uh, do I develop that application? No. Do I try to push it in the right direction? Yes. And there are a lot of small things at that organization. You know, it's really weird because I talked with the owner of it. And, he, like, uh, I, one of the things that I've said is, I, you know, I, I would like to try doing other things because I have not and spend time doing some other stuff because I feel like I've kind of pigeonholed myself in my life and my career into this one thing for a long period of time. I don't really know what my skill set actually is. And one of them is just like, I don't really know. You know, he said that, he meant it in a good way. He's like, you didn't go to college. You don't have certificate. Like, I don't know how you would quantify this on a resume. I don't know how you would type it. When you're here, things go better. And I feel more confident putting hundreds of thousands of dollars of millions into things than I would otherwise. And I really don't know how you write that out. I don't know how you explain that to a recruiter. I don't know how you put that on a job application. Uh, but when you're here... I, things go better, and I feel more comfortable uh, with, with putting millions of dollars into stuff, which I took as a high compliment, but it's not something that you can really quantify or put onto a resume, and it's, uh, which is, yeah, uh, that, that's a story for another day. Um, I knew that I was kind of unqualified for your, quote, normal jobs. I had no idea how far behind I was when it came to being qualified to do things, like just integrate into the normal world in that way, uh, until I actually experimented and attempted it. Um, coming into Florida in September, which car should I hire? And any ideas on where I should go to have some fun uh, on my HOLS to avoid election BS? Look, you, you, I don't, uh, what? Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, you, honestly, I made a friend with a rental dude when I went to California. Uh, every time I go there, I rent the cheapest car, like the $37 car. He gives me, like, he, because you know, like, I was nice to him, and you know, I, I just talked to him about shit. He actually like lived in New Hampshire, he came from, you know, New York, he lived there for a long time. I would talk to him for a good 20 minutes. I would, like, you know, I wouldn't be impatient if he was dealing with other customers. Every time I go there, I rent the cheapest shit. He gives me the most expensive car every time. Like, when I go there, like, I rent the, most big, the biggest piece of garbage, and he will, he'll give me access to, like, you know, he'll, he'll give me, like, a Dodge Charger or something else, and something, something that's a little bit higher than the $34, $33 a day car. I was referring to the tier one provider, Cogent and Epic have kicked KF off their networks after Cloudflare dropped them. I don't think these are all powerful companies. Censoring is a serious threat to speech. See, I guess the problem in this case is that 
The problem that QE Farms has fundamentally is at the end of the day, do people want to defend you? Do they think that your rights are worth defending? And like obviously from the principal point of view, freedom of speech and all this other stuff, but one of the things that I realized when it comes to repair, and one of the things that I did really early on, is I realized like you really have to be the type of person that people feel is worth defending. And that that's 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 a that's a difficult one. Like for me with repair, you know, there are a lot of people in my industry that believe that sharing information is bad, you should not share information. They would say things and I quote, that that's for you to know, not for your customer, when it came to things like what was actually wrong with the device. And they would think that I was stupid for showing people all this information on how to figure out things. And about like you have places like L2 that have 30-day warranties. Um, like technically, you know, I believe in right to repair from a principled stance, and I believe that everybody should believe in right to repair from a principled stance, but that's not reality. Reality at the end of the day is do people like you? Do they think that you're worth preserving? Uh, are you the person that if there's a lion chasing you and chasing the tribe is going to want to save you versus, you know, smack you in the kneecap so that the they have a decoy so that they can get away while you get eaten alive by the lion. And I think the big problem that Kiwi Farms has is uh, most people are going to take one look at that fucking website and go, eh, like sucks to suck. Like when it comes to right to repair, I knew that if I wanted my profession to be viewed in a positive light, if I wanted people to stand up for my rights, not just... From, uh, it wouldn't just work from a principal perspective. They'd have to like me to some extent. They'd have to think this is something worth preserving. If I show millions of people, hey, Apple wants you to pay 1200 for this repair. Here's how you do it for 50 cents. Here's C7771, C9560, U1900, uh, you know, U1950 pin 8. Uh, all these different things that I show you on a regular basis. If I, uh, if I create all these guides and I make it so, by the way, you never have to pay me. You could literally recreate a rubric of how to create my business from home you know, go from working at Walmart for seven bucks an hour to making, you know, 60 to 90K a year fixing boards in your home from doing shit online. If I create that and I, allow, and I put all this value out there, will people think that what I have is worth fighting for? And the answer so far has been yes. Again, have we won? No, not even close. I, I, I'm real with everybody. I, I don't have a nonprofit so that I could take pictures of me, like putting my arm around inner city children and say, look at us. We're such good people. Donate. Like, I don't do that. My nonprofit, my, the purpose of my nonprofit was to actually create a change in the world. If I create change, great. If I don't create change, I'm, I'm not going to bullshit you and use it as a fucking photo op, uh, like that I got a law passed or something. But, you know, like, uh, you, the problem that Kiwi Farms has is people are going to look at that the same way that I think they would have looked at right to repair if our entire industry was filled with people, not that we're saying, here's how to do the work yourself. Here's how to be self-empowered. Here's how to fix shit on your own. Here's a year warranty, and even if it goes wrong, like a year outside the warranty, we'll fucking fix it for free anyway. If Kiwi Farms has the, the issue that would be if it was L2 Computer that was advocating for right to repair, if it was somebody else that's, if it was one of my, you know, the older places that I worked at, the, you know, the place that I worked at for four days before I quit in 2009, I'm never going to forget this, the technicians would get a $40 commission for everything they fixed. There's this one person that had an A1181 that wasn't turning on, and they filled out the form, and they said on the form that, it, the, that they were willing to spend up to $250 to fix the computer. There was a burned capacitor or something on the board. I forget. It's, it's been like 14, 15 years at this point. I just flicked it off. Like, I didn't even know what re at that point. It was like a burned ceramic capacitor. I flicked it off. It was going to be fine. It, it was one of like 15 capacitors as one line. It was going to be fine. I flicked it off the board and everything worked again. I forget. I think that was what it was. 90% certain. And it turns on. The owner says, board repair is $350. They only approved $250. And I said, it works. Like, you're going to get $210. get two hundred ten dollars. I'm, for, for no parts cost, like no parts of less facility, and you pay me on commission anyway. And he said, no, like they wanted to pay 350, they were not willing to pay 350, break it. They ordered me to break the customer's device. And further, they ordered me to break it and not tell the customer what was originally wrong with it. If that place was advocating for right to repair, if Laptop MD was advocating for right to repair, if L2 were advocating for it, it doesn't matter that it helps you from a principal point of view, and it doesn't matter that it's the, nobody's gonna wanna, like nobody would care. People would look at that and say, fuck these people. They don't do, like, I'm not interested in this. Because at the end of the day, people support or don't support you based on whether they like you, not based off of principles. And the problem that I think Huey Farms has in general is that people are going to take one look at the website and they're not going to think about the principles. They're not going to think about, should this company have the right to delete somebody from the internet? They're not going to go that far. Their brain's not going to go that far. They're just going to look at the content and go, meh, meh. And that, you know, that's, that, that's the reality of the world. That's the reality of the world that we live in. Slightly sarcastic, but as a dude with a shit ton of debt and no skill sets with a desire to do technical work from home, any advice? 
Uh, that's a tough one. I honestly can't answer that for you because, again, uh, I, I'm not like I've been successful in my small niche, but I've been successful in a niche that is going away and I really haven't moved far outside of it. You know, I've gotten very good at what I do. I've gotten, you know, I've kept digging down the rabbit hole of let me get good at board repair. Let's get good at hard drive data recovery. Let's get good at recovering micro SD cards that have been cracked. Let's get good at recovering uh, solid state drives that have logical issues. Uh, I, we've gotten very good, but at the end of the day, I never really moved outside of my field. I know, you know, I stayed in my little lane for 15 years, and I don't think that that was particularly the right thing to do. I understand why it is that I did it, and as I learn more about myself as I get older, thank you, something witty. As I learn more about myself, I'm literally an hour behind in chat right now. I'm at 136. So to those who say I don't read unpaid comments, that's I, I'm literally at 136 in chat just so I can read the unpaid comments um, and try to keep up with everything. Is it's also 225 and 136 in chat. Uh, the, th the problems are that, I literally forgot what I was saying. Okay, anyway, sorry, I, I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, what can you say about Nextcloud? It's all right, there's, there's some bugs in it, but like, you know, it, it, it's, I'd really like to try image when it comes to photos. It's better than nothing, but like, again, you had this a lot, I, I had to do a lot of experimenting with, a re I forget if it was Regis, Aegis, Aegis, was some sort of, sort of caching shit in order to make it even remotely usable. And I had to set it up with previews to make it remotely usable. I don't like that I cannot create video proxies uh, easily. I can create, uh, image is supposed to be able to do that. You know, you can create uh, image proxies easily, but not video proxies. Videos still take forever to load, even if decent internet. I'm running it on a very powerful, it, it's better than nothing. Like, I'd rather use Nextcloud Notes than Google Keep. I would rather use Nextcloud Calendar and Contacts than Google. If you're trying to move off of it, I would do that. Uh, it, you know, it is using PHP. Like I would prefer. T I, I, I'm again. I'm not the. I'm not opening ports to connect to this shit on the internet. Like again, all ports closed. Security updates. VP. If I'm ever using this shit, it's through a VPN. Don't open ports to use any of that shit. But um, it's 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 all right. It's free. It's all right. But it could be better. You know, it could be better. But it's free. Do you use a TV box for your entertainment? Uh, yes, I do. It's called the desktop fucking computer. I have a mini DSP. I actually, I feel really bad. I haven't given them feedback on it. I literally haven't had time to use this over the past three months. I've been kind of driving myself insane with other stuff to do. But um, uh, I have a mini DSP that I, uh, I have a, you know, my, my, I have a desktop computer. It attaches to an LG G3 OLED television, Vandersteen Model 3 speakers, Sioux Research ULS 15 subwoofers, a bunch of bass traps in my room, and a mini DSP as the center of it. My, I, I am, my, my television is not connected to the internet. Uh, no way, no how. Why do you use these under your microphones? I originally used these because when I was doing border pair videos, there's a signal to noise ratio problem. So when I do border pair, when I did border pair, because I mean, let's face it, I'm kind of a has been in that in that department. I was pretty. I think I was like you know in the, like the top ten uh, for, in my profession when I actually did it. But I'm, I've kind of moved on from that at this point. Uh, when I would do that work, I had a fume extractor, and the fume extractor makes a lot of noise. I would use that because I don't want to inhale the fumes from the flux and solder and everything else. And I also had a hot air station that makes a lot of noise, so you wouldn't be able to hear me. That's because of signal to noise ratio. So if the noise is over there, right? and the microphone is over there, and I'm over here, the signal noise ratio of my voice is pretty bad. You're not going to be able to hear me very well. But if the microphone is right next to my mouth, that means that I can turn the gain on this down a lot, and you still hear me very loudly because the microphone is right next to my mouth. Let's say I turn the gain all the way down, uh, you are not going to hear the fume extractor and the hot air station as much. So you'll be able to better understand me. And for me, one of the problems that I had when I was looking to try to learn this stuff, uh, you, one of the things that I had is problems is that all these videos sucked and they sucked on purpose because the people making them in my opinion were using them as advertising for their services rather than because they genuinely wanted to educate others and my videos I actually wanted to teach other people it took me four to five years to actually get somewhat good at what I did and I remember thinking to myself if I ever get good at this I'm gonna make sure it's never this hard to do this ever again I'm gonna put out the material in the world that I wish existed so I, I got a good camera I got a good computer when I would do screen capture the schematic it would like before I even knew how to do screen capture I got this camera lens that would allow me to really zoom in on the computer screen I mean, that, that was such a fucking noob thing to do, but I didn't know any better. I, want, I wanted to have good quality stuff so I could show the schematic up close. I could show the board up close with a really good microscope camera, not a garbage one. I wanted to have good audio so you could understand what I was saying because if you can't understand what I'm saying, you're probably not going to be able to follow along and watch, and that's something that was really important to me. You have to give me money to answer a question. No, you don't, you fuck. I, there are, there are 1,200 people in this chat. I, there's no way I can answer all your questions at once. Stop being a salty puta. Uh, I'm going to just put you in timeout right now. You get timeout for 10 minutes, you prick. Uh, okay, 137. Let's see. Oh, shit. Okay, I've, I've officially fucked up here. 
I scrolled back, and now I can only read the chat from 151 onwards. So everything from 138 to 151 is gone. So we go back here. Sorry for everybody else whose chat is going to be missed as a result of Google. The one thing I got to say about Twitch, even though I don't like Twitch, is it keeps all the chat. Uh, Twitch keeps all the chat. YouTube does not, but Twitch banned Destiny, so fuck them. What's your strategy for advertising given Google doesn't allow third-party advertisements? Uh, the best that you, what you got to do in the beginning is you have to impress people. You have to kind of go above and beyond. I wrote a blog on this a long time ago. Let's see if I could find it. Essentially, you have to impress people to an extent that they will do the advertising for you for your own business. Um, let's see if I... Uh, why is... Shapes advertising... Uh, review. Uh, okay, it's on my blog. I, I don't even know where to find that damn blog page. I got to fix my site so the blog page actually works. Uh, there's a couple of pages on my site. You got, you're going to have to Google them to find this stuff because I haven't really kept up with my site. I kind of don't give a shit about updating my site anymore. Uh, okay, so I got a couple over here. So self-masturbation, the art of reviewing yourself, bribing customers and paying people to like you. Um, this, and actually it wasn't that one. Uh, oh, actually, let's see. Yeah, these, these are some, uh, there's one blog post I made on this. I forget exactly what it was. You'd have to scroll back through my blogs to find the blog that I wrote sometime between 2012 and 2014, but I was going over. The, the best advertising you could do is treat every single customer that walks into your store like they're a family member that you genuinely like and care for, that's willing to pay you above market price to get something done, that has an emergency that directly affects you as well as them. Like Treat every single one of them in the way you'd want to be treated and go above and beyond. Don't do what it is you advertise you're going to do and go 10 times overboard. The best way to advertise, in my opinion, is to just do, is do the type of work that's going to cause them to tell all their friends about you. If, if you say it's going to be done in five to seven days and cost $200 and you charge $200 and get it done in five to seven days and you have it, do it with an average attitude and you, you know, at the end, you, nobody's going to care. They're not going to tell other people. If you uh, put in the extra effort to get it done sooner, if you, figure, if you fix other issues that they're having in the meantime, if you give them advice on what it is they can do so that they could do this themselves and never have this happen again and go above and beyond to offer them value, uh, that's, that, that's going to be the type of stuff that causes everybody, them to tell everybody that you exist to get more business, and it's just going to kind of go uh, downhill from there. I don't ask people to review me. I've never said, by the way, will you leave a review? I don't, I don't do that. I, like, you know, I don't, uh, it's just not something that I've ever felt comfortable doing. It's not something I like doing. It's not something I would want to do. I want people to feel s so excited and grateful for what they got that they feel like not reviewing me would be a disservice. And that's not always going to happen. But sometimes it happens. Go back to the car wash. I want to see that. Have you considered uploading your video somewhere else besides YouTube? No, not really, because nobody looks at it. I have a Rumble channel. I have an Odyssey channel. I have a Vimeo channel. But the mere fact that you're asking that tells me that while you're advocating for other platforms, you don't actually use them. And one of the things that I'll have people say is, you really should upload your videos to Rumble. Why don't you upload to Rumble? And like, I have, a I have a channel. Like, you don't watch it. Nobody watches it. Even the people that advocate for these platforms don't actually watch them. It's, it's kind of pathetic, and it's kind of sad. I don't, when I say pathetic, I don't mean that you're pathetic. I want to be clear. Um, I mean it's pathetic the extent to which these other platforms have failed before they've even begun. Uh, they, like, it, it's sad. And like, again, one of the things that the, the application that we were creating is trying to do is trying to get people to be a little bit more open to trying this other stuff by not having to install multiple applications, use multiple different platforms. Being able to search everything inside of one app is something that we're trying to do there. But I, at the end of the day, I am a little bit of, uh, I am a little blackpilled on the idea of any of these other platforms actually working, uh, as just when you see that even the people that are their biggest advocates don't actually use the platforms themselves. Where is neurotypical doesn't mean boring. I don't think so, but I, neurotypical doesn't mean boring, but also non-neurotypical doesn't have to mean crazy. PF blocker and G is OPF. I switched to PF Sense a while back. It's amazing. Yeah, I used PF Sense at my store for a really long time, and then I wondered, like, PF Sense worked great for my store. Like, why am I not using this at home? So I got, you know, I use it at home, and it's exceptional. PF Blocker NG is great. Uh, the VPN functionality on it is great. Really, the level of control you get is great, and I'd rather use that even if it takes a little bit more time to set up. And I, I most certainly trust that more than anything else. I set up PF Sense. I'm getting updates. I'm getting security updates on the regular, and I'm going to get those security updates probably for the next ten or twenty years. If you buy a, a Linksys router eight years ago, are you still getting 
getting security updates, that shit is probably Swiss fucking cheese by now. Now, granted, you can install DDWRT on some of them, but the, the keyword there is some of them. And it's just not like you have to do all this research to figure out what's going to be compatible with what. And you have to worry about whether or not compatibility is going to be dropped. And it's just, I'd rather use PFSense. I'd rather use something like that. And more importantly, I'd rather have something that I can move to a more powerful computer if I start doing things with it that are going to cause me to require the more powerful computer without having to deal with having to reinstall my settings, reset up VPNs, re reset up uh, VLANs for camera systems and everything else. Like I can do so much cool shit with that thing. It's very powerful. And uh, if you, it's something that you don't know how to do, you know, Re you could read the manual if you're um, you could you could read the manual if you're um, what's the word I'm if a masochist or you could use ChatGPT if you're not a masochist. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Like just the ad blocking shit you could do alone is exceptional. What's the hardest repair job you ever done? I don't really know. I don't keep track of shit like that. You live a Fang, Fang V blog somewhere in your new city. Uh, I have a lot of stuff I got to fix on that bike. I decided to try a new controller. Feels like he is yapping. Oh, you can gargle my balls and go away. Uh, let's see. I do appliance repair in the South, and a lot of issues you run into and right to repair is applicable in our industry. Case in point, Samsung RLG. Do you know you can't just buy a power button? You know, that was a big thing. When we got wheelchair right to repair pass, one of the big complaints a lot of people had was that literally like something like a power button, they would be waiting, waiting two to four months. Uh, Nathan Proctor over at uh, US Perg did a lot of great research on that. Repair wheelchair. U.S. Perg wheelchair right repair. I funded a lot of this work. Like I've given hundreds of thousands of dollars of grants to uh, to, to the. Yeah, th this is one of the, the, the this is one of the um, yeah this is one of the reports that they made on wheelchairs where they were literally not able to get that. This is a summary of the report, the full report. And by this is very helpful when getting this uh, moved into law was being able to have these detailed reports that went over it. Let me see if I can find the actual report on wheelchairs where like people were waiting literally months for a fucking power button and they because they had to have the manufacturer come to get it because they couldn't get the parts in their own. If it was my wheelchair, again, no, like I'm, I'm open to that shit. I'm, 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 like, if I, when I need to turn it on, open, do this. Like I'm stripping my wires with, with a fucking nail clipper if I have to rather than, uh, you know, deal with not being able to get around. But I'm really happy that stuff like that got, got uh, changed and I'm really happy to see the change in that industry. Okay, you want to see report wheelchair? Let's see, where is this? Yeah, right. Repair restrictions and mobilized wheelchair. Yeah, I've, I've tried to give the. Here we go. This, this reports like this, like this stuff, really started to change shit because we we failed early on with uh, with a lot of this. Let's see. Yeah, there's a. I've I've provided a lot of money uh, to US Perg in order to you know like put the time and effort into hiring people to be able to go through these types of things. And, you know, it, it, it seems to have worked. Uh, that, that, that bill failed for several years before. I don't even think I put a lot into a lobbyist. I think it was like 10 or 20K that I put into the lobbyist for that particular area. And it got a lot done. Uh, you know, it, not my industry, not my industry. And it doesn't affect me, but, you know, it affects people that are, that, that are uh, crippled and unable to get around. It allows them to get around, and that's cool. Again, people think that what I'm talking about here really only affects people that want to fix iPhones, MacBooks, stuff like that. Why don't you just buy Apple? Not buy Apple. Like, yeah. It's, it's about a lot more than Apple. But most people are like that. They don't really, like, they see a problem that affects somebody else, and they don't care about that problem until it affects them. Most people don't really care about a problem or consider it to be a problem until it affects them personally. And that's a, a sad part of, what, of what, a reason, part of the reason that we don't have a lot of progress in the world, because it's easier to make fun of people that have a problem for the fact that they got themselves into the situation to have the problem, rather than to actually say, hey, man, that, you know, that's kind of a problem, man. It may affect me someday. Uh, maybe we should do something about it. Excuse me, that was a really loud, annoying noise. Sorry about that. Not, not really considerate of me to make that while on camera. I could have muted my, ca my microphone, and I did not. I should have, but I did not. Would you take stem cell therapy to stay young? Maybe repair knees. I'd be open to it once I see how it affects somebody else. I was stupid. I was so stupid. I essentially flunked into the wrong career. Is so good. Yeah, I think I talked about that in my you know video on uh, having the right to hate your job. One of the things I mentioned in that video is that I was a failure enough to be. I was I was um, so lucky to be so stupid uh, that I you know I was able to start a business because your average person, your average person is good at you know like they know how to pass it. Like yeah, I, this is a video that I think is worth uh, one of the few videos of mine that I think is worth watching. Uh, very few videos, but I think is like actually worth worth viewing. I'll post it in the chat. Is 
you know, one of the things I said in this video is, yeah, I was one of the people that was stupid enough to not be able to get a job. I was stupid enough to not be able to pass a college class. I was stupid enough to not know how to write a resume. I was stupid enough to not know how to deal with a job interview. And let's, like, let's be real. Again, I am a 35-year-old fucking man. I have run a company that had 16 employees. I've hired dozens of people. I've gotten, I've helped get laws passed. I've raised millions of dollars. I've climbed to the top of my industry. I've taught hundreds of thousands of people how to do cool shit. Um, I'm not qualified. I don't know how to get a job. Like, I have applied for jobs that pay 200K at director level. I have applied for jobs that literally pay like 40 to 60 fucking K for customer service. I have a, if I told you the jobs that, I have a, if I told you, but the point of that is, and God, there's always a giant comment that's like, takes up half the, the page. I appreciate the five bucks, but I'm never going to be able to finish what I'm saying. One sec. Naked has been mentioning their PFSense OS name if you build your own firewalls to sell using their software. If you consider using more of them prior like OPN Sense. No, I have not because I don't want to learn something new. I'm sorry. I know that that's not the right answer. I know the right answer is supposed to be if it's even 5% more open that I should throw away the configuration that I spend hours pulling my fucking hair out to make perfect to immediately start from scratch with something new. But I'm just not that interested in that. I'm really, just not. I'm like, I'm not selling their firewalls. I'm, I'm using what I got for free it's open source already i'm i'm good like i'm good i'm good I, you know in principle yes if i was starting over maybe but i don't want to fucking start over i don't want to deal with that shit i it works it's in my closet making shit work in linux in general is a fucking nightmare and when it works i'm done uh, back to the other thing like yeah you know like i'm one of the people that was lucky enough to be such a failure that i could not get a real job 15 years in basic ass shit like i would not be I'm not kidding when I say the only thing I would be qualified to do at this point in my life is sell Spectrum Internet at Walmart or HEB on commission. But at the end of the day, that was part of what made me lucky because most people are so unlucky that they're not failures. Most people are so unlucky that they have the ability to pass a college class and get a degree. They have the ability to write a resume. They have the ability to get a job. They're unlucky people. It's the lucky people, in my opinion, that are such fucking failures that they have to create their own job and their own path through life because they don't have the ability to integrate into the normal world. And in many ways, uh, you know, it's lucky. Like, again... I, I, I'm happy with my view. I'm happy with my balcony. I'm happy with not having debt. I have zero debt, none whatsoever. I do not owe anybody anything. I don't know a credit card company. I don't know a bank. I don't know a mortgage provider. I don't know a car. I don't know shit. I own all my stuff. Um, would that be true? If I got student loans, if I did what everybody, if I was capable of doing what everybody else could do. I never even got far enough along in college to get to the point where I would need student loans to do the last two years, to do a master's, to do anything else. I never got to the point of like doing the entry level shit job so I could go to those like, okay, maybe a little bit at Avatar Studios when I interned when I was 17, but a free internship is not my idea of a real job. Uh, you know, I, like I took a very strange path through life. It's not the path for everybody. And I didn't take this path. I don't lie to you. I didn't take my path through life because I'm some sort of genius entrepreneur. I'm, I have this vision for business that nobody else did. I could get a fucking job. And if I tried to get a job and dig in, whether I'm 17, 25, or 35, that shit has not changed. My, uh, like, but there's a bit of luck in that because other people that are unlucky enough to be traditionally successful they got to deal with student loans. They got to deal with car loans. They got to deal with mortgages. They got to deal with debt. They have to deal with bosses that they don't like. They have to deal with doing work that is mind-numbing. So yeah, like, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm not going to tell you that I'm like some crazy business owner, that that's how I got to where I am. I got to where I am because I fucking failed at everything I tried to do with life and said, you know what? Let me try doing something on my own. And, uh, you know, you have to be a little crazy to start your own company because you have to believe, you have to be willing to work for free for a long time. You have to be willing to do to set up all the systems from scratch that are already set up for you by somebody else when you go to work for somebody else. You have to really be okay with wandering around, not knowing if something's actually going to work. See, I think that one of the hard things for people, your videos inside are going to be the compass to get into it and repair loads of broken iPods, and now it's become one of my favorite hobbies, keep being awesome. Thank you very much, Carl. Thank you. That really means a lot to me. As many asked why using a ThinkPad instead of the framework. I virtualized the server I was running on this, which freed it up as a laptop. Linux does not have palm rejection. And one of the great things is I don't have a fucking trackpad. I have this. This, this, this right here, I need this. And also the NVIDIA graphics. Uh, if you use Linux, DaVinci Resolve will not work without discrete graphics. In Windows, it will, but then you have to use Windows. And I, I, I missed my track point, but more importantly, I kind of want, I needed a discrete GPU for Linux. And like, granted, you know, I could buy a framework that has a discrete GPU, but I already own this, and I'm, I already own this, and I'm kind of cheap, so I also, I, I need this. NAS purchase suggestion, one NAS, but don't want to be stuck with proprietary ecosystem. Build your own, honestly, like, again, 
I would get like, uh, say, you know, what I use is like Nextcloud for my phone shit, Samba uh, for like transfer, you know, Samba for my home network, and also Samba with, you know, you can use Samba with an application that I like for my smartphone called Owl Files. Owl Files is pretty good. Uh, you use that with OpenVPN on a PFSense router. I would use XFS or ZFS, you know, use like, Use some redundancy. Use you know, get some RAID. I have about eight or ten drives in my system. About three or four of them are redundant, so I could have three drives in that system die, and it still works. And uh, yeah, I, I use that, and it works pretty nicely. If I want to access my files again, it just shows up. Like I just mount it using ECFIS tab and Samba and all that shit we, um, for my other home computers. If I'm out and about, and I want to access photos and I want to view them in a gallery fashion, I can use Nextcloud or I can use Image. If I want to use, see my camera system, I can use FreeGate, and all that gets stored on top of the storage that I. I already have, uh, and again, you know, I can con I can I can connect to it via a secure connection rather than having to deal with opening ports and shit like that. I, I would do that rather than buy a Synology or a QNAP or any of that bullshit. Because the moment you buy a Synology and you realize that if you want to encrypt your device with some of the older ones that were on the lower end, like the five or six hundred dollar ones, I shit you not, your directory name with your file had to be like under two hundred fifty five or three hundred characters in order for it to work, which made it functionally impossible to use encryption. You have limits that you just don't want to. Dig. I, I prefer to do this shit myself. It's a little bit more difficult. My kidding. It's a lot more difficult to set all this garbage up from scratch and deal with all the small things. Uh, but but it's, it, it winds up being worth it in the end. And if you're a noob who really genuinely has no fucking clue what to do at all, use ChatGPT. Honestly, you ask it to do something. A lot of people are gonna say, read the docs, read the man pages. That's not the manly way to do it. Fuck them. Seriously, you use ChatGPT. You ask it, hey, how do I want to do something that does this? Give me some information. Hey, I tried to do that, didn't work. Give me some information. It'll spit out a lot of useful shit. That's really well, genuinely helpful. Uh, be genuinely helpful in trying to understand how to do it yourself. What tech stack do you use for your website? What website? I have a bunch of them. There's no real tech stack. It's like a, it's a, it's a shitty ass WordPress website. There's not really much to say. I have a WordPress website. I have a Magento website, and I have a forum that uses Zenforo. That's that's really it. I love you. Please read my message. I read your message. If you say read my message, what that means is I have to scroll back to find it, which is not going to happen. But if you post the message, I'll read it. If you post read my message, I will read the message where you say read my message. You ever taken me day? I haven't taken me days for a while, but I've been uh, starting to over the past few weeks. I've been starting to really focus on myself and some of the things that I'm. Uh, yeah, I've been starting to focus on some of the things that I need to focus on that I haven't focused on when I was younger. Trying to catch up. Do you use Notion? I don't. Why don't you fix desktop GPUs? Uh, I don't see there being a lot of money in it in particular. Again, our business is a no-fix, no-fee business. There is a lot that you have to learn about each set of GPUs. You have to learn what the core failures are. And once you get the core failures, you essentially have to get in enough business to make it worth it. So for instance, like Chris may spend 300 hours learning how to fix a particular model of board. But the, re the way that I make back my investment on the two or 300 hours of time that Chris or myself spent learning it is by getting 30,000 tickets in. And I guess I don't have the confidence that I will get in that 30,000 tickets to make the investment worth it. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that I don't. And also, again, this business is really a business where I charge you zero dollars if I don't fix it. Now, granted, this was also back, I made that decision back like four or five years ago, back when you could buy a, a, a damn good gaming GPU for $300. That's not the case anymore. So this may have changed. You know, the, the equation may have changed, and it may be something that's worth looking into now uh, than it was before. Hmm, interesting. Hello. Oh, I hate when my Firefox window dies. I can scroll, but I can't type into this thing. Oh, well. What videos your ears would you recommend for time management? Uh, I think I posted it somewhere here. Let me see if I still have it up. Uh, I have so much junk in this browser tab. Let me close all this other shit. Yoink. This is one of the reasons I don't drink a lot of caffeine. I've literally had one cup of coffee, and I feel like I'm on cocaine. I, I uh, I'm very avoidant of caffeine because it, it I, like caffeine fucking destroys me. Like I, if you thought I talked anyway, this one, less anxiety, more productivity through discipline, time management. This is a video I would recommend of mine if you want to understand time management. I don't think I was as good at speaking back then as I am now, and I don't think the video was really well structured. The TLDR of that video is making a list for your day is a really great way to try and get things done. It worked for me. I didn't know at the time that I had extreme insane ADHD. Uh, I, I was really like trying to come up with ways to get things done because I could easily waste my entire day and get absolutely nothing. Um, I could get nothing accomplished. But uh, But like now... 
Um, but like n now it's very helpful. And there are also different degrees of ADHD. Like there's ADHD where it's, again, you can't pay attention in a boring class, whatever, fine. Like, um, you know, boring teachers are very, very quick to diagnose students with ADHD, even though they're not medical professionals, to kind of deal with the fact that they are boring and place the onus on somebody else. There's that, there's, you know, I can't read books or pay attention, and then there's like, I am literally not able to live a functional life if I do not arrange my day in five to 15 minute increments. And that's something that was really helpful for me in order to get things done. Like I literally sit there and make a list and I'll update it numerous times a day. And one of the great things about it is you get this little dopamine kick. You get this really cool dopamine kick every time you actually get something done faster. It's like log into this website, nine o'clock, get this info, nine ten. send this info to account, nine twenty. If you get all those things done by 904, it's like, holy shit, I'm, I'm like, I'm 14 minutes ahead. This is awesome. And then you kind of get this kick that makes it more exciting and you get more excited to kind of continue going through your schedule. And it's, it's, it also makes you feel like you're getting something done. Above all, it makes you realize just how much time exists in a day and how much of it you, that you waste. At least in my case, I shouldn't project onto you by saying you when it's actually me that I'm talking about. But it makes it very easy for me to understand how much time I'm actually wasting because I get to see, like, uh, you know, when somebody walks over to me and has a question and I just kind of wind up going off into some tangent or some other conversation that I don't really need to go off into, I realized that I kind of went off on a tangent or off into some other bullshit conversation that I really shouldn't be having right now as a result of saying, hey man, like, listen, I actually have this thing to do. I have to do this thing by 9.15. It's 9.10. This looks like it's going to be a seven minute conversation. I need to go back to what I'm doing. And it creates that level. It allows me to create that level of discipline for myself that I otherwise wouldn't have. And while I have failed at quite a few of the things I've accomplished in life, I think the reason that I was able to run a, you know, a supply business or a pair business, uh, one nonprofit, two nonprofits, a YouTube channel, get a full-time job and do all this shit at the same time for a decent amount of time is because I'm able to arrange my day with these types of lists and exceptionally dial down on the amount of time I spend on bullshit. Because a lot of people that claim that they work 15 hours a day, well, in reality, they don't work 15 hours a day, they don't work 12 hours a day, they don't even work two hours a day. They spend a lot of their day browsing, doing other stupid crap that doesn't really make sense to do. And they're not actually working. They're doing other stuff that really isn't actually work, is not productive in any way, shape, or form, but they're at the office, so they think that they're working, or they're at the place that they're doing stuff, so they think that they're working. You know, like, doing that. Why does Mr. Clinton say about this? If we're just to decaf, my brain is m much less, still no brain, though. Another cup. This is literally my second cup of coffee. Can you believe that one cup of coffee? I have been talking like I have had, like, 600 milligrams of Adderall and a line of cocaine for an hour and a half. Hmm. Oh. Privacy is expensive. That's why people don't care most of the time. Again, I really think that the, the destruction of privacy, I think it started with Gmail. I'll be real. Does anybody remember what the forum comments were back in 2009 when Gmail became a thing? How many people, if you had a thread on DSL reports that was like 80 pages long, how many people pointed out that in the terms of service, there was a bot reading through your email and then create advertising to you based on the contents of your email. Nobody cared. You know what everybody cared about? I can send a 20 megabyte attachment to my friend without having to use AOL. Because remember, back then, the only email service, one of the only email services that was popular, you could, if you had AOL and your friend had AOL, you could send a 16 megabyte email attachment. With Gmail, you could do that for free and send it to somebody else without having an AOL account. Not that I had an AOL account, fuck AOL. But, you know, I, I would use my own little home FTP server. But back then, man, like, you know, I had, I, I, I had like, uh, what was it? I had, a, I had 168 kilobit, not kilobyte, kilobit upload. So my own home FTP server sucked. Uh, how, how does this affect me personally? Little megacorp censoring people, but the people say words others do not like. Your stimming hurts my ADHD brain. What is stimming and what are you talking about? I genuinely appreciate the $5 and thank you for the $5. It's likely more than I've earned and more than I deserve, but I don't actually understand what you've said, unfortunately. Um, I would say post it in the normal chat and I will read it. You don't have to pay for me to answer a comment, but I am at the, the chat that is at 201 and it looks like it's 253, so I am behind by literally an hour in that chat, so it's going to take me a while. Uh, why are using the ThinkPens to the framework? Uh, it has a track point button. I, I was not using this because it was vir because I was using this as a virtualized, I mean, as a server. I had a bunch of computer. I literally had a bunch of laptops in my closet, like here's an xCloud machine, here's a NAS attached to an external bay, here's a free BBX machine, here's this, here's that, here's a camera machine. It was literally just all old laptops. So I, I you know, I virtualized all those instances, which is what, let's be real, I should have done that like two years ago. I just never have the time to myself because I'm always busy running a Ponzi scheme in my life and my time. I, um, and I put it all on one 
uh, monster computer that has 64 gigs of RAM, uh, two NVMe SSDs in RAID 1 that are insanely fast, uh, about 10 20, 10, 20 terabyte drives, 10 or 11, I think, um, and um, some, and I think it was a Core i7 14700K. It's just fucking massive processor, and everything is virtualized on that. So now I have all those laptops back, including this. I really miss the track point, and if I want to edit video on Linux, I need DaVinci. Re if I want to use DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is the only acceptable Linux video editor by a long shot, unless you want to use something that's insanely buggy or behind by f behind 20 years in basic features, like being able to use VST plugins on an audio track, you uh, you need an NVIDIA GPU. Whereas if you use Windows, you don't need, a, you can use the Intel Iris, but I don't want to use Windows on my laptop. And I also want to be able to edit video using a program that doesn't suck. I still have my framework over there. I use it when I boot into Windows. Uh, when I, If I need to program my bike, if I need to use my programmer for my phase runner controller, if I need to use the software that I use to connect to my mini DSP, I do use that. And if I want to use the calibration software for the mini DSP, I do use the framework, but I, am, I use that for Windows stuff when I'm not connecting to the internet and I use this for everything else. Now that Linus is out of the framework, I may be interested. Is Linus out of the framework? I haven't really kept up with any of that. Seeing Apple go against right repair for a few days ago, where they said it supported it, reminds me of what you said in your videos confirming that the support is not serious. Yeah, I really wanted to, I have, I've wanted to take the time to listen to that. I know it's about an hour and a half of testimony, and I'll be honest with you, I feel guilty saying this. I'm not excited to anymore. I'm just not. Because like, I feel like I'm responding to the same thing over and over and over and over again. And as I get older, I feel like I've gotten less interested. Uh, th th there's probably three elements to this. The first is kind of realizing that th that battle is already... In, in many ways, I feel like I've lost that battle. And secondly, I feel like it's just a repetition of going over the same point over and over and over again. At some point, I kind of become tired of it. Like, even when we're talking about parts pairing and serialization, right? Parts pairing is bad. Parts pairing where, you know, the company can say, we are the only ones that can allow you to use a part from another device. My mental health is better in that I'm not afraid of being destroyed financially anymore and that I'm, I, I haven't, like, this is soothing. This is calming. This is, this, is this is beautiful. Like, going out on this balcony over here and looking out at the lake, like, I love life when I come home. I do not feel like I'm coming home to a shithole anymore that I pay an insane amount of money for. I come home to a goddamn castle where I am the king. I love it. And the best part is I can afford it. If I wanted this view in New York City, if I wanted this house in New York City, I would literally be paying 10 times the money. I would never be able to afford it over the course of my natural life. I paid for this shit. I paid for it in full. I don't owe a bank any money. I don't owe anybody any money. It's fucking mine. It's beautiful. I like my neighbors. I like the people that I'm around. I like the neighborhood. I like the area. I like what the area stands for in particular. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm happy. You know, it's funny because, like, um, woman, this woman I was going out with, she, well, you know, we were looking around, and there was this one dude that had, like, a, this little thing that said DPF delete and all this other shit, and she just looked, and she's like, I can't find that guy on Google Maps anywhere. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I wonder why the DPF delete guy's not on Google Maps. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, she didn't understand. She didn't understand. Anyway. I like you know it's it's an interesting little area. Um, I like it, and so my mental health I think is in some ways is better, in some ways is worse because I feel like I have more stress. But that's stress that I've put on myself. But it's I think in some ways it's good stress because once I'm done with the things that I'm doing that are stressful, life is going to be better on the other side of it. So I, I'm happy about that. But for the most part, I love being able to come home to a place that I like. I like being able to live in a neighborhood where I like my neighbors. I like living someplace where if there's a box of cat litter that stays outside for a day and a half that got delivered and I'm not home for that day and a half. Nobody steals the fucking cat litter or breaks the window because they see the package inside. I like where I live. I don't know what else to say. I really do like where I live. I enjoy it. There are ups and downs to living everywhere. You know, there are downs here. Listen, I used to have Fios. Now I have Spectrum. You know, there's a, there, there are certain things. You know, you don't get everything that you want. There are certain things that are downsides. But for the most part, I, I, I've chosen to live with the compromises that are the best for me. And I'm happy. I'm a happy dude. Maybe I'm just happy because I've had a lot of coffee. I think it's probably happy. I haven't, honestly, it's been a cup and a half. It's not even a lot. I never thought of becoming an auctioneer. I work with a lot of TVs, and newer flat screen TVs are absolute garbage quality wise, but it's the old CRT ones. You think this is helpful for our consumer electronics? Is that true? Is that really true? Or is that this case where we kind of have this nostalgia for the past and we forget that things used to suck back in the day? Like, I, you know. Man, I remember the TVs that I had as a kid. That, sh those, that shit broke all the time, man. Like, if you get a good, like, oh, the good LCD TVs I've gotten, like, high end Sony, um, high end, like, high end LG, like, I don't have those problems with them, you know? You, you have problems with cheap shit, but I don't think cheap shit was as available back in the day. I guess, I mean, you had Sylvania and you had other cheap shit, but like for the most part, when you bought this type of stuff, you didn't really have the options to buy cheap shit back then the way that you do now. Um, and a lot of those things still broke on a regular basis. Like you bought an RCA console television, man, the tuners and the 1993 models, you had to bang that thing on a regular basis to get it to work again. This is most people on the lowest streaming years. Yeah. 
I'm literally uh, 54 minutes behind in chat. It's insane. I'm trying to answer things. I'm trying to give real answers to things rather than ignore everything, but I realize the actual effect is that is ignoring people by proxy because it's going to take me so long to actually get to the later comments. What do you think about measures of slow global warming? And for example, a lot of EU countries tax generally older vehicles which have higher emissions. And why is this in addition taxing the poor? Uh, you know, uh, vehicles have a lot to do with it, but at the same time, when you look at the overall scheme of things, um, like in the United States, for instance, when you look at the amount that's contributed by, let's say, um, if you look at what Saudi Aramco creates or what the U.S. military does with regards to emissions, and then you look at what, what consumer vehicles do, even if all consumer vehicles like stopped being used in general, you still would not, it wouldn't be anything in contrast to what's happening in, let's say, India or China or, uh, or even just the U.S. military. So a lot, it's, it, it's kind of like water conservation. Like I try, I try to save water. I do not, try, I do not waste water. I don't, I don't water my grass every day. I don't keep the water on. I don't stay in the shower for really long periods of time. But at the end of the day, like dealing with, um, you know, j just something like irrigation in order to um, create for, uh, what is it, for, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Like just growing chickpeas, like, when you look at how much water we use to grow chickpeas and then you look at how much water we use to shower, at the end of the day, like you could, you, you could take, I'm not saying you shouldn't take an efficient shower. Don't jerk off in the shower. Don't stay in there for 30 fucking minutes every day. Go on with your life. But it's, it's just such a small savings in contrast to where the actual spend, expending is. I think that we're going to reduce emissions eventually through technology. Like once population peaks and simultaneously as technology evolves, at some point, we are going to figure out a way to do certain things without emissions. Like, I don't think scaling back with current technology is going to be it. Rather, I think it's 2040, 2050, 2060 comes not only having technology that allows us to emit much less in general, but simultaneously having technology that allows us to emit less. We're, we're not dealing with trade-offs. We're not dealing with, okay, the car has this 2,000 fucking pound battery that dies in a few years, or we have, you know, solar panels where you spend $50,000 on panels and an entire setup, and it, you know, it winds up doing less for you than a $2,000 generator powered by propane. I, I think that technology will evolve at some point. It's going to be far into the future, not now, to where not only is it better, considerably better, but everything is so much cheaper that we are going to have such a, so low emissions that we'll be able to evolve to the next point of actually getting that shit out of the atmosphere that we put into it. I think it's one of those things where it's going to be a problem that we solve in the future. But I don't know how we, I don't know how to solve it now. And even if you do manage to have these types of, even if you do manage to have all these types of things you want to do to reduce emissions, good luck getting everybody to sign up for it. It's, that's going to be a difficult one. Um, you know, I, I'd, li I'd like to see it happen, but I don't, it's going to, it's going to be a difficult one. It's going to be a lot of culture war shit that happens that keeps it from happening. And, what do you think about marriage? Uh, you know, I, I've, I've kind of gone back and forth. There were times in my life, long periods of time, where I said, fuck marriage altogether. I don't know how that's going to work. I think part of that was influenced by, my, uh, by seeing how marriages went within my own family and uh, not really having a proper mindset, which is I, if, I hold my if I hold my parents accountable for what caused their marriage to fail and I really ask the hard questions and I accept that they did things wrong, then I'll be able to hold myself accountable and conversely not make the same mistakes they did. Whereas if you don't hold your parents accountable for why things didn't go right with them, you may not be able to hold yourself accountable. Like if you don't, if you're not open, a, that's why I think if your marriage failed, it's very um, important to hold yourself accountable and responsible for the, thing, the choices that you could have made differently so your children don't believe that they will follow in your footsteps. Again, like you could say, all marriages suck, all men are shit, all women are shit, blah, 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 blah. Or you could say, you know, here's what I did. I could, have I could have chosen somebody different. I chose this person because of this insecurity or because I ignored that. And as a result, I wound up with somebody with a, uh, where a broken home occurred after we had a child. That's not, that, these are the mistakes I made so that your kids know that marriage, marriage kind of works. I, I, I didn't really get that out of, out, of my, uh, out, of my, out of my parents and my family. So for a long time, I don't think I was really very optimistic about marriage. There are times that I have been optimistic about marriage, and there was one time that I even actually bought an engagement ring, which um, I, I wound up not actually using. That's a long story in and of itself, and that does not fucking belong on YouTube in any way, shape, or form. After that particular moment, I kind of went back to... I don't know, I, I think marriage is a good institution. I really do. I think it's, you know, when you tie yourself to somebody for life, you really are kind of saying, what, w listen, man, it's going to be hard and we're going to have issues, but we got, we're going to get through it. Like, we are going to do the work rather than run away from each other. It's very easy to run away from somebody when you can. Thank you, Salem Texperts. I really appreciate you donating 0.0000001% of your hourly earnings from your amazingly fucking successful YouTube channel. Uh, I, I'm very, I am very happy with pushing you to make YouTube videos, by the way, two and a half years ago. Like, 
damn. Like, I, I, I love seeing people do that type of shit and become massively successful. And you are, if anybody has earned or deserves insane success in life, it's the honest, humble people like you that always do the right thing even when nobody is looking, that care to do the right thing when nobody's looking, that give a shit about their customers, give a shit about their friends, family, and everybody else, and uh, that, 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 that don't get noticed. When people like you get noticed, uh, you know, like, I, I feel like God is smiling on the world at times like that. So congratulations to you. Uh, I forget what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, marriage. So, you know, I've, I've kind of I've like gone back and forth on it. I really do think it is a great institution because marriage forces, like, listen, when shit, when shit goes down, when, you know, some, when you have a certain type of argument or when you have a certain issue, it's very easy to say, fuck this, we're not going to work through it if you have the option to leave. When you don't have the option to leave, man, we got to sit here and figure this shit out. We're going to work this out. We're going to figure out what we have to do to be better. You're going to go to alcohol. You know, you're going to go to AA. I'm going to go to counseling, whatever the fuck it is. I'm going to get this different job. I'm going to pay off this debt. I'm going to figure out how to have more healthy conversations with you when it comes to this particular area where you may be insecure. I may be angry. You figure out a way to work shit out in a way that you just don't when the door is open. When the door is not open for you to leave, the door is open for, the, for something else, which is healing, which is the conversations and how to make things better, how to, how to you know, fix issues that I don't think you'd otherwise fix. Uh, in my terms, I don't really know if marriage is in the cards for me over the course of my life for a number of reasons that I'm not really ex uh, ex excited to go through on, on YouTube. I've got my own shit that I have to deal with, and I don't know if I would be a... I, I'm not... I'm not 100% sure in, uh, in uh, my, yeah, I'm not 100% I'm not sure in my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The specific word I'm looking for. I'm not, I'm not sure or confident in my value as a marriage prospect. I'll leave it at that. Do you have any strong feelings about the 737 Max saga? I don't really know much about airplanes, man. I'll be honest. Maybe you're not successful as Linus is, but you're a way better person for starters as Pitar. I wouldn't say that. I really wouldn't say that. And I think a big part of the problem in life, and I think the way that people give themselves licenses to become pieces of shit, is they assume they're the good guy rather than assuming that they're the villain. Never assume that you're the good guy in the story. I think it's always important to kind of assume that you would be the villain because I think assuming that you would be the villain is part of what keeps you from becoming the villain. It's... it's oh. Don't assume that you're the good guy. Don't assume you're doing things for good reasons. I, I don't know if I'm a better person than Linus. I really don't. I don't know him well enough. I don't know him well enough, but I know myself well enough. I know what drives me. I know what causes me to make my decisions. I know what causes me to do the good things that I do, even when I think that they, even when they are good things with good outcomes. I know it's driving me, and I don't know if it's particularly something that's good. But I always I think one of the reasons that I, I always assume that of myself is to keep myself from actually becoming the villain that I have the potential to be. If someone's opinion of you is a name towards bettering or helping you, it isn't worth a damn shit. Just want to let you know that you've earned favor with me. I feel like I owe you. I'm a bit older, but you still a role model me and others. Like, I don't know if I'm worth being a role model. Again, I, I kind of have an idea of how my br how my brain works. Why, you know, how, how the gears turn, even for the good things I've done, why I've done them. I don't really know if that's the case. But I appreciate that you think that's the case. Are oh, you thinking of switching back to Linux? I switched back to Linux in 2020. I, I used Linux from about 2002 to 2014. In 2015, I went to Windows because I was just having issues doing it. What is Gray J app for the, for the phone? Oh, it's an application that allows you to view multiple video platforms and within one application. So instead of having a Nebula application, a YouTube application, an Odyssey application, a Rumble application, a PeerTube application, a fucking app, you know, an app for everything, you, 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 you have one application. But more importantly, within that one application, you could search every platform and you could subscribe to every creator on that platform. So instead of having your Rumble subscriptions, your Odyssey subscriptions, your PeerTube subscriptions, your YouTube subscriptions, and every, your Nebula subscriptions, you have all that shit in the app. If, you have, if you're a YouTube Premium member, you can log in to YouTube Premium in GrayJ. GrayJ is not an application that's simply about not paying for products and services. We encourage you to pay the creators that you view, and we dare I say, we you know, GrayJ would even encourage you to pay for YouTube Premium if you would like. You can log in to YouTube Premium on that. You can log in to Nebula and view the content that you bought and paid for on that application. We want people to be open to using other platforms. We don't want people to be focused and pigeonholed in on one goddamn platform. We want you to feel like you can comment across all platforms within one application. We want you to feel like if you're a creator, you have one identity on all these different platforms within one application. But above all, if you get deleted off of one of those platforms and somebody subscribed to you using your harbor identity, they subscribe to you as a sovereign man or woman or whatever's in between nowadays in 2024. They subscribe to you, not to you 
YouTube, not to you on Twitch, not to you on Odyssey, not to you on Rumble, so that when that platform goes away, your donation link is still there. People can still see that you exist. People can still see the information that you put on your page that describes who you are, what you do, what makes your content special, where your donation links are, where your store links are. We want people to support content creators, but we also want them to support content creators as creators, not as Twitch creators, not as YouTube creators, not as that. That's what the application is trying to do. Does it do it perfectly? No. Do we have as many users as we want at this point in time? Maybe not. Have we made back the money that we spent developing it? Fuck no, because the application works for free even if you don't pay for it. And it's open source, so even if you, you know, you could literally log into it. You could literally build a fucking application, modify the source code to not bother you to ever even, not, e not even have the guilt page to pay, and it works. But at the end of the day, we have a little bit of a vision for what we want the world to look like when it comes to social media, and we don't want it to be these stupid proprietary bullshit silos where people's identities can be wiped out like 3D Print General or Destiny within a day. But you, do you like Destiny? You don't like Destiny. You like that he's let other women fuck his wife? You don't like that he's let other women fuck his wife. You think he's a great political debater? You think he's a shit political debater? You think he has great relationship advice? You think he has shit relationship advice? There's is one thing that I think we should all agree on. If you spend 11 years making a website money, if you spend 11 years gaining hundreds of thousands of followers on a website that you should not have your entire work, all of your back catalog and your ability to speak deleted because some cunt employee at that company doesn't like you, reports you, and hits the delete button. If you believe that Destiny or 3D Print General or anybody else should have their identity deleted like this, then guess what? The same is going to apply to you someday. The same standard you set for them is going to apply to you. Is this application perfect? No. Is everything we're doing the perfect? No. Do we have the highest chance of success? I don't really know. But, we're, but you know, it, it's an effort. It's an effort that's being put in, and people are trying. Uh, thanks for everything you have watched, your videos, and all your hard work for at least four years. Stay healthy, bud. Thank you. Yeah, again, like, you know, there's this misconception that that application is solely about ad block. No, it's not. It's not. That, 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 that's not what the application is about. It's about being able to view content across platforms. It's about encouraging people to support creators. There is a sponsor block section in there. We are not happy to be using sponsor block. And it literally says inside the application, if you use this, you should be paying the creator directly. Um, it's, it's about being able to support people that may get banned. Now, a lot of people may say, listen, the problem that of normal people not being willing to support creators while simultaneously using ad block is a greater problem than the problem of people getting banned. Okay, that's a few. And again, I think it depends on where you are in that particular portion of the spectrum. Uh, for me, again, I got a letter from Kilpatrick and Townsend in 2016 asking that I remove my YouTube videos based on, uh, again, they didn't get taken down because I think that there was a lot of PR backlash, but there's a lot of my content in my catalog that if they wanted to come back, man, I'm, not, I'm probably not fighting that. I'm probably getting my stuff deleted. I've seen how people that I've watched for years have had their content just completely removed. I've wanted to kind of catch up on 3D printing shit because I feel like I haven't really gotten out of my niche in technology over the past few years and I wanted to catch up on shit. I used to be a viewer of 3D Print General. You know, it kind of sucks to see these people just get erased. It kind of sucks to, be able to see people's identities get erased. And I realize that at the end of the day, we're probably trying to do stuff like this a little bit late in the game so late in the game that it may not be possible to actually undo uh, the way people view content, the way they use these applications, the way they deal with uh, these platforms. It is very possible that that is too late. And if that's the case, you know, that would really suck. I hope that's not the case. But it's, it's better, I think, in my opinion, I think it's better to try. It's better to do something than not do something at all. Uh, you know, one of the things Yoda said in Star Wars is do or not do, there is no try. Uh, we are putting in quite a bit of effort there, and uh, we're going to continue putting in effort into the future. You know, there was a letter that got sent, uh, for, you know, a form email that got sent from Google, you know, politely asking us to stop doing what we're doing. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's not. Uh, let, let's just say that that's that's not on the that's not in the cards. Uh, we intend to keep do, you know keep doing what we're doing and uh, keep moving forward with it and um, see, see how things go. It, my, my boss is not somebody who, who takes a lot of bullies. He's never taken a lot of bullies, and I don't think he's going to take a lot of bullies in the future. And as you know, one of those people that, you know, if, if he wanted to hire, uh, what's the name of that firm I, I mentioned in that video? Yeah, if he wanted to hire Quinn Emanuel and say, man, I got this really annoying email from Google. Here's $10 million. <laughs> Have fun creating an antitrust case against Google that is based more in fact, that is stronger than the case being cre uh, brought out by the Department of Justice and FTC. Hell, if you wanted to say, here's $100 million, have fun. Quinn Emanuel and three other firms putting together the best antitrust case in the world against them. He, he could kind of do that. He's the kind of crazy person that would do that just because he's 
doesn't like people telling him what to do. Like if there's, a, you know, for the things that I like about my boss, the things I don't like about my boss, the things I think he does well, the things I think he does that are shitty, and I've told him both in person many times. In per like I, I don't have a, I don't have the personality type where I can hide any of the way that I think or feel. One of the things that I think he does very well is uh, he, you know, he doesn't like bullies and he doesn't like letting people tell him what to do. And I, I don't see him, uh, I, I don't see him allowing uh, Alphabet or Google to tell him what to do. I don't, I don't see that, I don't see that happening in the near future. <laughs> and I, I don't see, and you know. It's helpful when you have the money to, to, to be able to do that. Why do you got to donate right as I go to refund my copy, man? Where can I safely download that application? Uh, do, do a search for it. It shows a, do, do a search for it. I may, may or may not be excited to give you the URL of that on, on here, but I'm, I'm confident you could find it if you do a little bit of a search for it. I believe in you. We're going to brew another coffee because I don't usually drink caffeine because caffeine, is, even the smallest amount of caffeine affects me like... Uh, yeah, like absolute cocaine, but we are going to do that. One moment here. Yes. Don't buy the pre-made shit. This is a this thing costs like a hundred something dollars, but I'll be damned if I'm ever making my own, ever doing coffee without this again. Like like fuck pre-made. I, I used to think that coffee was garbage because I was using Folgers and garbage like that. But fuck, I mean, I, I I had a completely wrong idea of how coffee is because of that. Anyway, one moment. Be right back. I did not, I'm brewing new coffee. This is still cup number two. I am not even done with cup number two. I, I'm not, I'm literally not done with cup number two and I feel like I'm on speed. Okay. I'm up to 219 in chat and it is 316. So I am behind by 57 minutes. I've got ADHD like you're not the 99% falsely diagnosed and start using to do apps to get tests done every day and treat it like a game and it works for me. And yeah, one of the reasons that it works is supposedly it's like part of ADHD is like dopamine dysregulation or something like that. So one of the kicks, again, when you, when you complete it, when you give yourself 15 minutes for a task and you complete it in five minutes, that's awesome. How do you feel about a standardized Linux distro uh, coded for specific hardware for efficiency sake like Mac OS? Uh, I, don't, I don't feel about it. I don't, I don't really care about that that much to be honest with you. I don't, you know, I, like, I, I, in 2003, I did compile Gentoo from scratch. I spent the three fucking days it took for a P4M, that's 1.8 gigahertz, to actually compile stage one tarball. And, yeah, uh, I don't, I mean, the time that I took the, like, the, the, the two days that I took that, I will never get that time back in the 30 milliseconds faster that an application opened, if even. I'll just never get that back. Um, but yeah, like when it, it, one of the things, I, I think ADHD, a part of it is, to be, to be clear, ask a doctor about this because I'm probably bro sciencing out of my ass right now. It's like dopamine dysregulation or that, or in that part of your head that gets you excited when you complete something or do something and that's part of the reason it's difficult to pay attention. When you give yourself 15 minutes for a task and you complete it in seven, when you give yourself 10 minutes for something and you complete it in two, each time there's that little bit of, that little excitement of A, I, I am, uh, I'm a, a, I completed my goal and I did it in less time than I, I gave myself, but more importantly, B, I'm ahead. The feeling of being ahead really is exceptional, you, you, and you can do that for yourself as you turn it into a game. What are your thoughts on the progress of the Gray app? Eh, you know, desktop app is coming soon. It is coming on its way. It's, it's working. Like it's, we're working on a desktop app. I'll let you, listen, the most requested feature by all, all of you was a desktop app, and uh, we have not even remotely recouped the costs of developing this one. 
we uh, have spent about, you know, we have spent well into the mid six figures developing this app, and we have made back, you know, like mid to low five figures in um, in people purchasing it. We are going to spend another five figure, uh, six uh, mid six figures developing a desktop app, and the desktop app is going to kick ass. You know, it's, it, we're doing everything that we can. You can put that on a resume. Bosses feel better when they give me one million. No, not give me one million. When I was talking about that with my boss, one of the things he said is, I feel more comfortable spending this money if you're around. He's like, I don't know how you quantify. Don't get me wrong. Like, you know, when the, co when the co lead programmer and founder of WhatsApp tells you that and he's worth like $1.4 billion, that's kind of a, I don't know, you know, that, that kind of does something for you. That does something, a little, little thing for your confidence. I feel more comfortable spending millions of dollars on shit when you're in the room. Again, how do you put that on a resume? How do you certify, like, how do you have that show up? No iOS app, GTFO, Sonny. And also, how you doing? I've been a bad friend to Sonny. I haven't, I haven't reached out to you in a while. I've been a bad friend to a lot of people. I'm trying to do better at that over the past few weeks. But, like, you know, I don't, know, I don't know how you quantify that for a resume. Like, again, an ATS system is looking for a degree. An ATS system is looking for certain keywords. It's looking for some shit that I have no idea how to, do. I, I have no idea how to fill out. Um, but... Like, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. Like, I feel more comfortable spending millions of dollars when you're in the room. I'll take that as a compliment. He, he, even he said, like, I have no idea how you would quantify that for a resume, but, you know, that, that's the truth. I, I, feel like, I, I feel like that that's true. Since you mentioned, uh, Soren mentioned you today in a Sunday program, what type of relationship do you have with this tech wizard? I don't have a lot of a relationship with Soren other than I don't have a relationship with Soren, but I do have a, a genuine uh, feeling of respect for him, for the information, for a couple of things. A, for the high level he is at as a technician. He's not a bullshit dude. He actually knows how to fix shit. He knows how to do it properly. There are people that I've watched send 5 to 15 volts into a short that then wound up blowing up a CPU or a GPU. There are people I've watched do a lot. Of, there, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube that you'll watch that just isn't showing you the right way to do things. I don't talk to Soren a lot, not be, just because I haven't had reason to, but when I have seen his content, I have a great level of admiration and respect for his process. I have a level of admiration and respect for the workmanship and, the, and how he goes about things. Uh, he's a good dude, and I wish him a lot of success. Not that he needs my wishes, because he's probably insanely successful already in his personal and business life, based on the way that he carries himself and based on what he does. He's a good dude, and I... I don't need to hear what he said about me, whether it's good or bad, to know that I have a, to, to know that I would feel the same way just based on what I've seen of his content. He's a he's a good dude, and I think that yeah, I think that I think that people have a lot to learn from him. Frames dropping, uh, not much I could do about that, bro. <laughs> Lewis, pick up a Monster Energy drink. I was on half a cup of coffee an hour ago. That was all it took. All it takes for me to explode is half a cup of coffee. What do you think of OpenSUSE? It's an operating system. I haven't used SUSE since 2002 or three. I had SUSE 8.1 I used it in 2003. Lewis is not using framework in his lab. I answered that question a million times. Can't answer that again. It's just starting to get boring. I didn't realize you had two million subs. Congrats, man. John Hall, the bucket truck driver. I remember, yes. I don't drink at all anymore, like literally none, but I will happily get a, I'll get a steak with you someday. Maybe something at Eddie V's. Yes, we have to have a day at a, a, a dinner at Eddie V's at some point. Are you pro-right to repair because it's additionally profitable from an ecological point of view? I'll be honest with you, I'm right to repair from a pro-freedom perspective, and I'm right to repair from a I'm right to repair from a pro-freedom perspective, from a don't tell me what I can and cannot do perspective, and from a you I can save money perspective, and a, from a I can teach people that make seven dollars an hour at Walmart how to make fifty to ninety thousand dollars a year, at least before this industry got killed by everybody else is kind of fucking sad but before this industry got killed before all the manufacturers won i was ability uh, i had an ability to do that um you know uh i think that's cool uh I, and like i i never really came at this from the green perspective and i'm not going to bullshit you and lie and say that i like i did this because i cared about stuff not winding up in a landfill i do think that that's a benefit that is technically correct but it's never what made me excited about it i got excited about it from uh from a don't tell me what to do perspective from a, a from a freedom perspective from a, i want to say i don't want to spend two thousand dollars when i can spend 50 bucks perspective and above all uh, i can allow other people to become economically free uh, I don't. I haven't followed Jordan Peterson to be honest with you since 2018 or 19. I started watching Jordan Peterson stuff before anybody knew who the fuck he was. Like back in 2015, before even the Bill C16 shit, like when he was just doing the videos and like how you're probably the villain in the, in the situation when he was doing it in those green college rooms. The, he had like maybe like 1,500 subscribers, if even at that point in time. I haven't really followed a lot of the stuff over the past few years and since the benzo addiction and all that. Cancel culture. It's hard to t say what that is because at the end of the day, cancel culture is people decide 
deciding that they don't want uh, somebody to buy something because somebody has said or done something that goes against their moral values. There is, you know, there's left-wing cancel culture. People say, I can't believe you said something horrible. Let's try to get you to lose your job and all this other shit. But then there's also right-wing cancel culture where people are like, I'm not going to buy this brand. I'm going to throw away my fucking shoes and all this other shit because they don't like what somebody said or did. I, I you know, I... People have the right to spend their money the way they want to. You know, I, I don't like, uh, I don't know. Make Rage Less Legal Dubious, couldn't you allow an option to not block ads? It's, it's, that's the thing. It's, it, as an open source piece of software, it doesn't really matter because the moment that you do that, somebody's going to immediately fork it and everybody's going to download that one instead of yours. If you make an open source application and you want people to use yours, and more importantly, you want people to pay for yours, you're going to have to implement the features and functionality that people want. That, and if you don't do that, somebody else will do that and your application will die. So when we talk about that, like so sponsor block was not something we wanted to implement. There's a difference between an advertisement that is just thrown there by YouTube where it's, you know, for sometimes it's literally fucking dick pills and human trafficking and an advertisement that is from a creator. I've had times where sponsor block literally blocked, uh, you know, my cat, like my cat sitting on the chair. I would pet the kitty. I literally pet the kitty and some douchebag put that in sponsor block. Uh, you know, sponsor block. I mean, anything that's limiting Mr. Clinton's freedom of speech, in my opinion, is a piece of shit. But, you know, sponsor block has limited and censored Mr. Clinton's freedom of speech. They've done that numerous times. But, again, if we don't have that in there, somebody's just going to fork it and create it anyway. So it's one of those things where it's going to happen anyway. At the very least, it should happen in a way where we have a, no a notification. That we're, it's in our application where we're still going out of our way to encourage people in the application many times. Pay creators. Donate to your favorite creators. Support your favorite creators rather than just being in some fork piece of shit. Shad, you keep fucking repeating yourself. Stop, bro. Just stop. Just stop. Anyway. Okay. All the chat from 228 is gone. So I've missed out on an hour of free chat. I really wish YouTube would fix this stuff. I really do. YouTube has literally no idea how to create a communication system. They, like, how long do they have had to own this platform for to get the idea that this, I don't want my live chat window to end? It's just so stupid. Like, I can't keep up with it. I want to be able to read from the oldest to the newest, and you literally can't because it gets rid of it. So everything from 218 to 244 is just gone. Sorry about that. Huh. That mug gave me a scare. Oh, yeah, this is my favorite mug. Take it. We actually sell this. You can find it on the Teespring store that's down below. It's not lying. It's commercial real estate. That is my next set of coffee. This is lit I've only had one and a half cups already. I feel like I swallowed uh, like a, a pound of cocaine. 15 bucks to buy whatever the lowest version of Greenies is. You know, I don't drink anymore. At least I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. Okay, let me correct myself because I'm clearly lying here. I don't drink downers anymore. I drink uppers. I'm at a different phase of my life. This is not a... Here's the thing. You know what's funny? It's illegal to drive while drunk. I'm not saying I've tried either, but I would feel way more comfortable driving after three shots of liquor than I would driving after three cups of coffee. If I drove after... Like, I'm going to be so vibrating with insanity that I'm probably going to, like, smash my garage door or just, like, I would... This is legal. That's not. I don't understand that at all. Like, driving on a downer, God forbid, even one drink, you're fucked. Uh, driving after eight cups of coffee, nothing wrong with that. You could be vibrating with whatever. It's, 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 it's interesting. It's, it's an interesting thing to look at. I don't know what mixed VR is. I don't care about VR. I hear about VR every day. I haven't, I haven't seen a single convincing reason that I should give a fuck about using it. So I don't follow VR. In order to rip on it, I have to care about it. you have any tips for somebody who wants to start PCB repair for HVAC? Uh, first thing you do is figure out if it's an actual problem. Reach out to all the companies that do HVAC service and ask them, like, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm not looking for a job. I'm, you know, I'm good at component level repair. And I'm just looking for stuff to get into. How often do you have bad PC boards? And if I was able to repair these, is this something that would be valuable to you? And above all, what is the biggest problem? What you should do in, when you want to get into anything, rather than start doing whatever it is you want to do, go out into the world, speak to people. I know it's hard. Ask them questions and figure out what the actual problems are. And if they don't answer you, knock on more doors. Figure out a different way to do it. If they don't answer your email, try giving a phone call. If they don't answer your phone call, try showing up to a meetup. It's not easy to do because you're going to have a lot of people close doors in your face. And when you have people close doors in your face, whether in email, phone call, or in person, you're going to feel discouraged from doing it again. You're going to feel a sense of shame. Like, I don't belong here. I don't fit here. I'm bothering people. Don't care. Keep doing it. Do it again and again and again and again because the people that succeed are the people that don't give up and don't shit talk themselves and don't believe that they're not worth it because they have one bad experience. Do you see yourself getting in a relationship? Relationships, yes. Long-term relationship, I'm not very... Ex uh, like Relationship, yes. Long-term relationship is another story because again, for a number of 
things that are uh, that not that I'm not particularly excited to discuss on a, in a public YouTube video. Is it? It's easy to get shadow canceled too. I mean, listen. At the end of the day, you know, like a lot of people, a lot of people that say they don't like cancel culture, I completely understand why they don't. But then there's where the ball, you know, the, 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 the pendulum swings in the other direction, where people just decide to go out of their way to be edgy and say stupid shit to signal how anti-cancel culture they are. But simultaneously, a lot of the people that do that are more than happy to say, I'm never going to use this product. I'm not going to support this person. I'm not going to buy this album. I'm not going to go to that concert. I'm not going to use deodorant because fuck that company. And when you encourage people to do that in mass and you, sh uh, and you uh, shit on your friends who buy stuff from that, like at the end of the day, what is it actually? How do you get rid of your electronic waste? What are manufacturers removing swappable batteries? Uh, who will manufacture lead design laptops? That's okay. How do you get rid of e-waste? You call your garbage collection company and you pay them out the ass to take the e-waste. How are manufacturers? Why are manufacturers moving swappable batteries? Because they're cunts. Who will manufacture lead design laptops? The engineers that they hire. I don't know what to say there. I don't know repair people in the UK because I don't live there. I don't work there, and it's just not my purview. I don't. I can't answer those questions. Uh, do you envision yourself in the future supporting enthusiasts to make Linux more accessible to the average user? And slash or is something you consider working on in the future? That's a very, very general question, and I don't quite understand it. Uh, that's, that's a little bit too general. Uh, so I don't, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't know how to answer that, I'm afraid. Lucky you, I'm a sluggish without caffeine. Any good tips on starting PCB repairs on HVAC equipment? Already answered that. Uh, you miss Erica? I find it weird that people are obsessed with women that I broke up with two and a half years ago. You really shouldn't be obsessed with celebrities and, their, and the people that they go out with. Who was blocking important for tune, like where to file a complaint about something? I don't know what that means. That sentence is poor English. I'm sure you don't owe anything anyway. You wait just wait for another New York letter. Let's see. He considered, uh, let's see. Uh, that's a dumb, that's a not in good faith. Delete. I was diagnosed with ADHD in 1984. It was so bad my pediatric neurologist admitted she flipped a coin to decide between ADHD and ADHD, mild to autistic. Huh. Crib at the balcony and an open door in February. Oh, yeah, that's the, yeah, check. Like, it's, it's, it sounds beautiful outside, except for the fucking dog. Fucking asshole. You know, there's a fox that comes around every now and then. Every now and then, I'll be honest with you, I kind of, like, Sometimes the fox leaves animals in my yard that I have to clean up, and every now and then there's like a small part of me that wishes the fox would not kill the dog, but just scare it out of, out of making all that fucking noise all the time. Like a small part of me just kind of, you know, I wouldn't feel bad. Not, I'm not saying something bad should happen to the dog. I'm just saying if the fox will go up to the dog and have a conversation with it, just a conversation with it that maybe caused that dog to become a little bit more quiet, I don't think that I would be that mad. I think I would kind of embrace that. A little bit, just a little bit. Uh, this is a ThinkPad and it's using Linux. So those are two reasons that you're gonna have like 50 minutes of battery life. Like you get an hour and a half of battery life because it's a Lenovo and then you get half that because you're using Linux. Can't even switch between integrated and discrete GPU. God forbid you'd be able to do anything like that in 20 fucking 24. So let me plug that thing in because I have the two chat one. To try to keep the chat window usable, I have the old chat loaded over here and the newer chat loaded in a second window so that when I scroll to a certain point, it doesn't just bring me to the, to the beginning of it. So I know I'm going to be missing a lot of chat, but I don't want to miss all of it. One sec, time for the next set of coffee. All right, I have, let me finish cup number two. All right, this is a, H-E-B has some pretty damn good coffee. You, I always get the, you know, you get the beans rather than getting the, the bullshit. Get the beans rather than getting, I mean, like, the, not the beans, whatever the fuck it is, the where you grind it on your own. I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. because You get some uh, Central Market Organics half and half. That's right. And I, th I forget which coffee, I think this is like cookies and cream. And then you get some nice monk fruit. Some, it's, don't put, sh I don't put sugar or anything else in my coffee. Not sweet, not, no bullshit sweetener, monk fruit. This stuff is awesome. It's healthier than like, you know, standard sugar and it still tastes good. It's like a little bit of that in there. Yeah. I really used, I spent so much of my life thinking coffee was garbage because I would drink that. Like, whatever the fuck they have at Starbucks, that shit tastes disgusting. Like I've, I've only, tr I think I only tried Starbucks once or twice when somebody else bought it. It was such dog shit. Uh, then this Folgers, oh my God, this stuff is trash. 
like you go to H-E-B, you really get like, you know, you get the really nice ones. They, they got some really interesting flavors and nice stuff there. You get that, you put it into a nice, a nice grinder. Um, you know, you use some nice filtered water for it. A little bit of monk fruit, a little bit of quality sweetener, not the shit sweetener. This are Central Market Organics half and half is expensive, but I gotta say, I, I, don't, I don't treat myself to coffee much, and I'm cheap enough in most of my life that I'll give myself this for a day. It's fairly nice. Okay, cup number three, baby. Cup number three. Thanks for all you do. I've watched your videos and hard work for at least four years now. Stay healthy. Thank you. I try. Apparently, Google isn't just throttling people with ad blockers, but causing random invisibility without even informing chatters. Is that true? I don't really know if that's true. Like, you know, I'm, I'm happy to jump down their throat if they do something that I think deserves it, but I don't really know if that's true. I have to figure that out. I'm going to close the door. Yeah, one of the great things with Texas is um, it is February, and I can have my door open. I'm closing it now because I've had a little bit enough of the breeze. But, yeah, it is pretty nice. It's pretty nice to be able to have the door open in February. Good luck doing that shit in New York. Then again, you know, the downside of it is the summer. The summer here is hotter than New York, but the thing is, the summer in New York, like, you're still burning. It's still intolerable. When, when you're waiting for the train underground before you get an e-bike, keyword, before you get an e-bike, when you're one of those people that's waiting for the A train for, or the G train for, like, 20 minutes, it absolutely is horrible. It sucks. And, um, it, you know, like, it's it, in Texas, like, it's, it, it is hot, but essentially... Like, the winter in New York is worse enough, is way, the winter in New York is way worse than the summer in Texas, I would say. Um, you know, I've kind of gotten used to the, should the USA incorporate the European Union as a state? That, you know, I appreciate the dollar, I really do, but that's not really even remotely close to being a serious question or something that I could actually, or something that I have a desire to answer or the knowledge to answer. So that, I, I don't know what to, t I appreciate your dollar. Thank you very much for your dollar, but I don't, no, no. Let, let the EU be the EU. Let the United States be the United States. There are too many differences in how we view certain issues, and I think they would be best as their own thing, and we'd be best as our own thing, and we'd do our best to get along and collaborate when there's a reason to collaborate and trade and get along and deal with uh, you know, our, our, combined in, our combined interests. Is this your first time live? Not first time live. First time live in a long time. I have not done a live in a while. At least it's not energy drinks. Yeah, fuck energy drinks. That's just not healthy for you. Don't get me wrong. I'm probably drinking three cups of three cups of coffee isn't that great for you either. But I'd rather take this uh, than that. Do you have a MySpace? I do not. I was on Usenet on a K6 to 500 megahertz. Yeah, Usenet is the shit, man. Usenet is awesome. Those who know, know. You think it's worth trying to start a company to fix these PCB boards? I think I answered Eric Lewis's question, but I think I'm late by a half hour. I'm sorry. I feel horrible because all these people probably think I'm not answering their questions. I just am. It's a half hour later. Linus is still invested in framework. He has just used some clickbait and some videos. Oh. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't watch a lot of that stuff, so I'm not really sure. I don't watch a lot of YouTube, to be honest with you. Why are you going with Electron and JavaScript for the Gray J desktop app? I want that room certainly room performance and battery consumption. That is an excellent question for the developers. I can barely write, bro, I can barely do basic data engineering with Python scripts and SQL. Like, a ask the developers. I don't fucking know. What chair are you sitting in? This is an Ashley something. It's an Ashley something chair. It was like four or $600 when I got it, and I love it. It's also a cat scratcher, as you can see from what the left side of it looks like. I've gotten so many cat scratchers here. I've gotten like the big trees with catnip. I've gotten the small things that are made of cardboard that are like they're, they're literally everywhere. But they see a base trap that I paid $200 for. Or they see a chair. They see a piece of, like God, they see something that is valuable to me and that's what they want to scratch. That's how you know you have a kitty. I'm assuming you're thinking Linux on your ThinkPad. Uh, yes, I am. That's why I have to plug it in every hour or so. The battery life you get with the ThinkPad is a meme. And then the battery life you get when you try to put Linux on a ThinkPad is a bigger meme. Yes. And I just lost my chat because I hit the, uh, the wrong button. Fuck me. Actually, no, never mind. Here it is. Wait, no, no, no. I fucked it up. Oh, damn it. Everything from 308. Actually, no, I had the uh, second window open because I knew that was going to happen to me. 
Okay, cool. So let's see. I have three from 308 in this window and 324 in this window. What do you think of Kevin De Bruyne? I've never heard of him. Don't no idea what that is. He's message again delete in the middle of the readings. You mean motion sickness? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we just donate to the project. You don't donate to it. If you wanted to donate to that project, I was talking about before you buy the application. Why does no one care about the lobbying of big corporations in Congress and even Congress having people interested in some of these corporations? Uh, I don't think anybody cares about a lot of stuff in general. Most people are just kind of pigeonholed and paying attention to their own lives. Like, it's really difficult nowadays. You know, like, a lot of people, they're $60,000 in student loan debt. You can't get a job unless you go to college and have 10 years of experience for a job. A lot of people that get jobs, they feel like they're underqualified for the position because every single job wants you to have 10 years of experience and all this crazy shit in order to make fucking $60,000 a year. So you're $60,000 in debt. You have to lie just to be able to get your foot in the door of a job that barely lets you pay your bills. And once you do that, you're working far outside the hours of that normal job because you, have to, because you feel like an imposter because you claim that you had skills that you didn't so that you can even get your foot in the door. So you wind up working eight hours a day three to five hours outside of it just because you feel that guilt that you don't know how to do something that, you, let's be real, you should be getting paid double to actually know how to do that should begin with because no employer is trained anymore. You have relationships, you have family, you have everything else. At the end of the day, do you really have time to focus on that. Being able to focus on politics and be genuinely informed, being able to show up to a legislative hearing and actually talk is a luxury that most people don't have. I didn't have the time to go to a legislature and talk about things until 2015, even though I've been talking about right to repair since 2008, 2009 when I started my business. It took me six years to get to the point where I simply have the luxury that I could take two days off in the middle of the week and not worry about being financially fucked as a result of that. Most people, you know, this is one of the things Joel Stecker said. He said, we haven't had a lot of people show up from our state at this hearing. It's like, fucker, this hearing is at 1 p.m. on a goddamn Wednesday. Most of your constituents are working, unlike you. They don't have the time to show up to this hearing. They have to be at work. If they don't show up to work, they don't get paid. If they don't get paid, they lose their house. They lose. They, they can't pay their gas bill. They're sitting in a, in a place in Maine when it's negative 30 degrees doing this because they couldn't afford their propane. That's where most of America is. So most people, being able to even think about politics, in my opinion, is a luxury for the upper class and the rich. It's not even about whether or not you're able to pay for it. If you're a normal everyday dude, you probably have $30,000 in debt. You probably are working eight hours a day at a job. You're probably working an additional three to five hours after that job is done to simply catch up and be able to learn all the skills that you said that you had so that you could simply get that fucking job to begin with so that they don't notice that you're an imposter and fire you. You are probably trying to juggle all of this, all that stress with having to try and have a relationship. God forbid you have any time for your friends or your hobbies or anything like that. Where the fuck is your time to show up to a legislative hearing? Where's your time to read a 40-page transcript of, of a hearing so that you understand who's saying what? You don't have that time. I didn't have that time. I had that time because I got to a privileged position because I, A, worked my ass off, and B, took a very fucking strange path through life that I described earlier in the video, and C, admittedly, I had a lot of luck, which allowed me the ability to take two days off, pay 90 bucks for a train ticket, pay 200 bucks for a hotel, and sit there for two days and be able to just kind of talk to random legislators. That's a, who has the time for that? How many people who are sitting here have the time for this shit? Half of you are probably listening to this fucking stream while you pack boxes at work or do whatever the hell else you're doing on your little hamster wheel so that you could simply survive. Uh, a lot of people don't care, not because they're bad people. It's just their life is very, very busy, and there are a lot of things on the list. I tried it once, and it was the one of the... No, I'm never eating there again. It's one of some of the worst food I ever tried in my life. I, I feel bad saying it because the people that work there were kind of nice people, but there's a difference between people being nice and me eating your fucking food. I'm up to the chat from 312, and it is... Oh, shit, I'm actually catching up. I guess the only reason I'm catching up is because 20 or 30 minutes of it got immediately chopped off. Everything from like 225 to 255 or something got completely chopped, chopped off, which is kind of sad. Uh, Lewis, I hope you're well. I just launched... A repair business, what CRM tickets offer to use? I use Repair Shopper, but I can't recommend it anymore because uh, the only reason I ever recommended Repair Shopper is because it was run by a gentleman named Troy. Every single time I had a request, he fulfilled it. Like, I need this to sync with QuickBooks, he fulfilled it. I need this to work with free PBX so that I can have the caller ID show up in my system so I know the status of a ticket and I can see when a customer called, he fulfilled it. I need shipping integration, he fulfilled it. That 
repair shop or has been purchased by Synchro. And when I talk to them and I say, here's something I could really use, I get a polite fuck you. Like, not a fuck you, it's a polite fuck you. It's a no thank you, we no, no, no. So Synchro has in increased the price by about 20 or 30% since they purchased repair shopper, but since they purchased repair shop, but they're not gonna add things like Troy. Again, essentially, in my opinion, what they're doing is they are, um, what they're doing at this point is they are running off of the reputation of what they purchased. They would like to milk that asset. They'd like to get that software as a service income, but you're not really getting what it is that I was advertising in the past. I wasn't getting paid to, uh, adver to advertise Repair Shopper in the past. I didn't get paid by them. But there was one point where if I got a certain number of subscriptions, they were open to like giving me credit. I never even hit that point, so I never even got it. I always paid full price for it. The reason I recommended it is because the relationship that you had, they were really on the pulse of what people needed. And like again, for a software developer to put up with me, you can just ask Paul Daniels. I'm not somebody that most people can put up with. I have a lot of requirements. I have a lot of things for how I want my software to work. And yeah, you know, if I'm paying you every single month, if it's a fucking subscription, then I see software as a fucking service. I'm getting my service out of you. I am not paying every single month to use the same bullshit ass software. I'm going to, I'm going to get some service out of you. You're going to code for me. And you know, repair shopper when it was owned by Troy, cool. Repair shopper owned by Synchro, no. Do, I, do I, I still use it? Yes, because, you know, I, I used it before. I'm familiar with it. And, you know, the repair business is kind of on the outs anyway. So it's like, why, why the fuck am I going to invest in transferring everything over to something else for a business that, you know, for all I know is uh, like w Apple will have... Uh, Apple will have succeeded in, in, in destroying uh, a year or two from now. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, I, yeah, I can't, don't listen to any of my prior recommendations for Repair Shopper because those recommendations were made based on the ownership of it. That has changed. And I probably should up update those old videos I did where I talked positively about Repair Shopper to reflect the fact that it's under new ownership, that even when I've made the most basic requests for certain types of things or integrations, it's just been a no. And... Again, it's one thing if you're asking for that type of stuff for software that's a lifetime license. You want you want 140, 120 bucks, 200 bucks a month every single month. Yeah, I'm going to ask for some basic shit. Anyway, that's about that. Chill out on the caffeine, man. You're buzzing already. Don't tell me what to do. What are you, Tim Cook? You don't tell me what to do. I drink my coffee if I want to drink my coffee. I rarely, if ever, do any drugs. I don't do anything. I don't even drink alcohol anymore. If I want to enjoy my Sunday on caffeine, I'll enjoy my three cups of coffee. Thank you very much. This is actually like two and a half. You got to, yeah, two, actually, not even two and a half. This is literally cup number three and it is filled up to the top. I haven't drank anything yet. You got a free thing pad to your store addressed to Darth Vader. Some assembly is required. Any advice for someone following your footsteps? Thank you. Oh. Well, my first piece of advice is to not follow in my footsteps. The, the way that I became successful was by fulfilling a niche that was very important to fulfill back in 2008 and 2009. And the niche that I fulfilled is not a niche that is valuable for several reasons. The first is that when I started doing this in 2008 and 2009, there was a lot more ability to do it. Again, when I started doing this, I could buy chips for $1 to $5. I could buy a donor board for 12 bucks if the chip wasn't available. Now, the ch I can't buy most of the chips I need off a of mouse or in DigiKey, and when I need a donor board, I'm not paying $12 for a board that had a hole put through it on AliExpress. I'm paying $200 to $400 for that donor board. That, I used to buy a screen for $38 to $72, now you're buying three to four hundred dollar assemblies and they're used and not even new. And then once you buy that assembly that costs you three to six hundred dollars that is scratched and used, instead of buying a new screen for thirty to seventy bucks, you are then you then have to deal with the fact that it may not work. At the end, you know, there's a lot that's changed over the past 15 years. I got to where I am by solving the problems that were important to solve at that time. To follow in my footsteps, and this is the problem that a lot of people that are successful have, they try to tell people how to follow in their footsteps by saying, here's what I did, rather than here's why I did what I did. So I would rather, instead of you trying to follow in my footsteps by literally doing what I did, thank you, TXDOT. Um, I actually owe them $2 for a... For a toll that I had on my, I, I thought Texas Tech would cover this, but when I drove to Hico, there was one toll I got that wasn't covered by Texas Tech. I gotta pay that before they, they fucking take me away from my balcony. But <laughs> thank you for reminding me of that. I really appreciate it. It's like 50 cents. It's not the fact that it's 50 cents. It's having to register for this goddamn 1989 website that, that, that's been making me put it off more than the 50 cents of the freaking toll. And when it comes to following in your footsteps, like, I, it's more about why I did the things I did. So like, what did I do? I was willing to try, I was willing to go out there in the world before I had any fucking clue what I wanted to do and just try new shit. And I was willing to fail at it for a long period of time. I was willing to be around other people. I was willing to try stuff. As long as you're, because uh, a lot of people, they say, here's the thing I want to do. If I can't do that, or I don't have the opportunity to do that, or I haven't applied to it, I've applied to all these jobs and I haven't heard back, then I'm not going to do anything at all. I'm just going to sit home, read Reddit, uh, you know, like do, do some, like whatever the hell's. 
the way that you become successful, in my opinion, the way that you kind of get somewhere and the way you figure out where it is you fit into the world is by actually trying out different stuff and being willing to be a complete fucking failure at all the things that you try out. Take in information, try doing stuff, try talking to people. As long as you're talking to people and doing new things and learning new things and trying new things, at some point you will come across something that fits you. And here's the thing. Let's say you never come across something that fits you. If you try all these different things and you're always trying to do new things and you're always going out there into the world and like... Um, and dealing with people, talking to people, you are you have like a 10% likelihood of getting somewhere versus if you do nothing and you have a 0%. Did you enjoy your time at Chase, Eric, and Theron from Edison Motors? That was one of the most naturally flowing conversations I've ever had. And honestly, if they didn't have an, a something that they had to do at 7 o'clock that evening, that conversation would have probably lasted for eight hours. I could have riffed with those dudes for eight hours. Like, really. Like they're, they're, you, you could tell when somebody's on your level. When I say on your level, I don't mean, like, as good or worse than you or something. But, like, on your level isn't, like, philosophically. Like, there's something in your brain that clicks. There's some part of our brain that just kind of works the same way when it is that we, in, the, in the way that we see the world, in the way that we go about things. And I, have a, I have massive respect for those people. I have incredible levels of respect for them, and I hope that they're successful in everything they do. Back to the success question. It's, you know, you know, it's not about whether or not what I did worked. It's just about having a higher likelihood of it. There's a lot of people that just, they don't, they don't try. They don't try different things. They, they stay in this little bubble. And admittedly, it's very hard for me to even listen to my own advice because when I look back at what I did from 2007 to 2000, from 2007 to 2009, I find it really difficult to realize that I kind of have to do that again now. I look what I did from 2007 to 2009. I look at what I did from 2011 to 2014 where I just, I bumbled around, stumbled for literally years at a time doing all this kind of random shit. I had to do all that random shit that made no sense to have the com to be put into situations and have the conversations with people that allowed me to realize this is my place where I could put value into the world. This is the path that I should spend 12 to 16 hours a day working on. Because most people are willing to, if, you, if I'm being honest, like most people, they really are willing to put in 12 to 16 hours of work a day if they have a path to that island. They're willing to go through this Shawshank Redemption sewer of shit to get to Zawantaneo. They just need to know which sewer it is. They need to know that this sewer is the one that has the island on the other side. They're willing to crawl through the sewer, but they got to know the island's on the other side. To, to find which sewer is the one you want to crawl through and which one is the island on the other side, you got to try a bunch of different shit. Some of you may figure it out if you're lucky within a month. Some of you may take three to six years to figure it out. Some of you may take 10 years to figure it out. Start now. You can force a company by law to have a real person, customer service phone number in the country where a person shops makes a difference. No, because they'll just staff it with somebody that has no power. That It's really difficult to mandate people to not be assholes. It's difficult to create a law that says don't be an asshole. Like when you lose the large principles in society, you wind up like trying to legislate it and you wind up having these like millions of little laws to try to legislate don't be an asshole. And that's a very difficult thing to do. The sound of the grinder is the sound of potential energy. Literally potential energy. It's real coffee being made, the gift of the gods. Yes. <laughs> Ublock Origins seems to be working with the chat, and God the person above who recommended it. Ublock Origins is a pretty good plugin. I would suggest that people try that instead of the stock ad block. It's, uh, Ublock Origin is a great piece of software that I suggest everybody has. Who are you voting for and why? Have you become a politician for a short while to help the country? I don't know, man. I, I really don't. Like, the, 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 I don't know. This, like, this election kind of cycle kind of makes me sick. I remember saying if DeSantis won the primary, like I'd give DeSantis a vote in the primary, but he kind of dropped out like a little bitch before I even had the chance to. I felt like I owed it to him after 2020 because like so many people in 2020 were like, you know, uh, you know, eh, if your business, like, you know, if, if, you wind, if you wind up getting your windows bashed in, it's a small price to pay for justice. Uh, forget about the fact that I've, you know, not done anything wrong. Oh, you know, like you, you're trying to, like you're an evil business owner for being open. Forget about the fact that I told all my employees, if you want to stay home, if you're worried about this or concerned in any way, I will give you your full fucking salary to sit at home before there was a PPP. Before there was government assistance, uh, yeah, like when I, I, mean, when I remember watching the stuff that DeSantis was saying in like 2020, late 2020, and like thing. I remember literally going, "I wish this person was my governor." Like somebody stuck up for small businesses. Has he said and done a lot of stupid shit? Absolutely. Does he trash the American Rescue Plan? Thank you, John Hale. Uh, yeah, I'm really sorry that you lost your That sucks. Perry's pork chop on a Friday lunch. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of pork chops, but. I genuinely enjoy Eddie V's and I want to go back there at some point. Uh, like, it's one of those things, I remember watching and thinking, man, I wish my fucking governor was, like, talking like this rather than, like, being the piece of shit that he was. I wish, like, somebody to stick up for us. You know, he's done stupid shit. Like, you know, like Ron DeSantis would, like, shit on the American Rescue Plan for being a horrible way to spend money. And then simultaneously, when he gets money for his state to spend $40 million on education from that American Rescue Plan that he trashed, he makes it seem like this is, the, this is money that I deposited to this for my personal bank account. I personally made education. No, you didn't. You took the 
money that he gave you that you should have. Like he's, he's a politician. Don't get me wrong. He's a politician like any other politician. They're all pieces of shit. They're not going to be honest with you. They say shit for the camera to rile you up. They manipulate you. They fuck with you. They do that to get power because they like getting power and they like having attention. But, you know, I felt like I owed him a vote for, you know, being one of the few people in 2020, 2021 that I felt didn't think that I was fucking disposable. Uh, and, you know, I appreciated that. But, like, you know, he, he kind of was like a little bitch with the whole, like, trying to appeal to Trump's base and simultaneously, uh, you know, keep getting sm insulted by somebody while simultaneously trying to be that person and get their... Uh. Uh, he dropped out before I could give him a vote. So originally, I kind of said I'd vote for Ron DeSantis for president, and if he, but, but like I'm not voting for Trump. Like it, it makes me sick to vote for Biden over, but I, I'll t I'll take Biden over the like the whole stole. I'll take him over the whole election was stolen bullshit and everything else that comes from the other side. But like, fuck, like that's gonna be hard. That's gonna be tough to pull the lever on that one. Like Ron DeSantis, I feel like I could pull the lever on that one and be like, eh, you're a piece of shit politician. But I feel like you're kind of effective. I, you, 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 I think you'd be effective. I think you have some kind of base level of fucking competency and you know brain work, and that I, I don't, uh, or the ability to be effective that I don't think Trump would have. Um, I'd vote. I, I would take Ron DeSantis over Biden, but I'll take Biden over Trump. It's. I, I, I honestly don't know if I'm going to vote yet because like I, it's one of those things where like I'm going to feel so sick pulling the lever for either of them. Like it really does. It, it's gonna. It's gonna fuck with my head. I don't want to vote for it. What's your take on the tech sector layoffs and U.S. job postings? Um, I think that a lot of these companies got really big off of investor money, and they have a lot of employees that they genuinely didn't need because they wanted to show their investors that they're growing. They wanted to sh signal to investors. I think a lot of the hires was about signaling to investors that were doing all this cool shit that really didn't have a lot to do with their core business, and they're realizing that they don't need all those people. And a lot of people are viewing it as these evil companies that are destroying people's jobs, and simultaneously, a lot, for all we know, a lot of these jobs may have not had to exist. One of the interesting things about the economy Thank you, Eprom Toast. Thank you. Yeah, again, just try different shit. And it, 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 listen, it's hard to try different shit. It's hard to stumble around without having an idea of where it's going to work out for you. I know that that's hard. It's hard for me. I got to do it again, and I'll be honest with you, it's hard for me to listen to my own fucking advice. It's very difficult for me to listen to my own advice, even though I've actually lived it and seen what it did for me. But it's something I got to do. It's something I got to do again if I'm going to, like, you know, the second half of my life is going to be as interesting as the first half. Uh, I forget what I was saying. I, yeah, I was saying something there. I was on some rant, and then it kind of went away. Uh. Nobara is a great Linux variant. I'm not changing Linux distributions. I'm just not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. I, I like. I didn't realize you had two million subs. Congrats, on man. John Hall the Bucket Tree. Oh, thank you. There's a free ThinkPad to show you. So just a Dark Vader. Some assembly is required. Thank you very much. I hope I will find time to. Uh, I hope I will find the time to build it or put it together. I have not had a lot of time lately. You know, I used to do. I used to. I have a lot of time to stream and do stuff like this, and I honestly haven't had time recently. I think the last live stream I did was like six months ago, if even. I just haven't had time for this like I used to. Jordan Peterson spreading misinformation in oil shows, so I don't care about his platform. <laughs> Again, like 2015 Jordan Peterson, lots of good lectures, lots of good stuff. I watched all that stuff. It was incredibly interesting. Um, Jordan Peterson post Benzo is, that's a, you know, let's just say a different dude. Uh, 2015 Jordan Peterson, regardless of your political affiliation, I think if you go to his channel, sort by oldest, and view every video that he did in 2015, I genuinely believe if you listen to that content and you, you, you listen with an open mind, you'll probably be a better person for it. I really do. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Th like the last couple of years, um, I don't know. Like, listen, I, if I was thrown into that type of shit and I had like millions of people around the world fucking with me and commenting and saying nasty shit every day, I'd probably fucking lose it and go on benzos too, for all I know. Um, I, 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 I can't say that I would be able to live up to that level of scrutiny without essentially turning into a meme of my former self or whatever the hell this would be. But I will say, I do, I do still stand by. I think if you listen to the shit that he made, like you listen to that stuff that he did back in 2015, like I, I do think it was valuable. I do think you'll get value from it. Uh, you know, it was pretty cool stuff. But yeah, I honestly, I checked out from Jordan, not because I was offended by the Bill C-16 stuff, it just, it wasn't even like whether it's offensive or not, it just wasn't that interesting to me. So like once that stuff happened, I, like, I, I got all the stuff that was fairly useful before that happened. Most people, they heard about the Bill C-16 shit, they heard about all the anti-SJW and black and forth and blah, 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 blah stuff, and then they went back and found the other content. I come from a really weird place where I actually started, I found it, I don't know how the fuck I found it, I found that stuff first. And then I kind of like figured out about the rest. So I kind of got into it the opposite way. Uh, thank you for your 
excellent work. You do air on your channel, right, Paris? What's the, your outlook on the future of the brake fix repair biz? Is it on its way out? And if so, why? I think it's on its way out for a number of different reasons that are converging in on each other all at the same time. Let's go over them because each one of them is unique. And I'm not going to be able to comment on anything else because I really want to answer this question. It's a very good question. It's a worthwhile question. And if I interrupt myself by answering a paid chat, I'll miss it. So the first reason I think it's on its way out fundamentally is inflation. Not even like hyperinflation like 2020 and 2021 where the government just spends five trillion bucks and thinks five spending five trillion bucks while telling people they're not allowed to work is not gonna have any eff devastating effect in the economy if every single fucking world economy does it. Uh, not even that, just the general inflation you get every year. Uh, into, read 1984 and reflect about how you think about Joe. I'm, that, 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 that's, a, that's a rabbit hole, man. I'm just not going down that. I'm not going down the extremist. Uh, I like 1984. It's a cool ass book, but like, you're, you're, what you're suggesting is a is a rabbit hole there, and I'm just I'm, no, I'm a, no rabbit hole. Now. Uh, we we have a binary. We get two choices. They suck dick. I told you what my preference was. Unfortunately, my preference was a massive fucking pussy that couldn't stand up for himself and couldn't even get to the point where I could vote for him in a goddamn Republican primary in Texas. Fuck him for that, but anyway, that, 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 that's separate. Uh, when it comes to your, the, the first question, and I really can't answer everything else because I'm not going to answer the good question, there's three things. The first reason that I think the repair business brake fix is on its way out, fundamentally speaking, inflation. A base model MacBook in 2008 when I started doing this was $999. A base model MacBook in 2024 is approximately $999. 15 years have passed. No, 16 years have passed, actually. You know, a house that cost $150,000 in 2008 probably goes for 700,000 or 600 or 500,000 now. Your dollar goes so little now compared to where it was 16 years ago, yet the MacBook costs the same amount. When people look at the idea of break fix, what they're doing is they're looking at what does it cost to replace this device? What does it cost to fix? If it costs more than one third the price of replacing the device to fix it, on average, people will start to say, fuck this. They don't all say fuck this, but their, their threshold for fuck this is this device costs more than 30% the cost to fix it. Again, it's not exact. It's an approximate formula, like one, 33%. How much more money do you think I have to pay in rent now than I did back then? How much more do you think business insurance is? How much more do you think I'm paying people? Back then, in 2008, again, I, I didn't even start employing people until late 2012, for real. But in 2008, if you were making $15 to $17 an hour in New York City, I'm not saying you're rich, but that wasn't bad. Like, oh man, I get 15 bucks an hour, it's pretty cool. Now, $15 an hour, like that's, that's fucking minimum wage. Like the amount of money that my employees expect to make is massively higher now. The amount that I would have to pay in rent, insurance, all the parts and everything else is massively higher. So forget about everything having to do with right to repair. Forget about technology evolving and, and devices becoming a system on a chip. Forget about the fact that I cannot get access to parts and tools to do my job. Forget about serialization. Forget about me knocking on Intersil's door or, Renesa, or uh, Rochester Electronics, asking to buy a charging chip and being told I'm not allowed to buy it. Forget all that. Just the basic core equation of is it financially and economically viable was always going to be going out the door because every, all of the expenses of our business are going up, but the amount of money that we can bill a customer is not. If the price of the product stays static, but everything else inflates, you're going to have to charge more money for your services or you're going to have to pay people less and continuously go down. That's, that's behind door number one. Behind door number two, when I started doing what I did, I don't have one. I'm not well enough informed. I feel bad you gave me $2 for that question. I'm not well enough informed to give you an opinion, and I'm not going to bullshit you and say that, I, that I'm well enough informed to give you an opinion. In my experience, at least when it comes to immigration, when I hire people, I don't look to hire immigrants because they're cheaper. I have hired people who are immigrants because they, they just seem to care more than people who were born here. Like when I hire people that were born here, they have an average work ethic. When I hire somebody that was born in Albania or Serbia or Iraq or like the, somewhere in the Middle East, they come here with, the, like I can give you the same 40 bucks an hour that I would give an American and you're going to work like I pay you $800,000 a year. It's just, it's a different mindset because like when you come, the type of person that's willing to drop everything and move to another country with absolutely fucking nothing is that like, it takes a certain type of person to do that and the type of people who do that tend to be the type of people that are that, that like they are dedicated like they will they will do insane levels that they are dedicated in a way that somebody who kind of grew up here just isn't like when you look at the problems people talk about in america i'm not saying they're not real problems but you look at the problems they have in the philippines you look at the problems people have in the poor sections of eastern europe you look at the problems people have in iraq man the problems you have here are nothing compared to the problems they have there and when you meet people that have the problems uh, there that come here 
they they just look at work fundamentally differently, at least in my experience. But in terms of you know immigration on the Texas border, immigration on the other way, I don't fucking know enough about these issues. I'm not well enough informed. I could just tell you what my personal bias is. I, I'm you know I'm not really somebody that thinks to themselves like fuck all the immigrants and they're in the country. That's not the way that I think. Uh, I, I don't. But I don't, I'm not really informed on any of those issues. I just have my own personal bias based on my own personal experience. I've never been excited for immigrants because it means I can pay them less than American workers. I've been excited about immigrants because they seem to give a shit more. Like, I would pay an immigrant like 40 bucks an hour, where I may only be willing to pay somebody here 35 or $30 an hour because they, they're willing to do more work. They want to do more work. They're excited and elated and appreciative of every opportunity and they're problem solvers in a way that people that were born here in my opinion sometimes are not. Obviously I'm, maybe I'm being a little hypocritical there because I was born here and I think I'm a problem solver but again I don't, have, I don't have the balls to move to another country. I don't have the balls to start over in another country. I barely have the balls to start over in this country. I barely have the balls to get out of my own industry and try new stuff in this country. So I, how the hell would I be, I, I don't think I'd be open to starting fresh somewhere else. I wish I had the balls to do that but I don't and I think it takes a strong type of person to do that that I'm not. Back to the other question of the, uh, the repair business and why it's on its way out. So inflation was reason number one. Number two, shit's just not available. Like every year, less stuff is available. Again, like when I started doing this, LP133 WP1 TJA, could buy it for 38 to 72 bucks. LP154 WP2 TLA1, okay, sometimes it was only available at $175, but sometimes it was available for 90 bucks. New, grade A, plus, original LG packaging, original AG electronics packaging, good stuff. Now, it's play assembly, 300, 600 bucks, scratched, used. I used to be able to buy chips. Now I can't buy stuff. So like as time goes on, there are all these little confounding factors and it's not one individual factor that causes me to think that the repair industry is on its way out. I want to do a video either by building PC speakers out of recycled spellers or showing them my chaotic PC build. Uh, I think that the, I do what's less saturated, you know, I would do a video, building PC speakers out of recycled TV speakers, anytime you want to do something, do the thing that's niche that less people are doing because you're more likely to have success out of it. I would do a video showcasing something that is not being done by every single person on planet Earth. Like, again, PC builds and weird PC builds is like, you know, a dime a dozen. Like, there's, there's, more in, there's more people doing videos on that than there are literal letters in my chat for the last two hours. Okay, the second reason that I think PC repair, again, uh, not even PC repair, just in general repair business is on its way out, parts available. Like all these parts that I used to be able to buy, you cannot get anymore, and that is not getting better. Legislation has been put on the books. Pressure has been put on the book. You know, pressure, like legislative pressure is there. Pressure from consumers is there. Right to repair as a movement is gaining steam. As all these things are happening, companies are more than happy to close off their supply chain. They are confident in doing so. They are not facing consequences for doing so. Nobody really seems to care or give a shit. So that, that's the, th uh, the second part of it. The third part of it is a true black pill. The black pill. Are you ready for the true black pill? At some point, everything that we work on is going to be one ship, just one system on a chip covered in a blob that is coming. Will you, you will vote for Texas becoming New York, then what? That is actually fucking retarded. That is not only retarded. Yeah, that, that's, that's not only retarded. That's just ideologically possessed as well as retarded. I am not going to be fooled into voting for people that I think are fucktards because I choose a team. Uh, there is a massive difference between why New York is the way it is. And, uh, like, again, a lot of why New York City is the way it is is because of people that are far more radical as politicians. Secondly, it has to do with the people that live there. It has to do with the culture of people that live there. It has to do with a number of different confounding factors uh, that is, yeah, that, that's just fucking retarded it's not even worth replying to um again it, it, it's just it's just fundamentally retarded you're usually choosing between between two shit bags like was i happy when i voted for greg abbott not really will i be happy voting for biden not really like i i've i i can't this is literally the only time i've actually voted for somebody and been happy like felt like man i did a good thing i think the only fucking time voting for Larry Sharp in 2018 and voting for Ron Paul in a primary in 2008. Those are the two times that I voted for somebody where I thought like, I feel good about my vote. Literally two times over the course of my life. Every other time I have pulled the lever and thrown up in my mouth and felt sick at my decision and gone home with a feeling of shame because the choices suck balls. 
Like, yeah, I mean, like, again, that, that type of prodding, like, it's, it's, just, it's just fucking retarded. And it demonstrates a complete lack of understanding of how the world works. But more importantly, it also demonstrates a lack of understanding in the differences between local government, state government, federal government, what they have the power to do, what they don't have the power to do. Again, like, th there are things that a, gov that a mayor can do. There are things that a city council can do that are not things that a president can do in that particular area. Above all, again, if you have a state government that has run a certain way, there are things that they are going to push back on. Uh, like, you know, like uh, New York City is not like Texas is not going to become New York City because of who is president. Uh, if certain parts of certain parts of Texas, some may argue already are, depending on the area of Austin or Houston you're in, uh, they, at the end of the day, there are differences. And to kind of tie together federal government, state government, city government, local government, and pretend that they are all the same, to pretend that because of somebody having a specific party, that they are the same as all the extreme elements of their party, to not take into account the other person that's on the ballot and what they're doing, it, it just, it, like, it, it's useless. Like, again, I, I, was, I, I lived in New York City as a business owner while Trump was president. He was president throughout 2020. Did I not have to stand in front of my store with a fucking metal rod because on June 2nd, people were going around and destroying every fucking business on the block? Did, did, did Trump keep a chair from going through the Korean barbecue that was in the end of 7th Avenue and you know, at the end of 6th Avenue and 30th Street? Did he, no, not 30th, uh, because on 6th Avenue and uh, 27th Street. Did he stop that from happening? No. Did he stop Cuomo from doing a pause order? No. Did he stop any, like, did any, was any of this stopped? Did, was there any real tangible difference to the people there that lived through that experience as a result of who was running the federal government? There was none whatsoever. He sat there and tweeted and made, was a drama queen like a bitch. It doesn't matter. Many people look to the person who's running the federal government and expect that that's going to make a massive difference in their personal life and what it's like in that state. In reality, I lived in New York City through the entirety of the Bush presidency, the Obama presidency, and the Trump presidency. And at the end of the day, that local government, that local gut was not really affected by what was happening at the federal level. Conversely, uh, you know, if you go to Hico, Texas, you go to Mason, Texas, they are not... They're not exactly being affected by what's happening at the, the federal level in the same way. Like, he go, you know, Mason, Texas is not going to become Brooklyn, New York because Biden is there instead of DeSantis or DeSantis is there instead of Obama or whatever the fuck it is. And to have that type of view of the world, it's a very narrow minded, but it's also a very lack of nuanced view of the world that you would have if you're either a child or somebody that has just gone so far down up ideologically possessed rabbit hole because you listen to the same political shit all day. You spend all day listening to the same fucking podcast where you hear the same ideas never being challenged. And above all, you don't go out there into the real world to actually see what it's like when different people are in office and really experience it. I know the, I mean, yeah, like, you know, people are not, pe people are not, how about this? Texas has not become San Francisco as a result of Biden being president. New York City did not become Custer, South Dakota as a result of Trump being president. It's just, it's just not the way the world works. And again, I can understand why you'd have that type of narrow-minded view as you've been brainwashed by listening to all this shit all day. But like, all I would suggest is you step outside that world a little bit. Just wanted to say how much I've been enjoying your work. Let EQ up the awesome energy. Remember, your community's got your back. Thank you. Have you lost respect to any content creators that you had a lot, a lot of respect towards? Uh, some, I don't, I don't want to go over that, really. If you went into a smart TV to see if it's possible to remove the Wi-Fi chip via desolder. No, I'm not doing that. I'm just not going to connect it to the Wi-Fi. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not opening my television for this. I don't feel like opening my TV. Honestly, on my spare time, I, what ThinkPad do you recommend for a poor IT guy? I mean, a used ThinkPad P50 is pretty nice. You know, a few hundred bucks, you get something that's... That's pretty durable, pretty powerful. Has a track point. Gotta, gotta love the track point. Fuck track pads. Are you of German heritage because of your name? Yes, Rossman with two ends is German. A lot of people get that mistaken and think that one end is Jewish, but it's two ends, which is German. My mother was Italian. Uh, her, so her name was an Italian name. So I'm 50% Italian because of that. And my dad was a complete mutt. He was German. Uh, what is it? He's German, Hungarian, El Salvadorian, and a bunch of different shit that he doesn't even fucking remember. So uh, I'm half Italian, half whatever the fuck else. You see the House Authority got busted for bribery. I have something to do with that outrageous rent. What's your opinion? I'll be honest, I did not see that. I did not follow it. Uh, Any time that I am following politics, on average, when I'm following politics, it means I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do because if I have time to actually 
uh, keep up with all this and read the news and read the legis- and read the transcripts of, of legislative sessions, it means that I'm not bettering my skill sets, I'm not focusing on my business, I'm not focusing on friends, family, doing stuff. And I've tried to make a little bit of time to catch up on myself. So- I've tried to take time to catch up on the things that I haven't been doing over the past five to ten years that I should have been doing. I feel like I have a lot of catching up to do on a lot of those things that I should have been doing, which means I don't have the time to, uh, to read about that stuff. When you say the House Authority, uh, give me a little. I, I, give me some more details. But do it in the unpaid chat. You don't have to do it in the paid chat. I'll get to it, but I'm just behind by it because I'm at 3:24 and it is 4:12. So I'm behind by about 50 minutes. <clears throat> you can downvote incorrect suggestions. Oh, let's see. That I was talking about sponsor block from an hour ago. Okay, that window is dead. So all the chat from 3:26. I'm gonna miss all the chat from 3:26 to when. That's kind of sad. I really hate the way YouTube communication works. I literally have to keep two or three browser windows open. 326 to 354 is gone. Luckily, I had the second window open on the ThinkPad. So I got my desktop computer and my laptop one over here. And this is on 328. Why is it no one cares about lobbying big companies uh, when they're here in the first place to defend people's interest? I answered that question about 15 to 20 minutes ago. The inflation we have now is in the market of the money plan is COVID. It's not transitionary. It will only get worse. If you looked into Bitcoin being the solution to inflation, I have not because Bitcoin at the end of the day is based on other people believing it as value. And there again, you could say that about the currency of any country. You can, it's, the value of a currency of a country is based on that country's economy. Again, there are many reasons to not believe in many countries' economies, including the U.S., but it's based on the country's economy. Stocks, that's based on the confidence you have in that company's ability to pre- produce value, uh, products and services that people find valuable. Oil, en- you know, energy, cars, uh, toilet paper, whatever the fuck, that, food, whatever the fuck the company produces. Um, Bitcoin is based on somebody else believing it as like believing it as value, and it, I find a lot of crypto to be a consensual Ponzi scheme. Am I going to tell you it's not going to go up? No, I'm not, because the world, if any, it is anything that's been proven over the past two thousand years. People love their consensual Ponzi schemes, but I, I'm not I'm not really interested in that. I do agree with you that there's a lot of um, uh, you know a lot of the inflation again. Like when people look at like the money that Biden has spent, it is a lot of money, and I'm not a fan of a lot of the shit that that, that happened there. But when you blame him for all the inflation and you just kind of forget about April 2020 and just like five, like literally Alex Azar saying, man, I could use like two billion help with all this COVID shit. This is going to be really fucking bad. And Trump's like, you get 500 million. Fuck you. Like they gave Alex Azar, which was I think a Republican uh, in government, one quarter of what he asked for. So he wouldn't be as prepared for to deal with all of it. And then two months, three months later, you wind up spending five trillion dollars. Like talk about not, you know, talk about not putting in the money in the beginning and having to put in a lot more later. I think people forget like, you know, April 2020, like five trillion went out the door. Like, you know, blame Biden for a good portion. Maybe extended unemployment benefits, causing business, you know, businesses to raise wages, raise prices for things or whatever else, or some of the spending not being right. But a lot of that spending that he's doing, he's doing over a long time period. Even if you don't like that spending, it's happening over a long time period. Whereas April 2020, that was five trillion that got pissed in like immediately. Like so, you know, I, it, there's no point in in, in arguing over who's you know, uh, over who caused the inflation at this point, because both both parties, like, are more than happy to hose money at random shit at this point. And the, 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 there, there really is no party you vote for that gives a fuck about uh, spend, you know, spending an amount of money that is commiserate with the money that we, that we take in in tax revenue anymore. Uh, the, the reality is you have to learn how to deal with the inflation. In terms of, I'm not going to tell you how. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to endorse a consensual Ponzi scheme. I'm not going to tell you to buy gold because fucking Birch gives me a, affiliate links for it. I'm not going to tell you to buy Bitcoin. The only thing that I will tell you to do that I guarantee will put you in, in the best position, work on yourself. I know, it's lame. It's not the answer anybody wants to hear. Learn new skills. Go out there into the world. Ask people. Go to recruiting agencies. What, can I, what, are people, what are the problems people are asking you to solve and how can I be a part of solving them? Go to meetup groups. Look at what the job ads are. Look at what people are looking for and figure out how can I be valuable. If you are valuable to the world in some way, shape, or form, if you have a skill set people give a shit about, if you make the world a better place with the work that you do, uh, you will be better fed. You will, you will deal better in an inflationary economy. You'll, somehow people will find a way to take care of you and make sure that you're, that you're good. I, I would rather do that than focus on, oh my God, do I buy gold or Bitcoin or like which, which stock is the best hedge against inflation? Uh, in my opinion, the best hedge against inflation is uh, becoming as valuable as you can be. But, you know, living up to your full potential, in my opinion, is the best hedge against inflation. It's, it's very generalized advice, so it's not really, it, it kind of probably seems off, but. Uh, what's your outlook on the future? Oh, I already answered that one. I'm behind by a lot. Poor barking dog. What do you mean, poor barking dog? He barks all he wants. 
where can I buy that ThinkPad? I'm not selling this ThinkPad. I'm going to keep this until I've dropped this thing off a ladder several times, hanging cameras. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get rid of this until I break it. And that means I'm never going to get rid of it because you can't break a ThinkPad. Good luck breaking a ThinkPad, man. Good fucking luck breaking a ThinkPad. Is there any idea at the moment to improve the right repair situation in the U? I don't know. I don't live there. I'm having a good enough, I'm, I'm having a, a fun enough time failing getting anything done in my own country before I can focus on other countries. Once I get something done in my own country that actually moves the ball forward for my industry, I'll consider like trying to do it for other countries. I mentioned 1984 because you behave like that. You live in an upscale neighborhood far away from the all Democrat policies you support. I mean, you're, you're retarded, bro. I don't know what else to say. You don't even know what policies I talk about. You don't, even, like, you, you don't listen to what I say. You don't understand what I do. Um, I lived in New York City for 17 years, which is I lived in Brooklyn for a very long period of time. I did not support the policies of my local government. I voted against the policies of my local government every single time that I could. I did that until there was literally nobody to vote for. You don't care. You are functionally retarded. You, I, I, do, I wanted to vote for somebody else. That person pussied out of the election, which means I have two choices. I have one person who's a cunt I disagree with at times, but fine, fuck it. It's just some old doddering old dude. And I have another dude that doesn't really, that just kind of seems to enjoy blowing shit up. Like, I'm just going to throw dynamite in here. That at the end of the day, not only didn't do anything to make things better, not only didn't do anything to make New York a little bit less in New York, but kind of wanted to claim that, you know, everything was stolen. He, doesn't, he literally doesn't care if the entire country gets destroyed as a result of him being salty over losing. It's like, listen, I'd have voted for Ron DeSantis. I would have swallowed my pride and voted for a lot of people in the Republican primary over Biden. But, you know, it is what it is. Like, you, you get two choices. Uh, you don't know what policies I support. You don't really care. Again, you watch and listen to the same shit, and you see the world in a very black and white way. And it's because you see the world in a very black and white way that you make the dumbass comments that you make. In my local government elections, I vote for the people that I can vote for. Let's just say that they're not the people that run New York. Uh, again, you know, I, 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 I kind of, I wasn't particularly excited to vote for Greg Abbott for a number of different reasons. That made me sick. But like, as I'm pulling the lever on, on Greg Abbott, I'm just thinking of 2020. I'm thinking about my fucking local politicians. I'm thinking about the way that they like, they wanted, to, I'm thinking about what they did during COVID. I'm thinking about the way that they just completely ignored every business on my block getting fucking destroyed. I'm thinking about my neighbors that slid hate mail, slid hate mail under my door because I stayed open during COVID. Similar to you being tunnel visioned and retarded, these people did not give two shits of a fuck that I told every one of my employees, if you wish to stay home as long as you want, you will get full pay to do so. I will do that until this is no longer a business. Here's the money that's in the bank. If all of you stay home, I can afford to do this for maybe six weeks, but if only a few of you stay home, the people that have you know really sick family members and all that, I can afford to do this probably for the rest of the year. Before there was PPP, I did that. I had neighbors that were literally stealing hate mail under my fucking door saying, you piece of shit, greedy ass business owner. I think of those people. I think of, the pe I think of who they voted for. And I vote for people that during that time, you know what? Thought differently. Didn't think I was an evil piece of shit. Didn't see me in the similar black and white way that you do. You see me in black and white from your perspective, from, your, your, from the team red retardation. They saw me black and white from the team blue retardation, both extremists of a different kind. In my local government, I vote for certain people. At the federal level, I would vote for people that were more in line with my values if they were running. Unfortunately, they were all bitches and they were so scared to step out of the limelight and actually compete and actually hit back or fight back when Trump would say something about them that they lost. Is that my fault? No. If I was running, if I was in the Republican primary, I wouldn't be a little bitch the way DeSantis was and just take it all on the chin, let somebody fucking jizz on my face every single day, insult me the entire time because I'm a pussy that wants to pander to their base. It's not my fault that, that everybody else had a shit strategy. I'm not... Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm done voting with those retarded comments at this point. It's just brain dead. Like... Spot, okay. Anyway, what do we have in here? Okay, now we're scrolling to the real cancer in the comments. Let's see. I'm impressed you got out of New York. Been there for two. Let's see. No Monero donation. No. Nobody uses the cryptocurrency shit anyway. So I, I haven't really updated it or adding new wallets. Uh, let's see. What do you think of the immigration crisis happening in New York? It's interesting that uh, it's one of these. 
I, like I get one of the things that a lot of people say is like you know people are using this and posturing for political gain and using people as pawns and blah 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 by sending them here. And at the end of the day, I think what other states are doing is they're demonstrating that you cannot you cannot say we are going like you're evil for not wanting to support all these all, all of these individuals coming in while simultaneously not being willing to pay the bill for it. Like if you have the rhetoric that certain politicians have and you have demonized people that point out that there are certain problems, that there are certain budgetary constraints and things when dealing with things, that the world is a little bit more complicated than you see it is, that there are costs to the things that you want to do, uh, when, when they actually have to deal with the consequences of their rhetoric, they, they seem to get mad. And I think that's why a lot of people are busing people to places like New York. Don't get me wrong. I think some of the ways that this has been done is kind of stupid. When Ron DeSantis fucking spends taxpayer money on a goddamn plane to fly people to Martha's Vineyard, that is not exactly an economically viable way to do it either. That is a stupid stunt. You know, at least, at least Greg Abbott's like, you know, t take fucking Greyhound or something versus like, he, at least he's, he's, you know, a little bit more economically viable there than like, I'm going to fucking fly you to this so, I have a, so that I have, a, a, you know, a good ad campaign to make. Uh, you know, something good for when I run for president. I'm not really a fan of using taxpayer dollars to pull political stunts so that you can get in the news and get people's attention when running for office. But I think the reason they're doing that is because if you want to have that rhetoric, then you kind of have to be willing to pay for it. And the, practi and, and the reality is I don't think New York can pay for it. Um, and I think, you know, I, I, do I have a solution to any of this stuff? Absolutely not. That's why I don't run for office. That's why I sit in a rocking chair and manage a group of people that fix MacBooks and like, you know, and, and rather than actually, like, I'm not going to lie and bullshit you and say if I was in office, I'd have any idea what the fuck to do about it. It's really easy to point out the things that are wrong. It's, very, it's most certainly easy to insult people who are doing things you don't like. It's very difficult to actually come up with a solution that's going to work and it's going to cause people to not, uh, not hate you, not hate their lives, go along with it. Even if you come up with a really good solution, it's very likely that the good solution that works is not a solution other people will agree with. So not only do you have to come up with good solutions, you also have to come up with a way to have good solutions and then frame it in a manner that people will actually go along with you good solution because if people don't want to go along with it and get in the bandwagon then your good solution isn't worth shit uh so yeah I, i'm i'm probably yeah i mean i, I not, not much to say there and all the chat up until 337 to here is gone because i fucked oh that's why i have two windows so three 334 to 354 is unfortunately gone starting back from 354 i is too far gone Yep, we get to have an election between two 80-year-olds. Yay. Yay. One person whose brain is rotting and the other person who's whatever the fuck else is rotting. Yay. I don't know. Just thinking about, like, presidential elections kind of makes me sick. Enough about that shit. Ugh. You think Richard Stallman should be more notorious? I think he had his time in his son. He had his influence. I think what Richard Stallman did is he, f he kind of failed to get mainstream acceptance of that particular movement. I mean, he, I think he, you know, he moved free software forward a lot, and good for him for doing that, but I, I do think when it comes to wide, like that being a widespread cultural movement, you know, he got his niche and he got people to think about his niche, but at the end of the day, like when you look at the majority of people, I think that he hasn't gotten that. Okay, next. What happened with the mattress? Can't answer that question. Uh, starting September, October, I have had so much stress that it is. I would not be able to do a fair comparison to the other mattress which I threw away. Uh, like I can't say whether this improved my sleep or not because if your stress goes up 500% at the same time that you get a more comfortable mattress, it's not really possible to know. What are your thoughts on sea turtles? I think they're very cute. They're very cute. They're kind of slow, but they're cute. They swim a lot faster than they walk. Who says you can't charge people more after a decade of inflation? Uh, the market does. So let's, again, this goes back to the question I, that happened on uh, PC. Um, this, this goes back to what I was talking about on, uh, on the repair industry and whether it has a future. So again, if you have, if you have a device that costs $999, you cannot charge past a certain amount of money to fix that device. Like, it's just not going to work. You, you cannot charge, like, for instance, you cannot charge $1,100 to fix something that goes that for $999. Let's say that $999 device costs, after a year or two, costs five or 600 in the used market. 
If it costs $500, and again, remember the formula, you can charge 33% of what it costs to replace something to fix it, that means that you're looking at charging about $175 to $200 to fix it. The reason that you cannot increase the price of your, uh, of your services if you're servicing a product that has a static price is because nobody's going to pay $600 to fix something that has $500 of value. Uh, so it's not about morally or ethically whether you can raise your price. I try to avoid thinking of, of things in those terms when it comes to that, to, to that section of business. Uh, I, uh, wh what I think about when it comes to that part of business is like what's possible. Like it, it makes absolutely... Thanks for moving to Austin. You and the two million others have destroyed the water table and the environment. The groundwater springs and aquifers are gone. You're a hypocrite. Uh, you're just a salty, raging asshole. I don't know, like fuck. Yeah, I'm. Sh yeah, like I I'm. I'm. I'm confident that you too don't drink water. You fucking dumbass. I'm confident that you don't drink or you've never showered. You've lived here your whole life and you've never showered. You've never drank water. Like suck a dick, bro. You're a fucking. Re you're just. You're the dumbest shit. Uh, what do you think about funding foreign wars? Uh, depends. What we're uh, are we the good guy or the bad guy? I mean, I don't. I don't really know what to say there. Like. I, you know, like, are, are we destroying other, are we trying to help people who are being destroyed or are we the ones doing the destroying? You know, I'm, I tend to have a little bit more sympathy for the former over the latter. Uh, what are you doing now? I'm rocking back and forth in the chair. It's, I don't know. There's something really silly about people that say that they hate people that move to their area because it's very, it's very weird. Like, as a New Yorker, as somebody who was born in New York, I watched as people from all over the country moved to New York City for 20 years. Like, if you look at like, even just like Bed Stuy, Bed Stuy used to have a very specific demographic. Now, Bed Stuy is a bunch of gentrified fucking hipsters that moved here from other parts of the country that want to be artists, streamers, or you know, like fucking co what, programmers, social media managers, whatever the fuck else they want to do. They want to work. They want to work for Vice. Um, you know, there are many different areas in New York City that used to have a specific culture that fundamentally got destroyed by people from all over the country, both red and blue areas, moving there, increasing the po increasing the rent. Uh, you know, not really adding as much to the local environment, making it more difficult for people that live there to be able to have something. God forbid somebody from that environment who has spent 25 years watching people from all over the world move there, drive up the cost of everything, go somewhere else. Like the idea, the simple idea that somebody moving to some place has destroyed the water supply by using the water that they use in that area in a very economically, uh, in my opinion, economically and environmentally viable way, in a conserving way, is ruining the area, is ruining the world. Listen, man, if you think, here's, what, here's the way I see that. If you think that people that use water or move to your area are ruining it by utilizing water and that those people should, should, should fuck off. You know, there's, listen, man, I could tell you how to save water. I could tell you how to save water. There's a very easy way to save a lot of water. You could start yourself. Find a balcony like this, find it a little bit taller, and, you know, have a, have a long trip off a short pier, as my mother used to say to people like you. <laughs> like, really. Like, it, it, you know, if you're one of those people that believes that humans are ruining the planet by utilizing resources, even when, not by using resources in a stupid way, not by keeping the sprinkler system on all day, not by, like, just eating, uh, e eating in a gluttonous fashion and, and, and wasting resources by refilling their pool every goddamn day because they don't, God forbid, they, they you know, they, they keep the chlorine levels popular. But just by being there, if you believe that humans are ruining the planet, there's a solution to that. There's a solution to that. And you, you could start, and like, like I say, I try to be the change I want to see in the world. You could be the change you want to see in the world too. It starts with you. I'll leave it at that. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I should listen to that advice more often. Any recommendations for a new laptop in the sub $1,000 range? Looking for an IPS screen, 1080p, 1920 by 1200, 400 plus, and it's mostly web browsing, media consumption, or streaming. I do not, I'll be honest with you, uh, use ThinkPad. Most of the pro one of the problems with ThinkPads, again, one of the things that Apple does really right, they put good screens in their laptops for the most part. Almost every other provider, the, the, the stock screen you get in this is going to be a piece of shit. Most PC laptops, the stock screen you get is an absolute piece of shit and has been for a long time. Uh, I, I can't really tell you there because even if you do buy one, there's also a panel lottery that happens a lot of time where they use two or three different panels and one of them will be good and the other two will be shit. So it's really hard even if you get a, a review to understand what you're getting. Any chance you might want to repair with Ross Scott from Accursed Farms to give him some advice on his crusade against Ubisoft nullifying perpetual software licenses for games. I don't really know if I can give people advice on crusades against anything, to be honest with you. I've been crusading against Apple and companies that want to take away right to repair for over 10 years. I mean, like, again, I'll, I'm just being honest with you. 
if you look at the progress that I've made and the progress that we have made, it really isn't that great. It really is like, you look at the progress, that hasn't, again, you know, we've gotten some news articles and we've gotten some pieces of legislation that for the most part are good for headlines and not really, change, not really changing what's available. Um, when I, listen, I'll give people advice in other industries when I figure out how to, how to clean up my own house. I don't think I'm qualified to, to really give anybody else advice on that stuff until I clean up my own house. You see the House Authority busted ass this week? I have not. You should have written in Ron Paul in 2008. I did. I voted for him in the primary, and I wrote him in the general. I actually did. Prize your Biden. I, I'm really not. I'm just, I'm looking at two, two options that make me sick that I never wanted and pulling the lever on the one that I, 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 I hate less. I fuck, I, I hate them all. I really do. The only thing I hate more than the two candidates right now are the fucking giant pussies that didn't do what they needed to do during the primary to actually win. Oh, it was so hard. I still remember consider Larry Sharp. Consider is a great word. That's the other thing. You know, when I, when I did watch, when, when I did uh, support Larry Sharp, I didn't tell people who to vote for. I had a banner in one of my videos and it said, consider Larry Sharp. Simply because I have 100,000 subscribers does not mean that I have the right to tell you who to vote for. When I, would watch Casey, when I watched Casey Neistat's video telling everybody that they needed to vote for Hillary Clinton, that made me fucking sick. It really did. Like, fuck Casey Neistat for that. Just because you are rich, just because you have a lot of subscribers, does not mean you have the right to tell other people what to do in their personal lives. It doesn't mean you have the right to tell people what to think. It doesn't mean you have to tell the, right, the, the right to tell people who to vote for. I don't have the right to tell you to vote for Trump. I don't have the right to tell you to vote for Biden. I don't have the right to tell you who to vote for in a primary. I don't have the right to tell you who to vote for in your own personal fucking in life. You vote for who you want to vote for based on your personal conscience, based on the issues that matter to you, based on the, based on the issues that you've experienced in your personal area. Do not listen to me. I should have no say on that shit. I do not get to influence you in that way. I want, I, 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 do I talk into a camera? Yes, I do, but I'm not a fucking influencer. and I'm not here to influence you in that particular type of way. You vote your conscience. Um, yeah, I, that, that, that was very important vocabulary for me to have. Go watch the animated movie Robots. Watch it with my daughter yesterday. It's a perfect movie for kids about right to repair. I'll check it out. Thank you very much, by the way. It, yeah, it's, it's not my, it's not, I, will I tell you what my thoughts are? I'll tell you what my thoughts are based on, based on what I've gone through, based on my personal experiences, and based on, my, and you know, I'll give you an idea of what I think, but what I think is not what you should think. I don't want people to be, this is one of the things that drives me nuts is when people said I used to be a fan, but now I'm not because you said this. I don't want fans. I want, I, I want viewers. I want listeners. I don't want fans. Because fan implies that there's a certain level of, of loyalty to, 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 a certain level of blind loyalty that I just I'm not comfortable with and I don't want from from anybody in my audience. I don't want to spend a lot of money. Can you recommend a well a digital soldering station? Uh, 115 on Amazon. If not, there's a better brand to use. I haven't used a lot of the Weller ones to be honest with you. They're not a bad brand, but I just haven't used any of the new stuff, so I don't really know. I would probably buy a used Hacko. Like I again, I haven't bought new equipment in a long time, and one of the reasons OS in the computer and favorite open source. Stuff. I, I I go back and forth between Arch and Ubuntu Studio. Uh, as distributions, I used to be like uh, used to use Gentoo when I was like when I was you know further engaged in my in my autism as, as a, in my youth. But at some point, I realized that I did not want to spend uh, you know three hours to compile one program dealing with fucking portage conflicts because of, just so that I could jerk myself off and say that I compile all my software from source. We uh, was. I, there was one thing that I missed there. I was talking about something and I completely forgot it because I'm getting overwhelmed and destroyed with messages in the incoming. So unfortunately, I'm going to miss some of that stuff because yeah, I, I literally just forgot what I was talking about. I tried to talk about three different subjects at the same time and my brain just kind of went right off the deep end there. Oh yeah, it was the politician shit. Like, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I probably vote for different... I have two million subscribers. Uh, something tells me that we've had disagreements on who to vote for both locally and federally. Oh, well, listen, you're, you're going to vote your conscience. I'm going to vote mine. doesn't make you a bad person. doesn't make you a piece of shit. It means that you have differences in opinion based on your life experiences, and some of you have differences in opinion because you, you're fucking brainwashed and uh, from, you know, overdosing on YouTube, uh, too, uh, you YouTube clickbait shit that's designed to get you to click and be angry and reinforce your opinion so that they can get ad revenue. Uh, and some of you actually have your own thoughts. You know, these, these things can differ from time to time, but, like, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. I, I can tell you what I think and why I think it, but doesn't... People who are going to tell you you need to vote this, and if you don't vote that, you're a bad. Like, it's just, I'm no. 
Like, even at 100,000 subscribers, it was consider Larry Sharp, not vote for Larry Sharp, not support Larry Sharp. It was consider. Because that's all I have the right to do. All I have the right to do is ask you to consider my thought process and consider my arguments. I don't have the right to tell you to do shit. I felt so fucking sick when I watched that video with Casey Neistat saying, like, you must vote for Hillary Clinton. Like, S fuck you, bro. Fuck you. Like, who the, fu who the fuck are you to think that because you have this many subscribers that my concerns are not valid? That if I live in the Rust Belt and I've listened to this person shit on me for years, that if I disagree with some of their foreign policy ideas, that if I disagree with the way this person has viewed me and seen me as less than simply because I don't subscribe to all of what it is she said, that I need to vote for that simply because you have a lot of subscribers. Fuck you for not considering my thoughts. Fuck you for not considering what I think. Now, if somebody wants to insult me because of my thoughts, I don't care about them, but if somebody wants to have a discussion about them, it's not my place to tell you that you're a bad person and you need to do what I say because I have a lot of subscribers that's bullshit and i uh, that shit made me sick not that i watched a lot of his videos uh, before that but i definitely made sure to never view or click on or mention any of that shit afterwards as a 40 year old switching careers what type of education initial job should i pursue to gain the most ground doing your kind of work again i'm just going to be honest here i think that my industry had a real fucking heyday in 2008 2009 had a real heyday in 2014 even as late as 2018 in 2024 <sighs> Would I advise that people follow, get into this? Not really. There's, again, there's, there are millions of fields in tech. There are millions of them that are not being inflated away. There are tons of fields where you are going to get paid way more, where you are going to provide a lot more value to the world that are not going to be gone in a couple of years, where the skill set that you gain will translate to other things. I have an amazing skill set in my particular field that I cannot translate over to literally anything. And that, that's not me shitting on myself. That's just the reality. If you become, um, you know, if, if you become a C programmer and do drivers and shit, you can probably translate that over to something else. You know, somebody may not want to hire you over somebody else to, I don't know, be a fucking senior data engineer or some shit, but like you can do that. Uh, you know, if, if you are a person that sets up, uh, set up, you know, I don't know, Avaya PBX systems and Asterisk PBX systems, you may be able to get a job at a company that deals with, I don't know, virtualized managed phone services or soft or, uh, you know, infrastructure as code doing that type of stuff. Uh, you know, if, if you're an electrical engineer, you may not... <laughs> You may not be the person that is building certain things, and, like certain PC boards for an HVAC company, but you may be able to translate that experience into, I don't know, working on, on radios at Qualcomm. Uh, this specific niche that I'm in, A, in my opinion, is declining in value as a result of inflation, device prices being the same as cost of living goes up, and as parts are no longer available for anything as most of these companies win, but more importantly, this skill set is just not something that translates well. Like you put that you did this on a, on a resume, it's not going to hit the same way as something else. So I would not say, if you want to follow in my footsteps, what I suggest you do is consistently go out there in the world, try different stuff, meet new people, always be doing something, always be striving to be the best at whatever it is that you're doing at that particular point in time. Don't see what you're doing as a job. See it as a craft. See it as something that you want to continuously improve at. See it as something that you want to provide as much value to as many people as possible through being good at what you do at. And talk to other people, even if you disagree with them, even if you think that they're assholes. Even As long as you're able to get perspective from other people that are doing something similar to what you're doing, figure out what the problems are in the world, figure out how you could help people with their problems, and talk to people that you otherwise wouldn't talk to. They could give you the perspective that you need to figure out what path you want to go on. That one phone call I had with NYC iPod Doctor in December of 2008, where he told me all these fucking stores that are advertising they do this for 159 when you call them they will add 150 to the bill because they're lying in their ad. The ad makes it sound like it's 159 for the service. That's just for the part. When you call them, they're going to tell you it's another 140 if you want them to actually do it. Without that phone conversation, I would have never even looked into it. And for all I know, I would have never even bothered continuing with this as an industry. You, be a part of the world. And if, if you want to follow in the whys of what I did, what I did, or the principles of it, I support that. If you want to figure out, like, what do I need to do to do the exact same shit you do now, I'm, I'm not going to tell you to do that because I, the path I followed was relevant in 2008. It was relevant for the situations I was in, and the situations I was in were because the world was the way it was. The world has changed in 15 years and 17 years. It's not going to be the same. You shouldn't do the same thing that I did because it's not going to, you're not going to have the same outcome. What do you th think we will have a common open repairable car battery? Um, I don't think there's a motivation for that. I think 
the main problem is not having a repairable car battery. I think the main problem is that lithium ion is just shit technology in general. It's the best that we have. It's it's kind of like you know it's kind of like democracy. It's like you know the, the or it's like capitalism. Like you know, it, it sucks. It, it's shit. Although you know, it, it it's shit, but it's better than everything else. Like. You know, lithium ion is the best. It's it's garbage, but it's better than everything else. Like the mere fact that lithium ion batteries, like it gets, if you try to charge it while it's too cold, you get dendrites and maybe it explodes. You tr you tr it gets too hot, it explodes. You get touch it the wrong way, it explodes. It dies after a, you know a certain number of charge cycles. It's fucking expensive. You have to dig the earth for it. Like lithium ion sucks. It, talking about what you know, how to make the batteries a little bit more repairable. In my opinion, is. The, is is not really the I would like to see moving on from that to different technology, but I also realize that that's not something that's easy. You have to do something. There's, there's general, there's applied research, and there's just general research. Applied research is where it's like we want to figure out the solution to a very specific problem, and general research is like we're just randomly exploring random shit just to figure out what the, what we learn. It's kind of like what I was saying about the. Um, it's it's kind of like what I said about, you know, when you get a job, like trying to get a job, trying to figure out where you fit in the world. Sometimes it's just about randomly stumbling around and figuring out what you find. And I don't think that any sort of applied research is going to get us to have better batteries. I really do think it's going to be the type of general research where you have absolutely no idea where the value is going to be. Like you, you're just going to, we're going to stumble upon something sometime in the next 20 to 40 years that kicks the shit out of lithium ion. But right now, I don't really think the problem with lithium-ion batteries is that they're not repairable. I think the problem is that they're insanely expensive. They have low energy density, and better than everything else, but like still shit energy density, and it's just a shit technology. It's the best of the shit technologies that we have. What do you think about gender equality in the current situation of conscription, especially in Ukraine, or selective service in the U.S.? I have no thoughts on it, and I have no knowledge on it, so not really anything to say. Fedora is not really getting focused, I'd say. Huh? Future motion, any idea how much it would cost to challenge your patents in court? More than anybody's willing to spend, which is why they're still on the top. They're on top because nobody else can really compete with them with regards to legal budget for making something. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. Social media made me angry when I realized the delivery was created for that. I deleted it all. And I keep track of all things I find important through RSS. The rage got worse around elections. Yeah, one of the, a lot of people think that I deleted my Twitter when I talk about deleting Twitter because I got mad when Elon Musk bought it. I deleted, I got rid of Twitter. I got rid of my personal Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram in 2019. And I realized that was, like, you know, I did, none of the time that I spent consuming those platforms made me feel better as a person. And like I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend time learning stuff. I wouldn't spend time talking pe to people in a productive manner. I wouldn't spend time with friends or family. I wouldn't spend time improving myself. I would just spend time scrolling. And it was this weird thing where like I'd be sitting there and I'd spend 15 minutes scrolling and I wouldn't actually get anywhere. I wouldn't learn anything, but I felt compelled. Oh my God, what if this person knows a person that knows a person that knows a person that I may know? Or, you know, this is, I want to get to the bottom of this rabbit hole of a conversation. And like I would do that and I wouldn't actually learn anything real that was useful. I wouldn't feel better at the end of it, but I felt this compulsion to keep scrolling. And that's what I realized, you know, like, I don't, I am not mentally strong enough to get myself to, to, to not do that. I'm not mentally strong enough to watch, watch this stuff, listen to this stuff, scroll through this stuff and stop. So I will, uh, so what I, so what, what I did with it is I, I just deleted it. What did you use a Kiwi Farms account for? Some people found it recently a concern given the reputation of the site for being hateful. I, I had a speech on this earlier in the video. So I've always believed that if people are talking about you, you should be in the room for it. When it comes to Reddit, r slash Apple is a group that has advocated consistently that I'm, uh, I'm uh, I, everything I say is made up, it's bullshit, my repair business uh, is for the most part a beard. Some people have suggested my repair business is fake and that it only exists. To, it only existed to like prop up my YouTube channel, even though my business started five years before my YouTube channel. Uh, so what I do is, whether it's Mac Rumors, Apple Insider, uh, random chat rooms, r slash Apple, or there, if I'm being discussed in that type of light, I will be in the room. If you want to talk about me, I'll be in the room for it. That's always been a belief of mine. Because you never know. Again, I'm, I'm not going out of my way to try to convert people to my way of thinking. But one thing I've always believed that is engage with people on their level. I learned about this website where people dox, harass, and try to get people to commit suicide if they're large creators. And I think to myself after reading this article, gee, I have 1.7 million subscribers. I'm known around the world. I have a public address for my business and a public phone number. I wonder if they know about me. I search, and I see that there's a 7 or 15 page thread on me on this website. Do I have control over deleting this? Do I have control over what people say? No, I do not. 
what I can do is I can be in the room and people are talking about you. So I see that. If you look at that account, what you'll see is that I have never, not once, communicated outside of a thread where people are specifically talking about me. Now, you have groups of people that will then associate me with the most negative sections of that website because what they're trying to do is destroy and slaughter my character by not, enga- by not looking. Like They're not going to say, you know, he's literally only talked about himself in a thread that's fucking dedicated to talking about him. Uh, it would, it would kind of be like if somebody said, I am an Apple fan who, who is a hypocrite when I talk about right to repair. I'm a hypocrite in the business. I run the things I say because I have left comments on Mac rumors forums, because I have left comments on Apple Insider, because I've left comments on Reddit r slash Apple, which is an area where if you just read even three threads about me, you will understand they have hated my guts for eight and a half, nine years, dare I say. It's been like 2015. Um, it's, it's a very low effort and in my opinion, a very, um, it's a very, it's a very lame way to try to slander people. It's that like slander by association thing. Um, like it's one of the, you know, it's, it, it's just, it's, in my opinion, it's just stupid. Um, I view, if somebody wants to know what I've used that account for, I've used it for the same thing I use my Reddit account or my Mac rumors account for to, to talk in, in rooms where people are discussing me. That's what I do. Sometimes I can get people, uh, to see things differently. Sometimes I don't. But I've always figured if I want to have a certain positive effect in the world, I'll be in the rooms where people are talking about the things that I'm talking about. And sometimes, admittedly, it's people just randomly talking about me. Anyway, you, you can usually tell when somebody uh, is speaking in good faith versus just doing character assassination. And, you know, the people that say that stuff about me, all I would suggest is look through their posts and re- really try to get a gauge for, uh, the le- for whether or not they have a reputation for causing nonsensical conflict with everybody they come into contact with. As a 40-year-old switching careers, what kind of education initial job should I pursue to gain the most kind of ground? Again, I can't really answer that. I can't tell you what to do with your career. Uh, I can't really tell you because I'm not really somebody to give you a lot of career advice because, I, again, I kind of stayed in one thing. I got to be really good at that one thing. I didn't really explore much out of it. And what I did is not really something that transfers to something else. I can't give you advice. Like, Somebody who has a different career may be able to say, do X, Y, and Z to get here. Excuse me. That is my order. Be right back. Ah, got my new tripod. I want to be able to do videos up here and also downstairs, but I have a tripod that's much too short. Do you think EU consumer rights and regulations are good? Would you like the U.S. to go in the same direction? Uh, listen, if what they've been doing... I don't see anybody able to buy an LP. You know, I don't see anybody able to get access to stuff in the EU, and I don't see open app stores in the EU working yet, so I don't really know. You'd have to have a positive outcome 
I'm going to deliver to catch you live. I want to thank you for your prompt reply to the email I sent you, even though you personally could not help me. Oh, thank you. I, I try to respond to the emails I get, but I usually wind up falling crazy behind for the same reason that I'm behind in my chat by about 30 minutes. Don't listen to Lewis. Keep getting into the tech repair field and make sure you buy my software to make you even better. <laughs> I'm going to pin that message, man. God bless Paul Daniels. Paul Daniels is a true hero of our industry. The sheer amount of time, aggravation, hassle, and misery that he has saved hundreds of thousands of people with his software. I don't think, that, I don't think Paul Daniels is ever going to be properly compensated for how much better he's made the repair industry. Found you through the 820-3462-A1425 video. And sub since then, thanks from Austria, and thanks for doing what you do. Stay strong, keep the vibe going. Thank you. Yeah, there's one, oh man, that's, that's the machine that has the screw. It's the screw. So there's a battery screw to that computer that I forget if it's for ground or it's for power. I forget if it's ground or power. I think it's ground. There's a screw for the battery. It is a different screw than any other screw used in every other MacBook that's ever existed. If you lose that screw, my the old tech Milan used to call it the screw. Like that was it, the screw. If you lose the screw, you're, you're fucked. Because you couldn't buy that screw online. It would never be included in any screw set. It wasn't a screw that went to any other part of the MacBook. It was a very, very unique screw. And if you lost it, you could never power that MacBook from battery again. Like, it, I, I'm never going to forget that machine. Like, fuck that machine for that one, with that one goddamn screw. Anybody that remembers the A20-3462 that went into the A1425 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro, the first 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh. Nice chair, Lewis. Thank you. You talk about how much time is taken out of our life lately, whether it be phone pressing buttons instead of talking to human solving caps, yourself check out and many more. You know, the thing that bothers me the most is companies that have the companies that go out of their way to make it difficult to get to a human where they play these stupid fucking games. You know the games I'm talking about. Like where you search for contact us in the site and you literally you have to Google how to how to contact them. Uh, because the contact is buried. When you do find the contact form, uh, you have to like go through six different bots in order to find a human. Uh, like that, I try to go out of my way to not use companies that do that, even if they're offering products or services that are superior to the competition. I don't have respect for people who do that. If you're not willing to pick up the phone, if you're not willing to take an email, if you use harsh and hostile UI and design to make it as difficult as humanly possible for me to ask a normal fucking question, I just I don't want to give you money. How do weight training affect your ability to have stamina for long work days, if at all? Am I, uh, it, it, I don't, like, the, I know, like, the, the, the beauty pageant answer is to say, yes, it did. I'll be honest with you, it didn't at all. I, I just, I, it, it didn't do anything for me there. Um, I think that it's, it's a good thing to do, and I definitely think that, you know, like, now I'm not going to recommend running. Obviously, I'm biased because of, like, my eating issues with my knees. Long walks from time to time are, uh, you know, I, I like doing speed walks. Not running, I'm getting old and shit, osteoarthritis. I'll, I like doing uh, speed walks and I like doing uh, weightlifting. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do squats, I'll go all the way down, stay there for two seconds, go all the way up. I, I don't do running anymore. It, do that for your health. Don't do it because it, it'll get you through a long work day. Because if you do, the point is it's actually good for your health. It's good for your health, but if you do it because you have a long work day, it, once you see that it doesn't help you get through the long work day, once you see it doesn't help you get through the long work day, uh, then you may stop doing it. But if you do it because you actually want to do it for your health in, in general, then you'll keep doing it. So I always say if you want to do something that's good for you, have realistic expectations of what you're doing so you don't stop. Not to get political, but where's Clinton the cat? He's sitting on the love seat. They like, they, they like the love seat more than this. I admire you and learn a lot from your videos. Hope you come to Newcastle in the UK. I don't know if I'm worth, I don't know if I'm worth admiring, man. I appreciate it, and thank you for saying that. But I don't, I, I don't think I'm worth admiring here. <clears throat> Let's see what I got here. Thoughts on Morena phone. Meh. Uh, let's see. I've answered that question over and over, OCD Kirby. I think the people that are angry at that are people that don't understand. The, the thing is that they want to be mad. They want to re they want to go out of their way to slander. Like they're not people that actually understand, like the concept of it. Like I, I, I read the news. I saw there was a website where people literally go out of their way to dox you, swat you, and try to get people to commit suicide if they're large creators. I see that I have a 15-page thread on myself that I cannot fucking delete. If I cannot delete it, and this is a group of people that are known for fucking with people, and I'm famous, and my address is published on the internet, and my email is published on the internet, and my, uh, I have employees that work there, hell, if you're going to talk about me and there's literally nothing I can do to fucking stop you, I'm going to be in the room for it. And if somebody hears me say that and decides to use that as a way to slander me, I, I don't know what to say, man. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Listen, like, it, it's one of these things. I forget the... Um, uh, Oscar Wilde said something like this, like real friends stab you in the front. Like I, I'm, I'm not one of those people that is going to hide away from 
bullies. I'm not one of those people that's going to say, oh my God, that's a third rail. I'm afraid of you. Like, uh, it's, it's, it's not the way any of that shit works. Like, if there's a, if there's a place that's known, that's n been in the news numerous times for going out of their way to make large content creators kill themselves, I am not going to go, oh my God, I'm not touching that. No, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to see if I mentioned on there. And if I see you talking about me, I'm going to talk back. Like, yeah, like, now, if somebody wants to compare me to the worst elements of that website, I think at that point, you know exactly what you need to know. You know what you need to know, that that's being used. Uh, that, that's somebody that's not talking in good faith. It's not somebody that wants to engage in good faith. It's not somebody that even cares. That's somebody that wants to go out of their way to, uh, to, d to, just, shit on, to just shit on you by association. And the thing is, the problem, essentially the thing is, I'm never going to make somebody like that happy because they're doing that with a, they're saying the things that they're saying from a malicious point of view to begin with. Uh, like, it, it wasn't like that was done in good faith. That was done at, because somebody wanted to uh, maliciously destroy somebody's reputation. And like, you know, what do you, I, I, can't, I can't talk to people like that. I can tell you why I do the things that I do. I can tell you why I think the things that I think. And I have, you know, 12 years of history of me talking into a camera on top of, what I, you know, the people that know me in the real world. Like, I, I, I trust that my audience knows who I am, knows what I think, knows why I do what I do, and knows the type of person that I am. That's what I care about at the end of the day. Like, the people that are going to go out of their way to just, like, fuck with you and try to destroy your reputation because they're, like, I, I, can't, I, I can't spend my time um, catering to, to those types of people. It's just not, it's, it's not, well, let's see. How can I improve the thermals of my MacBook Air 2015? What you should do is change the thermal paste, use compressed air, and blow out the fan. What do you do during your free time? Seems that you monitor your time and use a lot. Uh, let's see. I, I honestly, I enjoy, honestly, I spend a lot of it enjoying the view that I have here. I really do enjoy the view that I have where I live. I enjoy kind of going out to, like, I try to uh, enjoy visiting random nature in different towns. Sometimes I get in my car and I just drive two hours to the absolute middle of nowhere and I'll find a giant lake or a hill or something and I'll just climb it. Like the other day, I drove to Iran, Texas. Not that Iran. You can't drive to that Iran. Uh, the Iran that's in Texas. Iran. I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, I drove to Iran, and I just saw a hill, and I stopped inside of the road. I just climbed the hill. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. It's, uh, it's, I think it's along I-10 West. It's, it's one of the most beautiful things I've seen in my life, I'm going to be honest with you. And I, I, so I've tried, to, I've tried to take time to really enjoy nature in a way that I haven't uh, enjoyed nature before. Um, I've, uh, and I haven't really... Yeah... Uh, I had one of the sad things in that thread on myself. I actually tried to plant a seed for somebody to try to be open to people that they otherwise wouldn't be open to. That's the sad part. If anybody actually read my post history on the website, that shall not be named. There are a good two or three posts where I'm actually trying to encourage the better. Like I understand these websites. I know I understand to some extent that some of the people, yeah, beyond reproach. But some of the people on those sites, they're, they're just fucking 12 to 15 year old kids trying to be edgy. And I, I remember growing up and, be, and seeing people like that in class. And like some of those people actually had the, the, the potential to be, how do I put this? If you, some of those people had the potential for a seed to be planted so that they might actually like go away from some of that stuff. And I feel like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I could have planted that seed. If you go through that post history, if you really look at what I'm saying in terms of, because there's one person that they all hated. I forget his name. I think it was uh, Mark Han or something like that. I actually said, you know what? No, here's why we engage this way. Here's why if you want to create positive change, you talk like this. I actually thought, you move fight to repair to Blue Sky. I don't know what that means. R Blue Sky, RSSX, I'm sorry. I feel bad because you donated money, but that's just a bunch of gibberish to me. I'm really sorry. I don't know what any of that means. Um, I know what RSS feeds are, but I don't know what the rest of that shit is. Uh, I kind of thought maybe this is, okay, A, a lot of it is just, listen, I'm just going to let you guys know. You can talk about me all you want. I know you're here. I'm watching you. But B, um, how put this? If you, the sad thing is if you actually read the post on the website that should not be named, and you read what I've had to say, some of those posts I actually thought, like, I'm going to plant a seed to see if, not all of you, maybe like one out of 20 of those 12 to 15 year olds that may be going down that path that just kind of leads to becoming a, a 30 or 40 year old malcontent that like fucks up their life. Maybe one or two of you will think it's a little bit differently. I don't know. I actually tried to do a good thing. You tried to do a good thing and you get fucked. It is what it is. Thanks for doing what you do. The world's complicated, but you're doing good stuff. Keep going. Trying to find, let's see. 
Thoughts on refining your skills based on the jack of all trades concept. I don't know what that means. That's too general. On what you watch a new guy in a job interview. That doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to a potentially important, personally important one, but I'm anxious. Keep up your awesome work. Uh, the, only, the only advice that I have here is advice that you're going to hate. Well, there's, okay, there's a the beauty pageant advice, which is do research on the job and ask how they handle certain situations. Again, to be clear, this has not worked for me. There's a job interview that I remember having where I, I did all this research and the person actually said, wow, nobody else has asked these questions. These are really great questions that I wish they would have asked even one year into the job and you're asking them right now. I still don't get the job. And th this was a job that literally paid worse than I pay my own fucking receptionist. I still got the client. But I, that's something that interviewers take interest in. And at the very least, fuck that interviewer and fuck that company. That's something that I would take interest in if somebody was like actually asking those types of questions that demonstrate that they're interested in solving problems. At the end of the day, you're not being hired to write code. You're not being hired to make data pipelines. You're not being hired to create a PC board. You're not being hired to take... You're being hired to solve problems. And if you show an interest in how that organization actually tries to solve problems... Um, if you take an interest in how that organization tries to solve problems, one of the things that you'll find is, yeah, you, get, you, you may get put ahead of people. In my case, I wasn't, because at the end of the day, I'm me, and like, you know, again, the idea of me getting a job is a meme. But um, one of the things that I think is really important is you showing interest in that. And the second thing is, I, I know it's easier said than done, and I, re I completely realize that this advice is going to be useless to you. But just assume that you're not getting the job. Pretend you're do doing this as a form of it. Go to that job interview as a form of entertainment. If you accept that, I honestly, I, I probably didn't get this job. Like, don't go into it thinking, I, I'm going to get the job. I'm definitely going to say all the right things. Go into it with the idea that, you know, I'm, eh, I'm probably not going to get it. it you know, I'm, I'm not, don't go in like shitting on yourself, but just don't see it as if I get it, I get it. If I don't get it, eh. Because then you're not, because then you're not gonna have this this fear. This, it's the same thing when you're leaving for the airport. This, this is an example I give people. Like, if you're leaving for the airport and you forgot your passport, and you're like, oh my god, I can't find my passport. Oh my god, I can't find my passport. Where's my passport? If I don't find my passport, I won't be able to visit. If I don't visit, I won't get to my, I won't get to see my wife. Like, you know, like I'm not gonna be able to like visit, uh, like go to this business trip, or I won't be able to visit my wife while she's sick, or whatever the hell it is. You're gonna work yourself up, and while you have all that cortisol in your head. When you have cortisol in your head, you come off differently. You're not going to do the things you would normally do. Your brain is not working right. Your fight or flight response is exceptional for helping you not get eaten by a tiger. It's absolute shit in the modern world. So what you want to do is what you need to do is you tell yourself this, and this is a really hard thing to do. If I find my passport, I will go on my trip and have a great vacation. If I do not find my passport, I will figure out how to enjoy the next week where I am. Here I will do. I will finish up some work. I'll clean up my garage and everything else. And then once you're in that mindset where you've already accepted, like, if I find it, I'll do this. If I don't find it, then here are the things I'll do. You're a little less stressed. But then when you're less stressed, you actually remember where your passport is because your memory is going to be better when your brain is not filled up with stress hormones. So here, oh, my God, what do I say to get the job? I have to get the job. If I don't get the job, I'm going to lose my house. If I don't lose, get the job, I'm not going to be able to pay my business. If I don't get the job, I won't be able to pay for you. Oh, my God. Versus if this interview goes well, I get a job. If this interview doesn't go well, eh, I'm going to go to a meetup group. Maybe see if I can meet a recruiter. Maybe, even, at the very least, even if I don't get anything from the recruiter, I'll learn how to make friends with the recruiter. And once you tell yourself that, it'll be easier to just be a little less stressed to breathe in, breathe out, and get stuff done. Not, I have to fix this board by nine. If I don't fix this board by nine, this customer's going to If I fix this board by nine, I'll call them and let them know it's done. If it doesn't work, I'll tell them I did my best. I'll get a one-star review, and I will move on with my life. It, it, it's, again, it's, it's one of these things where I feel bad giving that advice because it's so much easier said than done. It's much easier said than done. Why don't you see how many researchers are working on alternative batteries to the future? The biggest research is on IR-based Rhino batteries is the way that you can get into that research. Probably not because I'm not a scientist. I'm not an engineer. I am somebody who had a cheat to get out of high school and pass freshman chemistry, who, uh, who failed freshman chemistry in college. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to be researching batteries. I'm not, I, I, I just, I'll be honest. Like, I know where I have shit to contribute to the world, and I know where I don't. I sincerely doubt that I'm going to be able to contribute to people that are trying to develop uh, next-generation batteries. I'm pretty sure you got a fast, you know, freshman pre-calc. At the very least, you have to be able to not cheat and pass high school chemistry. Like, I, I had to cheat on my chemistry regions in high school to get a 58 out of 100. Again, 65 get this is the sad thing about New York and education standards. A 55 gets you in a, a 65 gets you an advanced regents diploma and a 55 gets you a basic regents diploma. 
All you got to do is get a 65 out of 100 in your Regents, and you get an advanced Regents diploma. I was dangerously close to getting an advanced one, but I didn't because I got a 58 out of 100 in my Chemistry Regents, which is you need to pass the Chemistry Regents to get out of high school. Uh, and I cheated like crazy to get a 58. I'm pretty sure you need to understand it. So why don't I get involved in battery research? Because I'm, I'm, I'm not that smart, man. You know, I think my, my brain works towards some stuff, but that stuff, it does not. Can you talk about self-love and caring for yourself? Uh, what? No, one sec. I put your videos on background noise on a fish store and hobbies. What size is your koi pine? It's about 9,000 gallons. Have you considered putting smaller sturgeon species in your koi pine? I have not considered that. I have adopted these fish from the person who owned the house prior to me. Uh, we had a gentleman's arrangement, which is he sells me the house, I buy it, uh, and the, it, I, you know, certain terms got accepted. And in exchange, I have to deal with uh, 500 fucking fish. But I, uh, maybe in the long term, that won't be, uh, you know, I might find out in the long term that wasn't the best of deals. Uh, yeah, self-loving and care for yourself. Uh, let's see. There are, one of the hardest things to do is realize that the way you talk about yourself and the thoughts you allow yourself to think make it easier to think the next thought. Like, it's kind of like with, with braking in your car. Like, the, more, the slower you go, the, slower, the more you slow down, the less energy you need to continue slowing down. So like, you know, going from 60 to 50, like you need this much energy, like to maybe to break, and then from 50 to 40, you need this much energy to break, from 40 to 30, you need this much energy to break. So if you continue and use the same amount of energy, you're slowing down kind of logarithmically faster rather than linearly. And the same is kind of true for your brain. Like the more you allow yourself to talk poorly about yourself, the easier it is to become exponentially or logarithmically more miserable. I'm probably using the wrong terms here, but I've already admitted I failed freshman pre-calc in college, so don't, don't, don't shit on me too much there. Uh, I'm not pre uh, and the same thing is true with how you talk about yourself. Conversely, if, you're, if you manage to block certain negative thoughts about yourself, like when something doesn't work out, rather than defaulting to that person didn't like me, and then going, okay, it's easier to go from that to he didn't like me for the same reason that other person didn't like me. That person didn't like me because they saw something in me. That person saw the same thing in me that that other person did. All people are going to see the same thing in me that all those people did. That's because I am this. Me being this is some, not something I can change. I tried to change this once, and when I tried to change that, it didn't work, which means I also can't change the thing that made these, those people do not like me. I will always be alone. Like, it's very easy to get down, go down this negative rabbit hole. And the thing is, the more you go down the negative rabbit hole, it's not like you're adding. It's not like 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. It really is like 2 squared, 4, uh, you know, where, you know, it's it, it exponentially. Like, you know, it, it's like 3, 9, um, 81. I should be able to do that faster. That's fucking embarrassing. You get the point. It, it's one of these things where when you start thinking negatively about yourself and you start talking negatively about yourself, it's not something that just goes... Lin it literally... You go to hell very, very quickly. So one of the things that I think is exceptionally important is finding the, uh, the will, the discipline, the fortitude, whatever. The, again, if you, if you need a therapist for this, you need a psychologist, you need a psychiatrist, don't listen to this fucking stupid comments. Do whatever the fuck you have to do to figure out how to deal with that shit early on because when you deal with it early on, it is so much easier than dealing with it when you get to here because it doesn't do this. It does this. And like you could see it in people that destroy themselves. Like I've had, like my family has had more than one suicide through the generations. I've known some of these people. I've watched it as it occurred. I've watched what they did to themselves. And uh, like when you see that happen to numerous different people, you can really see the way that you start here and it's so easy to completely destroy yourself. Now, I'm not saying that that's you. I'm not saying that that's going to happen to you. But just, you know, just after watching something like that, damn, he is behind. Uh, there's 1,100 people all saying shit at the same time. I'm, I'm going to be very behind in this. Yes, yeah, so I would say do what you have to do. You know, one of the things that Eli, the computer guy, said that I agree with greatly. You know, if somebody broke their arm, if somebody got shot, like you wouldn't say talk to your friend, you know, going to a doctor is bullshit. But when it comes to mental health, people will say, oh, just talk to a friend, going to a therapist is bullshit. It's, it's, it's just really fucking stupid. It's, it's like one of these, like, it's, I'll, I'll just say it. It's fucking retarded. I don't care how much trouble I get for saying it. It's fucking retarded. You, you, to, to tell people that going to a therapist for those problems or seeing somebody for it is dumb, like you wouldn't say that about anything else. Like you get hit by a car, you go to an ER. Uh, you, you know, you, yeah, you go to, um, you break your arm, you see a doctor. Maybe you see a surgeon if you broke it, uh, if you broke it, compl they completely destroyed everything. And, you know, you, you spend years talking crap about to yourself to the point where you hate your life and you hate everything in it. Maybe talk to somebody. Guess what? There are shitty MacBook repair people. 
there are shitty politicians, there are shitty doctors, there are shitty plumbers. We still hire them when we need to. I hire a plumber when I have a problem with my house because I don't want my toilet to overflow and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm going to fuck that shit up six ways to Sunday if I try to fix my own plumbing in my house. The walls will have shit coming out of them. That is not what I do. And I don't tell myself simply because there are plumbers out there that have done a bad job, I'm never going to find a plumber. Conversely, I don't think anybody should tell themselves simply because there are therapists that suck at their profession or psychologists or psychiatrists that they should never go. I just talked to a friend or just saw it. You know, like so, some of you people, listen, if you've, like there's one video I did a while back. I got to find this shit. Uh, Cause th this is a video, honestly, one of the biggest regrets I have with this video is that I tried to say it in a, I tried to, I was so afraid of doing the Casey Neistat of the telling you what to do or telling you what to think that I didn't uh, say it out loud. Uh, one of the things I really wish that I did in this video and that I regret is that I didn't uh, plug therapy there. And to be clear, when I say plug therapy, I do not mean some bullshit like I'm sponsoring BetterHelp or some fucking scam service that treats people like shit. I'm talking about like just saying whatever, whatever therapist works for you. Uh, like this video, how people waste their lives. In this video, I was responding to an email I got from somebody that very, very obviously had a horribly abusive upbringing who was, they weren't asking about dealing with child abuse. They were just asking with some shit about their career. But you could very obviously tell from that person's email and also their, their comment history that they were dealing with a lot of shit. You know, to tell somebody that spent like, to tell somebody that spent like 10 years from the age of like three years old getting abused in the worst way possible, just talk about it with a friend, you're, you're essentially leading that person down a path of failure. Like people like that, they could really use somebody good. Uh, so I would say, you know, figure out what you have to do in the early days to not shit on yourself, to not go down those negative rabbit hole thoughts because it really has exponential results. And if you are the person that has done that for a long period of time, get help. Do what you need to do. Who gives a fuck what other people think? Don't listen to what other people think if other people are telling you not to get the help that you need so that you feel better. What are two or three things that you think are cool about other countries that you wish you had in the U.S.? When I went to Dubai, I was impressed that you had a city with that population density that had almost no traffic lights. It was just all roundabouts. It was just all roundabouts. It was, and, and, and people listened to them. Like people were going 65 miles, 70 miles an hour, and they would stop at a crosswalk. It was just amazing to me. Like this idea that you could have zero traffic lights for a square, like a densely populated place, and people just fucking dealt with it, and it worked, was, in, was insane to me. Uh, to be clear, there are a lot of elements of the UAE that I'm not excited to have in the US. Don't, don't, don't you dare try to pull the bullshit misquoting there. Uh, but yeah, the, the no traffic lights was pretty fucking cool. Like, th I think this is idea in America. Like, you know, if you don't ha have traffic lights, the world would just come to an end. And there, there are other countries. I think there's some countries in Africa too, where like in, in India, where they have no traffic lights, anything like that. People are like all oh, merging in and going like 50, 60 miles an hour, and this, the, 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 you know, everything's just Gucci. It's perfect. And it's just, it's very when you see that for the first time as somebody who lived in America and was here for 30 years without really spending much time in other countries. Uh, that's a, it's a very interesting thing to see, and it's a very it's, it, and you kind of wonder, man, I want to have that here. But then you also realize if you had that here, like people, you know, I don't know. I don't know if people are ready for that level of freedom. And there's something cool about not having a single fucking traffic light. It also saves money because like even a basic ass traffic light installation is like $750,000. Even for a, a basic small thing at some basic street, every single one of those, when you think about that, three quarters of a million, three quarters of a million, and then you have the more complex ones, it's like 1.5 million for a fucking traffic light. You imagine how much money gets saved if everything was a roundabout. We could pay back the national debt if we stopped, if we didn't have, a, if we had roundabouts. Best way to get in contact with the human at Google is to call Pixel Tech Support and Pivot. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to help you if you do that, though. That's the problem. Yeah, LFP Gaming says Lewis says he loves the way Saudi Arabia is run. Listen, man, we already have people talking about the website that shall not be named and what I've, I've said and done on it, so I have, to, I have to be careful here. You have a lot of people that will go out of their way to absolutely rip and destroy the context out of anything if it means they can get a one-up and slander you. You just got to be careful. There's a lot of pieces of shit in the world. It's unfortunate. What do you think about Lockheed Martin and the various companies in the defense space and make shit that never needs to be fixed? Do they make stuff that never needs to be fixed or do they make stuff where you can only have it fixed through a contractor? Or, or I mean, they're, uh, by a contractor, I mean a contract with them. I told my rotator cuff in three places. Physical therapy sucks. The surgery and best option. Doing stem cell injection soon. Uh, my dad had to have surgery. He had three rotator cuff surgeries. He had a screw put in one shoulder, a screw put in the other, and then he had seven screws put in the other one. 
I don't really know. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. This is a DPA 4066 or a 4065 microphone. I never buy these used. I buy them. I mean, I never buy them new. I buy them used, usually with a broken end. And I'll cut the wire. I'll buy a Neutrik gold-plated 3.5 millimeter connector, a, pl a nice plug. And I'll use that to plug it into a Sennheiser interface. And then what I wind up doing is instead of paying six to $800 for the microphone, I wind up paying like 100 bucks or $150 for a damaged one. You can often find them for sale by rental companies and companies that work with Broadway because this is one of the most popular mics used in Broadway. Usually they have it on your hair. It's an omnidirectional to put on somebody's head rather than like this. They have a lot of broken ones because they'll get bent and transit. Actors will do some stupid shit, uh, you know, like even especially with Cirque du Soleil. Like if you have anybody wearing these in Cirque du Soleil, they'll, they'll get fucked six ways to Sunday just with all, the, all the, the, the usage that it gets. So I'll buy this. It'll be bent. I'll bend it back into place. I'll cut the wire. I'm also taking a gamble here because for all I know, yeah, if the wire is broken down here, I'm good. If the wire is broken up here, I'm a little bit more fucked. Um, you know, I'll buy it and I'll take a gamble on it and it's worth it to get a seven or $800 microphone for a hundred bucks. And, you know, I'll just I'll keep cutting and I'll keep soldering until I find the point where it's broken. I'll solder on a Neutrik gold-plated 3.5 millimeter plug, which you can often buy for as cheap as five to ten dollars. It's worth it to spend extra money on Neutrik. They make really good jacks, really good connectors. They make the type of stuff that lasts 30 years. That makes a really good connection, doesn't corrode or anything like that. Great stuff. And uh, I use that. I've never bought one of these new because they're insanely expensive, but they're exceptionally good quality and I like them very much. Your channel got me into repairing some of my friends' electronics. Thanks for the influence. Just basic stuff like Xbox controllers and radio, but still feel super proud. Uh, Johnny Campbell, what you're doing, and th that's the right way to get into it. You know, you start with something really small, and when you get something that you didn't think you could work on and fix, and you see it work again, you get this little kick of dopamine that just makes you so excited, and it makes it that much easier for the next success, and the next success, and the next success. And you keep building on these little successes, and it makes you happier, it makes you more proud, but above all, it gives you the confidence to try the next thing that you may have not otherwise tried. So good on you for trying something that you didn't know if you could work on. Good on you for trying something new, and best of all, good on you for congratulating yourself on your own success. And I hope you're able to continuously do that. Loose Guy is a Twitter competitor from Jack Dorsey, co-founder. I, I don't follow that shit anymore. I don't really care. Uh, I, I Listen, I, del I fucking deleted Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram just because I, admittedly, literally, because I couldn't handle my own addiction to social media back in 2019. Uh, like, and then I wind up getting, that's the thing, I, like, I had that, but then like, I wind up getting fucking drawn back into Mac Rumors and Reddit and fucking even other websites, like, but I think those websites are not, they, they don't have the same level of like, I'm not saying, uh, it's not a scientific comparison. I, I don't feel the same level of, of addiction to them that I have to the others, but deleting those websites was, was better for me in the long term. What do you think? Oh, I answered that question already. It got reposted. Let me. That way you're not stressed. I do that. Oh, cool. Knitter didn't work for a while, but works again. Knitter is a great resource. It allows you to not have to deal with any of Twitter's uh, you know, tracking cookies, anything else, or having a lot, with, with, with having have an account while simultaneously being able to read it. But at the same time, you really shouldn't be uh, reading Twitter to begin with, because like Instagram, Facebook, and anything else, it fucking rots your brain. Hello, Amanda Jean. It's been a long time since I saw you. Pleasure to see a channel regular. Also, always good to see Christoph Howard and Blue Freaker here. You let your cats out now. No, because there's a fox and he has eaten animals and left them. He has, he has fucking killed animals and left them in my yard. And my, let's just, Mr. Clinton is a street smart kitty. He would get destroyed by a fox. So I do let the, I do let the kitty out on my balcony. He's allowed to explore the balcony and they really like being up there. But I'm not going to let my cat outside. He's going to get destroyed. There's a blue heron that comes by every now and then. It's bigger than Clinton. Like, I'm going to see Oreo going doing that annoying little crying meow he does as he's in the talons of a blue heron, like fly, fly, flying away and eating, probably eating him. You know, Oreo is, Oreo is not known for his strength, his speed, or his ability to survive. So I sincerely doubt that that's a good idea. I'm, I'm, I don't think that it's, it would be a, a great idea to have Oreo on the, on the balcony. I mean, I don't, okay, I, I take it back. I, I think it, having Oreo only on the balcony is a good idea, but having him outside, that's, that's probably not a great idea. I'm probably going to wind up with, uh, with, uh, with less cats. And I like my kitty. Sometimes I like my kitty. I'm not supposed to say that. Okay, I, all, most of the time I like my kitty. But he, he needs, you know, they, they, they should stay here. You know, they, 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 have, they have foxes and they have other animals in this area. They have ra that, that, that would, they, there's uh, rattlesnakes in my grass from time to time, snakes in the grass. I'm used to snakes in the grass because I've had a lobby on behalf of Right to Repair and I've had to talk to politicians. So I have training on how to deal with snakes in the grass, but 
I don't think that my kitty does. And I, I kind of like having my kitty be alive, you know. My kitty being alive is a good thing. Why is Redacted not an F droid? Uh, li probably license shit. I've, I've argued with my boss and other people about the license shit. Uh, I mean, I'm just kind of tired of arguing about that stuff. Um, I personally don't, like, I get what they're trying to do. I really do. Like, I respect it. Like, the idea that, uh, you know, here, here is the software. It has no DRM. You can literally use it for free without paying, and everything will work. It does not track you. Um, but we want the exclusive right to be able to commercialize it. We want the exclusive right to be able to make money off of it. We are spending over half a million to build this. We are making it available for free. All we want is the exclusive right to monetize that shit. I get it. I get it. I personally don't believe that the, the challenges that we may have as an organization going forward are, go, are challenges based on the license we use. I think there are a million reasons for something like this to fail, but, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, it, it does kind of limit the scope of where things can be shared, and it may turn off certain people, but I don't know. I do what I can. The earlier videos are just as valid today. Which earlier you're talking about? I'm sorry. I'm so behind in chat that I didn't see that. Can we get more cat videos on the main channel? I'm sorry that you've been busy with planning a funeral. Usually if you're the one planning it, I imagine that you're, you're sad that the person has gone away. So my apologies. It sucks to lose people that you care about. It's no fun. Why do batteries, why do laptop batteries go flat to zero if you leave it in storage for five months? Most likely because you're not shutting it down, you're putting it into a suspend mode. Even if the laptop is in an S4 state, it's still using power. Uh, you want the laptop to be in an even lower state, like G3 Hot or AON, or maybe S5, but like even in S5, you're technically using, you want the laptop to be completely off. But even when the laptop is in a G3 Hot state, it is still using power. It's using less power, but like the RTC circuit is still being powered. The RTC circuit is still being powered by the battery. In MacBook, you know, the S5 power rail is still being power powered even when you turn it off. It, that, that does draw amperage. Those, those circuits are working. You know, get, it's, it's not taking a bunch of power, but it is using power. You are always using power while the battery is in the laptop. If you're going to store the laptop, what I would suggest doing is discharge the battery to around 70 to 80% and unplug the battery or take the battery out. Don't let the battery sit at 100%. That's not going to be great for it. Don't let the battery sit at 0 to 10%. That's also not going to be great for it. You're going to ruin the health of the battery that way. If you're not going to use your laptop for a long period of time, same thing for a cell phone, what I would suggest doing is take the battery out and leave it in that 70 to 80% area. That's, the, you know, that's one of the sweet spots where you're not going to have to worry about it. XMPP or Matrix. Um... I don't particularly care either way, to be honest with you. Matrix can be slow and annoying, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's, it's, just, it's not something that I've ever spent time thinking about, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Ackerman. Therapy is great. It's not easy, though, and you still have to be a person to put an effort to make the change. Yeah, a, a big part of it is a lot of people are not ready to be honest with themselves. I think if you, if you are going to do something like therapy, something that really helps is having a journal where you just write 100% honestly. Like, I think this is what I thought in this area. Here's why I really think I did this. Here's, one of, here's some of the things that I think may have contributed. Like, if you're as honest as possible when you write to yourself, it'll make it a lot easier to, to deal with a therapist if you ever decide to go to a therapist later. You know, you don't have to go to a therapist, but I think one of the things that's good about journaling is it makes it easier to go to a therapist at a later point and makes it easier for you to face a lot of the shit that you have to face if you do decide to do it. You don't have to decide to do it, but if you do decide to go to a therapist and you have years and years of journaling where you've been as honest with yourself as possible with the understanding that nobody in the world will read this besides me, I don't have to lie for anybody. I don't have to look good for anybody. It, it helps you have a positive outcome. Well, your RAM is only going to be powered up, I believe, in an S3 state. Um, but it's not going to be powered up in an S5 or a G3 hot state. But if it's a lot, let's be real. Most people close their, when they turn off their laptops, they just close the lid. So you're, you're still in an S3 state. You're still probably powered on quite a bit. But even in a G3 hot state, you're still using a lot. You're still using a fair amount of power. I don't even know if that's the words they use anymore. Like, the, you know, kids these days, they don't have G3 hot states. They have SLPDDR and Awake and Sleep 2, and S2, and um, AON. You know, I'm showing my age by, not, by, by using the Intel Series 9 PCH power states. Back in my day, we had, I, we had Cougar Point PCHs. We had Panther Point PCHs and Ivory Bridge cores. Like I'm, I'm, I'm out of touch. I'm out of touch. Yeah, I don't know, Christoph. I'm not really as invested in the chat space anymore. I feel bad saying that, but it just comes, like, the amount of chats that I see in there that, like, I learn something from or I'm excited to watch versus the amount of, like, moderation and shit it takes. It is. 
Can I upgrade a 2012 MacBook A1278 display? No, you can't. If you had a 2008 A1278, you could replace your LP133WX2 TLC1 or C2 with an LP133WX3 TLA1 through 6, B133EW04, B133EW07, or LP132WX2, TLG1, G2, G5, or G6. Each one of those screens would be considered an upgrade, as well as an LTN133 AT09. Those would all be cross compatible because the LP133WX2 TLC2, not GL, GL, TLG, TLC series, had really bad black levels. All these screens are cross compatible, but the same resolution. After 2008, around early 2009, with the advent of the A202530 board, A1278 MacBooks, those machines, when they switched to the Pro, stopped using the LP133WX2 TLC1 and C2 that had horrible black levels. So if you have anything, from 2009 to 2012 that's not the original A1278 non-pro MacBook, you have a good screen already and there's no real upgrading to be done. If you have one of the originals, the A1278 that has the split bag where the battery comes out where it's not pro, it doesn't have a, uh, the doesn't have the, the FireWire 800 port and uses an LP133WX2 CLC1 or C2, you can indeed upgrade your screen. It will be cross-compatible and it will look better. But all the other screens, the B133EW04, B133EW07 from AU Optronics, Samsung LTN133 AT09, LG LP133WX3 TLA1, 2, 5, and 6, along with the LP133WX2 TLG1, 2, 5, and 6. The, TL, the G series, by the way, was only used in the A1342 MacBooks, but it is technically cross-compatible with the Pros. All of those have equal image quality, equal black levels, equally good color gamut, so you don't have anything to upgrade. You want to talk about skills that don't translate to another fucking industry? Yeah, I ran a supply company where I knew every cross-compatible screen for every computer. LP156WH2 TLQ2 is compatible with N156B6LOB, but not compatible with N156B3LOB, which is fluorescent, not LED. Both of those screens can be compatible with an Acer 5517, because Acer 5517 was one of the few laptops in 2010 that used the same model number, but used fluorescent in the early days and LED in the later days. Both of those screens are compatible with the AU Optronics B156XW02V6. I could go on forever. There were 2,600 screens that are cross-compatible with the N156B6LOB. I remember every fucking model. Do you want to talk about skill sets and time that I spent in industries that do not translate to other industries? <sighs> I spent way too much time on shit that made no money. Way too much time on shit that... I agree with, yes, random 3D print and edits. Do you think the defense equipment should be able to be fixed by third parties? Instead of going back to Lockheed, who makes a large quote because it's taxpayer dollars spending anyways. Yes, I do. I also believe that the military is not going to choose people that are not qualified to fix these products. I have a feeling that when you're dealing with stuff like that, there are people that are in the Army, in the Navy, in the Marine Corps, in the Air Force, that they're going to vet the third-party repair services they use and make damn sure they know what the fuck they're doing. Um, GitLab or GitHub? Would you, where which would you prefer to host your code repos? I just used GitHub because I wasn't really aware of GitLab splitting off and being a little bit more open. I'm not even remotely close to the point in my journey where that's something I care about. Right now, I'm focused on like being able to write code that doesn't suck balls. I think I have a pretty decent stuff going for my AI project so far. I'm, I'm on stage one of it. You know, stage two is going to be training an LLM. Stage three is going to be uh, you know getting it to continuously grab data via a pipeline rather than just ingesting it manually and using that to train a model. I got a lot of work to do before I can get into the I'm using GitHub instead of GitLab or any of that type of shit. First thing I want to do is get code that actually doesn't suck. I, I'm you know I'm getting there. Like my code that grabs everything from my for my code that is uh, responsible responsible for annotating and defining everything. It does pre-compile the regex rather than do it on the fly. It is actually multi-threaded now, so it's not, you know, it doesn't take eight fucking hours to annotate my threads. I can get it done if I run on my other computer in 20 minutes. Like, I'm, I'm you know, I'm learning. It's getting somewhere. You know, it's just, uh, you know, it's getting somewhere. Like, I, I still kind of, it, it's nothing to be, you know, it's nothing to, to brag about just yet, but, you know, neither was my board repair in 2009. That's an understatement there. Neither... Oh, my God. Let's see. Let's see. Used to the board repair. On a rare occasion, if it's a cock ring. Can you show us what you did on that mic? Uh, not really, because I already already soldered it. Go back to your battery point. What do you think about university-ran solar car teams which try to make battery-powered solar energy vehicles that watch companies like Tesla and battery race? Wait, wait, that, which try to 
make battery powered solar energy vehicles that companies like Tesla make and race. I don't, that sentence is a little confusing to me, so unfortunately I don't understand the question. That's also likely because I overdosed on caffeine because I'm a pussy that can only handle three cups of, co- of coffee before my brain explodes and I've been streaming for four hours. But that sentence is a little confusing to me. I don't kind of understand the sentence. Can you trap the fox? Uh, no, the fox will probably eat me if I try to do that. Pretty sure that the fox will eat me if I try to do that. Jared Carson, no, you cannot ask that question. Stop trying to stalk people that I haven't gone out with for two years. Stop being obsessed with other people's personal lives. It's not healthy. Everything is a subscription these days. When a MacBook subscription, just one ninety nine a month. Give it time. Give it time. I know they were talking about potentially like iPhone as a service several years back, but that was just like a very small meme. Would you put Asperger in a resume? No, I would not. Would you put in a resume? Here are the problems I know how to solve. Here's how I've put my skills to use, solving a problem for another company. Here is how solving those problems for that company uh, allowed them to advance and have positive outcomes. What I know how to do, where I've applied it, how, that out, how applying those skills improved something at another company or allowed them to get to a result that was positive for them and their customers. That's what belongs in a resume. Your personal problems, the way your mind works, whether or not you're not neurotypical, leave that shit out of the resume, in my opinion. It's not about whether it's good or bad. It's just, in my opinion, fundamentally, it does not belong there. And robotics is so hot right now. Seems so. Can you explain the deal you have with Fudo? I cannot. What is your job? I don't know. Seems you have a lot of freedom to do what you want. Don't know what to tell you there. I don't have much to explain. I don't have much to say. What happened to his shoulders? I'm wearing a shirt that I really should have ironed a long time ago. Access IT funded one. I always mix up euro and pound and I make people mad. And I always forget what they look like. I think that's a euro. Pound is the one with one line, euro is the one with two, right? Soren mentioned you on today's Sunday show. What is your relationship with this tech wizard? I don't have a relationship with him other than I've seen some of his content. I appreciate that he teaches other people how to get into his industry. He's not afraid of showing people how to do what he does, which means that he has confidence in himself and which also means that he's one of the few people that actually believes in helping the next generation, So, which I have a high level of respect for. I don't just respect Soren for having a high level of technical mastery in his field. I don't just respect him because he sees what he does as a craft rather than just a job. He sees it as something to continuously improve at. But I also respect him because at the end of the day, most people nowadays, they just don't want to, they don't want to pave the path for the, ne- for the next generation. They don't want to help people follow their path to success. They, they climb the ladder and then they, 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 they climb the ladder and then they just pull up the rope or let it, light it on fire. And people like Soren are the type of people that don't pull up the ladder. They want to throw the ladder down even further. They want to throw down other ladders. They want to make it easier to climb the ladders. They want to gra- uh, you know, give you a hand up. So people like him, in my opinion, are, uh, are people to be looked up to. They're people to be uh, supported. And I have a lot of respect for what Soren does in his industry. And I have a lot of respect not just for what he does in his industry, not just for the fact that he sees what he does as a craft to continuously become better at rather than just the people that just see the shit as just the paycheck. But I also respect him a lot because he's trying to, you know, he's actually trying to do good for the world and like really get people to know what he does. Again, most people, they don't believe in training. Like you show up to the job, you have a fucking master's degree or a bachelor's degree with eight years of experience know these 15 different skills and you get paid 40k it's like you know like th- that should su- there's a very th- a lot of people are, make demands a lot of people will make demands of all the shit that you have to know and all the hoops that you have to jump through but there's not a lot of people out there that are actually trying to throw down the ladder and make it accessible and he is and it's, he's not doing it and they're like buy my course shit here's a little bit of information and if you want the information that actually matters that doesn't make this an advertisement but makes this educational you gotta give me 5,000 like, he really puts all the information out there and uh, you know that's a respectable thing to do I have a lot of respect for Soren and I hope him the best of success in life and his business but he doesn't need me to wish him the best of success in life and his business he's probably already there and you can tell by the way that he does his work he's probably already there you know good on him he's a good dude can you explain the deal you have with Futo what is your job what is I don't know I'll explain it to you and I can explain it to myself um for making matrix faster I'd suggest using a different home server um I don't really care I'm sorry I know that you're trying to help Christoph Howard I just I know I know I'm sorry I'm not supposed to say that out loud I'm not supposed to I just don't care 
Do you have any computer recommendations? Uh, not really right now. You can get a 10-year-old ThinkPad. You'll be happy. Or build your own. What's your take on Asus laptops for the gaming line? Don't really know much about them. No hate, but the rocking chair makes me dizzy. That's because you're staying still. If you were rocking in sync with my rocking chair, you would not feel dizzy. What smartphone you recommend? They all suck balls. Can't tell you there. You either get something that's filled with and you either you either buy in something where you can't install you can't install an operating system of your choice and can't install applications of your choice. You're buying something that probably has a bunch of Google spyware on it, or you're buying something where you can install Lineage, Calyx, or Graphene, but you don't have a real fucking radio because they're too stubborn to use Qualcomm radios that actually work. Like one way or the other, you're buying an expensive piece of shit, in my opinion. It's just, eh. Dudes, you can wrap with screen models. Yes, I can. The audio is mute. Is it? I think that was when I went downstairs to get something. There, clarify on what I asked earlier. There are college teams creating solar-powered feeding into a battery that powers the car electric vehicles. How do you feel about such teams creating such things? I don't feel about it one way or the other. I hope they're successful in what they produce, and best of luck to them. But I don't... Like when you say feel, like, do I, am I angry? Am I jealous? Am I sad? Am I happy? I, 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 emotion doesn't come to mind when I hear about that. It's just, you know, they're, they're doing an experiment, and God bless them. I hope it works, and I hope they're happy with whatever they produce, and I hope they learn something along the way. Uh, I'm hyped over the new Firefox Relays feature. I've been using a password manager for a long time. Generate unique random passwords. Huh. But the person can talk about disabilities or mental illnesses. Huh? I don't understand what you're saying, what you're asking, Misha. I don't get it. I don't, if you ask or say something that's out of context in the chat, I'm not going to remember because there's too many conversations going on at the same time. You're like Rain Man. When it, oh, when it comes to screens, absolutely. Screen model numbers, there's, that's, listen, there's so many things that I could learn and keep in my brain that would make me more valuable to society, more hireable, better at running my business, better at engaging with the people that I care about in life. That could be what's in my brain. Or I could have screen model numbers that fit into laptops that have been obsolete for 15 years. What, what does my brain choose to hold on to? The lighting in the video has gotten a lot better since the beginning, I guess because the sun has kind of moved around here. I really wish you could see the view out about a uh, view outside from here. It's pretty nice. I like it. It's a nice view. Uh, I have used Arch and Ubuntu back and forth. Oh, my dad had a lot of accidents in the workplace. He just, he slipped on some chemical. There was some cleaning chemical that wound up getting like discontinued if the company got sued out of, uh, sued into oblivion. It's like, it's this thing that you use to clean the floor, but it essentially, it, it makes the floor so slippery and it stays there long afterwards that everybody that walks over it like trips, but not like normally trips, like violently trips and sm smashes themselves. There was that. He wound up tripping on the Staten Island Ferry at one point. Uh, and like smashed his shoulder against something. There was something else. Also, he was a chef. So even after he got his injury, he would cook for like 15 hours a day. Like his shift, he, got, he left the house at four, at four in the morning. He got to work at five in the morning and he would get home at nine or 10 o'clock at night. And it was like, like when you're a chef, you're literally doing this rapidly all day. Especially, you know, he was, the, he was one of the, I think he was the first cook at the Plaza Hotel. He worked at Club Quarters in Midtown. He worked at the Plaza Hotel for a while. He was first cook there. He would have to cook lunch for like 107 people and he'd have one assistant. You know how hard that is? Going into work to do that shift for 12 to 15 hours a day when you're one of the only people in the kitchen, you got to cook for over 100 people and you're by yourself and you smash your shoulder into something and instead of taking the time to heal... You're doing this, like, cutting like a fucking crazy person. You know, he fucked his shoulders good, and he needed to have a lot of surgery on both his knees and his shoulders. He also didn't, you know, the good, he didn't have good joints to begin with, but having injury from falling and smashing shit combined with not taking any time off and taking this repetitive motion, standing all day, moving back and forth, back and forth all day uh, on your legs, and then, you know, like all the motion, repetitive motions you have to make that use your shoulder a lot when cooking, he just kind of... He, he kind of fucked his joints there big time. So he wound up having like six or seven different surgeries on his 
shoulders for his rotator cuff. He wound up getting screws in his rotator cuff, and he also wound up having uh, his knees replaced at one point after he had so many surgeries on them. He just kind of gave up on repair and went to part replacement, and unfortunately, the replacements weren't OEM. He actually had the surgeon that built and engineered the knee replacement. Like, the person that invented it was the one that put it inside of him, so he didn't get OEM knees from another dead person. He got, like, you know, some fake shit put in there, but he did have it put in by the, by the person that made it, so it's semi-unauthorized repair. You know, we in the Rossman family strongly believe in unauthorized repair and being able to use aftermarket parts. See, if, if Apple, like if, if Apple, if Tim Cook were God, my dad's knees would be fucking paired and serialized to his body. If he wanted to get him replaced, he wouldn't be able to. He'd just have to fucking get amputated and walk around with stumps for the rest of his life instead of being able to have the rest of his leg. That's why you should be happy that Tim Cook isn't God, and that's why you should be happy that Apple doesn't work in the medical industry. What do you think of the Gemini, Google's Gemini AI model? Well, you can watch my most recent video to see what I think of that. I think that their, their AI model may give more honest answers to certain questions than their, than the, the, I think Gemini gives more honest answers than their staff and their executives. And I'll leave it at that. You can watch the last video if you want to see what I think of it. Spinning facts in your therapist video. Thank you for putting that out there. People need to hear it. Thank you very much for being open to listen. It just kills me. Like, you know, somebody breaks their arm, oh, go, you got to go to the doctor. Somebody breaks their brain, oh, fuck you. You know, talk to your friend. Walk it off. Dust it off. Like, somebody has eight, like 20 years of fucking abuse. Oh, yeah, just talk to a friend. It's just, it's just, it's, it's bullshit people tell themselves. It, it, there's a reason that, you know, medical, um, there, there is a reason that there's as much mental health issues in America, and a big part of it is the way that we see it. The way the the, what the the bad advice that we give each other based on the culture we have around mental health. I gotta say, this is a damn good camera angle and damn good lighting in this area. I can use a, I can use ISO 500 on this camera, and still get fairly good results. And if I I may, I may just move it to where I do all my videos back here. I'm a little sad that my cat doesn't want to come over here anymore. I made the mistake of when I moved of taking a piece of furniture out of my closet, out of my garage and putting it in here that they've always loved, so now the cat doesn't spend any time here because they have a more comfortable space. You're not going to see him anymore. Makes you care about privacy. My desire to have it for myself. I mean, tell me the most embarrassing thing that happened in your life. Oh, you don't want to do that? Yeah, exactly. Listen, give me the password to your bank account. Why not? Anytime somebody asks, why does privacy matter? Just ask them. You could ask a couple of questions. Just ask them a couple of questions, and they usually... You'll understand it. Have you seen the fake JBL speakers that used to steal vehicles via headlight can connection? I have not, but dear God, that's something else. Why the fuck are vehicle speakers talking on a CAN bus? Am I allowed to ask that? Can I ask that? Like, why the fuck is a speaker on a CAN bus? A speaker should have two connections. Positive, negative. For AC voltage from an amplifier. That's it. Like, that's it. A speaker should have nothing else. Positive, negative terminal. That's it. And a little, a little thing on it that gives you the impedance of the speaker so you know what you can hook up in parallel or series and whether or not your amplifier can handle it. I think your opinion on Saget being a DLC character might be a little misinformed. Fighting games have always had DLC characters, even in the arcade cabinet days. No, 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 no. I paid for Street Fighter 4, I got my characters. I paid for Street Fighter Alpha 3, I got my characters. I paid for Street Fighter 5, and they wanted me to pay for Sagat. No, thank you. Now, granted, you could say, well, Lois, you don't actually have to pay for it. That's misinformation. You could actually play through the entire game and then unlock the character. No, 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 no. Street Fighter 3, I got him. Street Fighter 4, I got him. Street Fighter 5, you wanted to get me to pay for him. Fuck you. I paid for the game once. F off. Now, you could say there's a lot of other games and a lot of other people that have done it. I don't care if other people did it. I don't care if other people are trying to do it. It still sucks. <sighs> it's not real... Blue, it's not a real Bluetooth JBL speaker. It's just a housing that holds electronics that they're able to plug into the CAN connection and tell them the car computer to unlock. Oh, man, that's something else. Jesus Christ. You can't trust anybody anymore. I think I discovered a certain budget LCD Samsung budget LCD Samsung TV back panels have a lifespan of about two years. Average runtime is confirmed. Uh, I, I wonder how much of this is companies going out of their way to do that versus just people choosing to buy cheap shit. 
you know, I, I really do think a lot of it is people choosing to go out of their way and buy. Like, listen, it's kind of, there's a race to the bottom. I, I, I had a few rants about that in the beginning of the video already, so I'm not going to continue to, I'm not going to continue to rehash it, but. Do you have a desire to engineer musical recordings again? No. I wasn't really good at it. You know, there's doing what you're passionate at and there's doing what you're good at. And for me, I become passionate about doing the things that I'm good at, seeing that I'm adding value to society. A lot of my feeling of, uh, you know, confidence, worth, feeling that like I'm doing the right things comes from when I'm able to do good things for society. I'm able to help people. I'm able to see the results of my work and know that in some small way, shape, or form, the world is a little bit better because of me. It's not really... Like, uh, let's just say that, that that was not what I was doing when I would record music. There are other people that do that when they're recording engineers, you know, the people that, are, that facilitate the creation of good music, and I feel like I just kind of got in the way there because it just wasn't my skill set. It wasn't what I was good at. It wasn't what I... Like, it, it wasn't for me. Have you tried a Fairphone? No. I asked about the Fairphone 5. I did not want a sponsorship. I did not want them to send me a free review sample. I wanted to pay the full price. The only problem is that I can't do that because they don't have one that works in the U.S. In my, on any of the carriers here yet. Like, what are your thoughts on AI? Is it BS or a myth or should we be worried? That's too general a question. It's kind of like asking what do you think of computers. There's a lot of really cool areas where I'm happy to use AI. A lot of people have said, listen, I'd feel differently about it if people were trying to You'd feel differently if people were trying to train AI to do what you do for free. It's like, I'm honestly running and doing that right now. I'm putting work in. I'm like, I learned a lot of Python. I, you know, I brushed up on all the MySQL that I haven't used for years. And I'm doing my best to try to, to do all the shit I can to teach a large language model how to fix MacBook boards. Like, I've been trying to teach people for many years on my channel, on my wiki. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to use it to see if I can replace myself. If I can get an LLM, if I can get any of these things to fix boards better than they car better than the Google Bard, ChatGPT even for, they suck balls at board repair. They're just fucking bad at it. If I can get this model to answer questions better than me, I will be the happiest man on earth. I think that's cool. I think that's progress. Uh, you know, now a lot of people will... Um, a lot of people will say that they're bad. You should just search, read a book. LLMs are for idiots. You can find the stuff elsewhere. They get stuff wrong. You know what? Yeah, sometimes they do get things wrong. You know who else gets shit wrong? Google. You know how many times I fucking search for an issue that I had and I get shown 50 goddamn threads that have nothing to do with what I'm talking about? Nothing. Not even close. I'll take AI get being confident in something it gets wrong if it means that it at least understands my fucking question half the time. Like, I didn't even notice until I started using a lot of these models that there's a skill that I've, that I've honed over the years of just being able to tell which result at a glance before my brain even processes the information and starts to read it consciously, which search results have nothing to do with answering my question. Like, that's a skill that I've acquired over 25 years of using the internet that I don't... Like, I think that at some point, that's a skill that the next generation is not going to have because they don't need it. There's a lot of potential with this. Yeah, does it get stuff wrong? Yes, it does. It gets stuff wrong in my industry. And I want to try to get, I want to try to fix that by figuring out how to get, cause it to get stuff right as often as possible uh, by training open models, not chat GPT and Google Bard bullshit. I do want to train an open source model to kind of do this stuff. What do you think of the pros to California build a governed vehicle speeds to GPS location? Uh, I haven't read about it. I'll be honest. I haven't read about it, so I'm going to give you some biased bullshit because I don't really know. Uh, I don't understand it, uh, so I'm probably going to give you an answer that's bullshit. I haven't read it. For all I know, this isn't even true, but yeah, I would cringe at that stuff. There are reasons that people break the law at times when it makes sense to. If there's somebody around me that's doing shit that's dangerous and weaving around... I might cause my, I might be willing to go 20 miles an hour over the speed limit so that I can get the fuck away from them. If there's somebody that's near me that has stuff in their truck that <clears throat> is going five miles an hour over the speed limit and they have not properly secured everything in the bed of their vehicle, not that that ever happens in Texas in I-35. Look at all the mattresses on the side of I-35. They have, they have so much shit on the side of it that just was not properly uh, put in the bed of a truck. You know, I respect, I respect the hell out of truck owners that actually properly secure things in the bed of their truck when they travel, and a lot of truck owners do. 
but let's be real. There are some that don't. If they're going five or 10 over the speed limit and they're near me and I see that shit, I'm not having a mattress go through my fucking windshield. I will go 20 over if I need to pass them as soon as possible to get the fuck away from them because I want to be safe. There are times where you may want to go over the speed limit. There are times where there's legitimate reasons to for a short period of time. And the idea that I'm going to be logged and tracked in that way, maybe my car will be limited so I can't go over it. No, thank you. Not, not, not with it. Not with it at all. Can you read my comment above? No, I can't. If you post your comment, I'll read it. If you ask me to read it, I will not. There are over 1,000 people in this chat. I'm trying to answer 1,000 fucking chats at once. Don't, don't make it harder by asking shit over and over again. If you say, can, you, can I read my comments? I, read, I just read your comment. Can you please reply to my comment? I just did. There you go. I just did. You got to reply. I'm sorry. I'm salty. There's so many people talking at the same time. It's impossible. I can't help you. I can read the comment that I read. But if you a read, ask a comment, asking me to read a comment, and you, you get what you get. Uh, let's see. If you want to ask a question, ask a question. Don't ask to ask. Don't ask me to read. Uh, let's see. I'm amazed that you can recount those letters and numbers. Yes. I definitely have memorized way too many letters and numbers that are completely irrelevant. What smartphone would you recommend? I answered that question over and over again. I'm done answering that one for the stream. They all suck. Uh, if you want a phone that runs quickly and don't care about freedom, buy an iPhone. If you want a phone where you can install applications of your choice, but you don't care about Google spyware or Samsung spyware or the inability to install an uh, operating system of your choice, you can buy uh, Samsung if you want something that's cheap and don't care about the inability to install an operating system of your choice, Google spyware and everything else, you can buy a Motorola. And if you want to buy a phone where you can install an operating system of your choice, get rid of all the Google spyware, get rid of all the crap, use Calyx, Graphene, or Lineage, but you have a device that is essentially doesn't have a real radio where... You, you lose your fucking three bars because you walked under a tree, you can buy a Pixel. At the end of the day, you're, most of the phones out there are kind of pieces of shit at this point. Similar to voting in a presidential election, I am not choosing what I am proud of. I am cringing and puking in my mouth as I pull the lever on what I think is the least shitty based on my personal preferences. I'm not going to tell you what you should get. You should look into the choices and get what's best for you. You preaching right repairs literally saved me thousands of dollars by repairing my own phones or computers. Thank you for opening my eyes. Electronics repair used to tell us a lot of things. That's really cool. Thank you. I've always tried to plant a seed that I may not, uh, for a tree that I may not get to sit in the shade of, and I'm glad to see that that's happening. Turn on X Compose. Uh -huh. I don't use Wayland. Set a dead key for Compose, and you can make special symbols. I don't know why I want to do that. I don't need any special symbols. I just type in English usually. I just use my normal A I just do my ABCs and my numbers and occasionally some punctuation. Wayland is a mess for certain things. There's a scummy local company, but it's the only affordable one here that has planned obsolescence for the headphones. All of them have issues when adjusting volume. How do I fix it? Uh, don't buy them. Buy somebody else's headphones, if possible. And let people know what they're doing so that other people, if they have the, to be clear, don't tell people not to buy something. Simply say, this is the experience I had. Here's why I think it's, and here's how it affected me. You don't tell people what to do. Share your experiences and let other people that share your values or that didn't even realize they shared your values until you shared your experience have the option to make a decision for themselves. Hot take, Rossman is right about the Street Fighter stuff. Okay, you know what? I don't usually order food because I'm a cheap fuck. However, however, seeing as I have been streaming for five, almost five hours, I will give myself the luxury of grabbing something to eat because a kitty has just shown up. Look at this, by the way, the laptop is blocking the kitty. You see the kitty? Isn't he cute? Um, it's actually the most adorable cat in the world. L look at this little guy. He is literally the cutest animal I have ever seen. How long do you think before you can only own cat by subscription? I do not own my cat or rent my cat. My cat owns me. If he wants to poop in the box, he poops in the box. If he wants to poop outside the box, he poops outside the box. Um, you know, my, I do not have any ownership over this creature. This cre you know, if he wants pets, he gets pets. If he wants to wake me up at 3 in the morning because he's hungry, 
He puts his claws on my neck and just slow, kneads with a little bit more claw each time until I pay attention to him. He is who he is, and he, yeah, he, my kitty, like, this is his house. Like, I, I paid for it. I paid for this house. I bought it. I paid the property tax, but at the end, just because I, just because I paid for it doesn't mean I own it. You know, for all I know, the fucking property tax is going to him. He is, this kitty is, um, yeah. I don't really know what to tell you there. This cat is not... He's not mine. You don't own a cat. You never really own a cat. The cat owns you. My cat owns me. All right, I admittedly, I, I got something that I usually don't get. A little bit more carbs than usual, a little bit more sauce than usual. I usually try to stay off of that, but I'm, do, I'm cheating today. Uh, the guilt, the guilt is killing me. It's worth it, though. Uh, who is that sworn technician you have referenced earlier? I don't know what you mean by sworn. I don't think... What is the name of Sworn guy that Lewis referenced? Uh, there's no such thing as Sworn. Oh, Sorin, S-O-R-I-N. Yeah, he's a cool dude. He, he has videos fixing boards. He does good work for his customers, and he tries to teach people. He's a cool dude. S-O-R-I-N, not Sworn. S-O-R-I-N. Uh, I'll link his channel, and I'll pin it. Give me one sec. Let me just find it. Of course, as I say, give me one second. I get a fuck. For the oh, tip, make the girl a dude happy. You know what? I, I will. I will try to make. Thank you. Uh, Soren. I'm going to link his channel and I'm going to pin it in the comments here because he's a good dude. He, he should get more view. He should get higher viewership than he gets. Let me see if I can help him get that viewership. The best. Okay, I'm going to leave a message and I'm going to pin it. Again, I don't have a relationship, not because, it's not because I don't like him, it's just because I'm fundamentally antisocial. I, I really, I very much so kind of keep to myself, I keep to my own corner, and I do my own shit. Um, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to get better with that, because I haven't usually kept, I haven't kept up with the uh, friends that, uh, that, that I've valued in life as much as I should have and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get better with that in my mid to late 30s as I try to stop being as much of a workaholic. I don't have anything against him that's not worth really, it, but it's just, I don't, I, it's just same, same as him with them as anybody else. I just don't talk to people up. Uh, I run, okay, I take them back. I do talk a lot, to, pe a lot uh, to other people at work, but not outside. Are you ever going back to New Hampshire? Meetup, that was a great time. You know, it's really weird because I moved there in December of 2021. And I lived there, you know, because I had an apartment there from December of 2021 to mid-2022. And then I moved to Texas in August 1st, 2022. I've lived in Texas for almost two years now. I first came here to visit in June. And... I really traveled a lot of the country in the beginning of 2022. So even though I like I had an apartment in New Hampshire and I lived there, I really spent a lot of like I traveled to Texas, I traveled to Dubai, I drove around the entire country, I went to Florida, went to Tennessee, uh, you know, went to the South. I, I went all over the place. It's weird. I only spent a short period of time in New Hampshire, but for some reason, my I feel like that's where I want to retire to. That I feel like living in Texas, buying a house in Texas, having a business based in Texas, having a job in Texas, the entire life that I'm building here is just what I'm doing until I go back to my home, which is New Hampshire. I can't tell you exactly what it is. I don't know if it's the scenery. I don't know if it's the people. I don't know if it's the nature. I don't know if it's the peace. Or maybe it's just the, the, the idealized image that I have of it because I saw that as my place to escape to before, you know, when I really wanted to leave New York, before I started checking other people, uh, I mean, checking other places. But I, I don't know exactly what it is, but I, I really see New Hampshire as kind of like a home that I want to go back to, and I miss it a lot. And I do want to go. I, there's this one little part of Walpole. I, you know, it's on the live channel. It's a stream that I did in September or October of 20. It was a 360 video, like one of those GoPro 360 videos. And I did the video in September, I think, September of 2021. And I was just driving around, and I came up to this gorgeous lake in the middle of nowhere in Walpole. And I want to go back there. I, I really do. Like, it's it's just gorgeous. Where's my framework? My framework is sitting right over there on that stand. I kind of like the... I, I miss the track point. And I also, I can't edit video on that in Linux because 
DaVinci Resolve, which is the only editing software that I find to be acceptable because it doesn't crash. And it also, it's the only Linux video editing software that's not, that's not garbage because I'm like the fact that you can't even use audio plugins on everything else in 2024 is just, it's just sad. Like you had that functionality in video editors back in fucking 1999. Anyway, uh, it, with Linux, DaVinci Resolve only works if you have a dedicated GPU. In Windows, you can use the integrated Intel Iris, but in Linux, you can't. So I'm kind of stuck like, using Windows or not being able to edit. Or, and I also kind of like the track point. So I have that there. That laptop has Windows on it for when I need to boot up into Windows to configure my mini DSP, to program my bike and stuff like that. But since I got this back, since I virtualized all the servers that I had in my closet, which were all running on laptops, I kind of have it back and I'm able to use it. I missed this little track point over here. This thing, not having this killed me. Like, I can't use this in Linux. This doesn't, like, there's no palm rejection in Linux. Aside from the fact that these tra the trackpads in all laptops beside Apple, I hate saying it. I hate admitting it. Apple does trackpads better than everybody else. Don't tell anybody I said that. Apple does trackpads millions of times better than everybody else. PC trackpads suck dick. Uh, Apple, uh, outside of that, when you add Linux on top of shitty PC trackpad, useless. Track point. Turn the shit off in the BIOS. Never fucking use it use this. The best part about the track point is this. You can type, so like, I can type, watch this, I can type over here, watch my palms, they don't move, and I can move the mouse. If you have a trackpad, I type, and then I have to do this, and I have to do this, and I have to do this. If I don't have to do this, like, listen, listen, if I wanted to do this while I was using my computer, I would just jerk off all day, because like, well, that, that, that's what you're doing. Like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, use that hand motion all day and I have to use that for other shit but in all seriousness I like having an efficient setup I like having a track point I like not having to move my palms back and forth all the time and above all I don't have to worry about palm rejection being a meme in XFC because that's what it is I could get palm rejection if I use GNOME or Unity but then I'm using GNOME or Unity and I'm going to hate my life almost as much as I would if I was using Windows almost as much as I would if I was using a Mac I don't want to use GNOME or Windows I want to use XFCE I want to use XFCE and I want to deal with palm rejection I want to deal, I want to turn that shit off. Trackpads are a horrible, horrible interface. They should be removed from the face of the earth. They should be eradicated from every laptop on the planet. Give me a pointing stick any day. Pointing stick is the way to use a laptop. Don't, like, no, seriously, like, what? Like, I watch people use lap, normal laptops. Uh, uh, like, it looks like they're jerking off. It, it, it looks like they're jerking off just from the motion of using the trackpad to the keyboard. I want to keep my hands like this. I don't want to spend my day looking like I'm a fucking wanker. Because I don't mean that in, as an insult. I mean that in a, in a literal meaning of the word. Like, if you're moving your hand back and forth in two-inch increments back like this all day, you know, again, it's just not something I feel like doing. I, I like using my track point. I love this thing. I'm, I'm hooked on it. There's so many things about Lenovo that suck. Again, like they had the, the blowfish or superfish or whatever the fuck it was. They had that spyware shit they were putting on all these years ago. Uh, you know, like they've done, they, they did the thing where they destroyed the ThinkPad Classic. They've shit on IBM's They've shit on IBM's design and reputation in many ways, and fuck them for that. But they, they kept the track point, and they've got, they've got me hooked. It's like a drug. Speaking of drugs, I haven't finished my third cup of coffee yet. A while back, I remember you were calling RC FPV drones. Have you flown one yet? I did, and I flew it right into my pond. I actually have to do liquid damage repair on it before I turn it on again. I'd like to fly it around the area over here. It's not really that powerful, so if it's a windy day, it kind of gets messed, and that's what happened with mine. I don't want to fly a powerful drone because I'm uh, until I start to like learn more about it. So I just I have a very not powerful drone. I want to slowly you know work my way up to trying ones that are a little bit more powerful. I don't do FPV with the goggles yet because again that just kind of freaks me out. I'd rather just I just like flying my little piece of shit thirty dollar drone around my backyard and you know on my balcony. Because it is really nice, and it's, it's fun to do that. It, there's a lot of fun in it, and it's very soothing for me. I like finding things that soothe me like that. And it makes me happy. I get a lot of fun out of doing that. Like, incredible fun. Just I could have had the worst day in the world. All these horrible things happen, and I come home, and I fly my drone or something like that, or I just sit on the balcony or whatever, take in the air, take in the peace, take in the view, watch the clouds pass by, and it just makes me one of the happiest people in the world. But I, I, did, I did fly it right into my pond like a fucking idiot. So You talk about the vision. What vision are you talking about? I don't. This is a P50 ThinkPad. The framework is a fine little laptop. I I like it. It's just I, I fucking hate trackpads, man. I I tried, but two I I gave it two and a half years. I fucking hate trackpads. I I, I hate them. I hate them. I you know my my one of my mentors in the music industry, um, Sam Field, Sam Feldman. He used to say he was he had a great influence on my life. There's two things that he said. He would always say. Uh, the only way that I learned anything is by never being afraid to show others how stupid I am. 
And I took that to heart because like when I started learning, I asked a lot of stupid questions. If you look back to my early border pair videos, they sucked. They sucked. I was so bad at what I did. Uh, but I kept doing it. And uh, like I kept iterating and getting better and better. I was really never afraid to show people the process of learning, process of doing, of getting into something. Because I never, I, if I, you have that thought that you have to be really good and you can't ask stupid questions, you're never going to get good at something. Because when you first start at something, you suck. And the second thing he used to say all the time was you, you hate nothing, you intensely dislike it. Because he said like, intensely disliking means you have a preference for or against something, but you don't internalize it. Whereas hatred is something you internalize. It actually, like, it's something that takes energy. It raises your blood pressure. It raises your heart rate. It causes you to feel a bad way about something. So he would always say, Lois, you hate nothing. You intensely dislike it. He would always correct me. And because he was like in his 80s and missing all of his teeth, he kind of, he had a very interesting accent because of it. Hey, Lois, you hate nothing. You intensely dislike it. I break that rule when it comes to trackpads, particularly trackpads in Linux when you use XFC as your desktop environment. I hate them. I hate them so much. There's nothing you could do to change my mind there. I got my status and my erase and deter here that the track point where you do will get one million views as a separate video. And I probably should have recorded this live stream then. Um, I regret it. I don't know you got any tips to get organized with ADHD? A hundred percent. One of the, I'll be honest, the only reason that I was able to get anywhere in life and do anything is the list. And I keep pointing back to this old video. I'm going to put it up there. It's a really bad way of explaining it. I don't think I did it justice. I don't think I explained it properly. Um, but I think that it's better than nothing, so I'll put it up here. The, what helped me more than anything in the early days when I wasn't really understand why my brain worked the way it did, why I found things as hard as I did, the best way for me was to create a list for my day in 15 minute increments. And what you do is you make that list in 15 or 10 minute increments and you take things that should probably only take you two or three minutes to do, you give yourself 15 minutes. You take things that should take 10 minutes to do, you give yourself a half hour. There's two things that you get out of it. Actually, three things you get out of this. The first thing you get out of it is for the entire day, you have something that holds you accountable so that when your friend comes by to talk about some random shit or, you know, when like, you know, the kitty comes up or the, you know, like the, you get a stupid call from somebody about like some, you know, some offer and you're like, oh, you know, I kind of do actually need to switch my car insurance. I wanted to drop. No, no, no. You say, no, I have a schedule. It puts you and keeps you on task. The second thing it does when you complete everything, when you complete something in 10 minutes that you allotted 20 minutes for yourself. Wow. I got something done. You get a little kick of dopamine in the front of your brain. And one of the problems for people that have real ADHD, not teacher-diagnosed ADHD. When I say real ADHD, if a teacher tells you you have ADHD because they're fucking boring and they're monotone and they hate their job and they're just telling you that you have ADHD because you don't want to listen in class, that's not real ADHD. I mean, like, you've went to several, several psychiatrists and psychologists. Like, you legit cannot pay attention. You cannot function in life properly because you cannot pay attention to shit. Like, genuine ADHD that actually destroys your ability to live your life. Uh, this will be very helpful for you because when your brain does not reg I forget if it's dopamine or something else it's something else that's not really regulated properly in the brains of people that have s real ADHD like actually diagnosed by professionals not by a fucking teacher um, that you you know you have actually you have issues with that and one of the things that's helpful is coming up with these little systems that give you a kick of dopamine at the end like that's what I get out of getting fan spin out of a board you get that little kick of dopamine that helps you do the next thing so for me one of the things that I did was have these lists I don't, that's just a bunch of trees. It's just a bunch of trees. And they're, they're weak ass, they're genetically weak Texas trees that fall down if you have one inch of snow. New Hampshire trees, they're raw. They don't fall down for anything. These are Texas trees. God forbid you have an inch of fucking snow, all the branches fall off of them and they fall down. These trees are genetically weak. You know, they're just they're, they're, they're genetically, emotionally, physically, psychologically weak trees. But anyway, uh, but it, it, it's a nice view. It's a nice view and they're not all falling down because of one inch of fucking snow. But yeah, the, so you get a little kick at the, the third thing you get out of doing this with this little tiered structure with lists is you realize how much time there is in a day. Like, okay, it's helpful. Like, it, it's helpful. Like, I, what I'll do is I'll kind of negotiate with myself. Like, okay, I'm not willing to do all this stuff. I am such a piece of crap that I'm just going to allot one hour to log into this website. I need to get this info from my accountant, and I keep putting it off. One hour to log into this website. One hour to find the information. One hour to email him. You may think that's ridiculous, but here's the thing. There are probably a lot of things that you've been putting off just because you don't like them. 
that you could do immediately. They don't take an hour. They don't take even more than 10 minutes. When you allot an hour for nothing but that and you do it, and then you do everything else you've been avoiding, you realize, what you start to realize is, wait a second, I have so much more time than I ever thought. My day has so much potential that I have not lived up to. So you, first thing you get is you get the kick of dopamine every single time you do something that, that you accomplish. Like you accomplish something that you allotted for an hour and 10 minutes. You may think it's lame, or at least for me, when I allot an hour for something and I get it done in 10 or 20 or 30 minutes, I actually feel like I'm winning a game and I get a little kick of dopamine that you probably wouldn't get unless you're you know, doing Adderall or on some sort of fucking drug that stimulates your brain. It really feels good. And it makes you more likely to continue paying attention to the future. The second thing is, I actually get to structure my day in a manner where I get things done and I get to realize how much time I'm wasting by everything else. Like when a coworker walks by and wants to talk about bullshit, no, I have a schedule. When I get a phone call from somebody, it's a friend, I'll talk to you later, I got a schedule. You know, there's this other thing, oh, you know, I want to fix this little thing in the user interface of this application. I have to do this thing in the application, but why isn't it in dark mode? No. That gets put on the list. I'm not going to go into my web browser and change the theme or change how it deals with third-party cookies and script. That's for later. I'm not going to go into the weeds right now. I'm going to, because I have a schedule. I can always put it on my schedule for later. But that, I'm going to stick to my schedule. I miss your long and racking streams. I stay, but I promise I'll be, and I was date night. Oh, and, you know, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Sorry, I haven't had time to talk recently. I've been stressing out over a bunch of different shit, but I appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I hope the best for you, your husband, your writing, and uh, your move. Hope, you know, hope Tennessee has been awesome for you. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, like you get that little kick from doing something. You have a structured day. You get to learn how much time there is in a day, and, a, and you get to figure out all the things that are distracting you. Like, once you learn how much stuff is distracting you, but more importantly, once you figure out how much you're procrastinating these things, you realize that you have so much more time in a day than you ever imagined. You start to understand how people that are much more successful than you actually manage to get shit done. A lot of people have brains that naturally regulate themselves to the point where they don't have to have some weird, crazy system in order to be able to do basic tasks. My, my brain doesn't work that way. I wish my brain worked the way everybody else's brain worked. Life would be a lot easier for me. Unfortunately, it doesn't, and I need to come up with these weird systems in order to actually get anything done. If I don't do that, I could literally sit here in a rocking chair all day, going down a rabbit hole, reading random Wikipedia and Bloomberg articles, watching random videos. I could spend 72 hours straight trying to fix why Wayland isn't working on my computer properly or something. Uh, I'm in corporate IT, but also have a side off with computers. really enjoy the latter and starting to resent the form. What should I do? Oh... As much as you hate the former, let me be honest with you, the latter is, listen, if you are in corporate IT and you're setting up like virtualized PBX systems, you're doing infrastructure as code, some shit like that, and you hate it, figure out a way to do that stuff freelance for other businesses and work on that. If you're doing all that type of high level shit in IT and what you're talking about is I'm replacing the screen in a laptop, I am removing viruses, uh, no. In my opinion, it, whether or not I suggest you focus on the side hustle is really going to be dependent on whether you're focusing on the skills that are going to have value into the future versus the skill sets that I'm honestly fucking surprised to even make money right now. But back to that. A lot of people have brains that just naturally work with this. Like, they can take a college course. They can listen to the professor. They can do homework. They can structure their day. They can do tasks. Like, they, they are able to operate in the world and, and function like a normal person without having these kind of systems. I, I don't know how to do that. I've never known how to do that. And if I try to do what other people do, I would literally just sit here all day. I could spend 72 hours going down millions of... I could spend two weeks going down random rabbit holes and literally at the end of it, not only have no accomplishments, but not even know what I was doing. Like the time passes and I don't even know how it passed. So, you know, if you, some people have to come up with systems for this. And if you're one of those people that has to come up with a system, come up with something that works for you. Negotiate with yourself. If you, like, for instance... I, the reason I do, like, let's say, and I, I allocate an hour to log into this website because I'm dreading it so much. I know it's going to suck. I know it's going to be shitty. I know it's going to be a website that has hostile design. That I know it's going to be a website whose reset password link is not going to fucking work and I'm going to have to call customers. If I allot an hour for it, the worst case scenario is an hour. But if I get that done in 20 minutes, I feel happy. I feel excited. I got something done that I otherwise wouldn't have done. And if I don't put it on my list, I'll never do it and it'll never get done. You know, this way I can turn all these things that I don't want to do when I turn it into a game. And what's helped me a lot with it, any sort of ADHD is I gamify things. Uh, you know, I gamify it in a positive way by like making these little goals. And I, I really do assume that I am the worst piece of garbage imaginable. I don't tell myself that, but I assume like it will take you two hours to do this. Even if it's a task that should take five minutes. Like I have so much free time in my day that I can actually allocate two hours for this. And it really does give you this feeling of power. 
that you wouldn't have otherwise. So I think that was what I was trying to get across in this video, and I wasn't really good at getting it across because I don't think I was as good a speaker back then, and I also thought that I was using YouTube as a means to manage insomnia and my own inability to, uh, to go to sleep. So I would just kind of talk about what was on my mind, and it would make it easier to go to sleep. There's also this video that I did. I'll, I'll link this one in the chat as well that I think is a... Uh, that I think was also a good video that I did on that topic. Uh, I don't know, again, I don't know if I really presented well in here, but I'll post it in the chat. Negotiating with yourself to get things done. Yeah, negotiating with yourself to get things done, and uh, less anxiety, more productivity through discipline time management. I think the second one I was probably better at presenting my, my thoughts on it, but both of these. You know, uh, like, there's, again, I really do think there's differences when it comes to ADHD. There's ADHD where, like, a teacher said you have ADHD because you found your class boring. That's not you having a, you don't have a mental problem. You don't have a, an issue with the frontal lobe of your brain. You don't have an issues with neurotransmitter regulation because you find Mrs. Freeland's class fucking boring. Nor do you have an issue with your brain where your parents are telling you you have ADHD simply because you don't find, like, they want you to sit in a room for four hours and you don't want to sit at a restaurant or a party for two hours and do nothing and you want to find stuff to do. That just kind of means you're a normal kid that wants to engage with the world and do things and learn things and be excited by things and, and, and like kind of explore in an environment where you're happy, where, you, where you're not like being forced to sit down and fold your hands and all that. That's not ADHD. Uh, a lot of people get wrongly diagnosed with ADHD and a lot of people get told they have ADHD as a projection of somebody else's failures. Like, you know, you have to think about the ego that that takes in general. Like for me to say, you know, it's not that you find my videos teaching board repair boring because I suck at explaining things. It's not that I'm a bad teacher. It's not that I'm not entertaining. You must have an issue with the neurological and neurochemical regulation within your brain. It takes a particularly arrogant piece of shit to project that onto a child or onto a teenager because they suck at what they do. Um, but but the, that's separate from real ADHD. Like, you generally have a problem like, if you read a book like Gabor Mate's Scattered Minds, if, if you keep a journal and then you read that book and you feel like, every, like you've written what's in that book in your own journal, word for word at some point in time, it might be worth seeking uh, counsel or help. And when I say counsel or help, to be clear, I'm not talking about medication. You don't got to drug yourself. You don't have to do Adderall, Ritalin, uh, you know, fucking whatever the hell else they have for that. There's this other drug that's... Um, they, have all, they have these weird blood pressure fucking medications now where they're like, this helped for blood pressure, so let's just prescribe it for ADHD because people that were having blood pressure issues uh, said that they had, um, said that they, had uh, they, they noticed they could pay attention better, so fine, fuck it, let's just give it to you. It's very interesting how this works. It really is one of these things where like MacBook motherboard repair and repairing people, is, it really kind of ties itself together at some point where it's like, I don't know why reflowing this chip works, but they do it and they do it with a fucking 30-day warranty. One thing I could say about L2 Computer, as shit as they are for reflowing dead graphics chips and giving it back to customers with a 30-day warranty, their warranty is 30 days longer than any psychiatrist is going to give you, usually. Uh, like 30 days is longer than zero. But uh, there's a... What was I saying? I kind of lost my train of thought there. I really do have to eat lunch at some point. Um, yeah, but, but see, you know, I'm not saying you have to do drugs. I'm just saying... If you have those type of problems, it may be worth talking to somebody. It may be worth getting help. Like, I found the coping method that works for me. Uh, did I get what I wanted to in life? No. Because at some point, what I wanted to do in life and what I'm finding as I get older is I kind of, I kind of want to be able to accomplish, you know, what other people do. Like, I want to be able to read a book from the beginning to the end. Like, actually read it. Just one book. One book over the course of my life. Actually be able to read it and feel like I'm not reading the same page five or 20 or 50 times before I actually paid attention to the whole thing. I like to be able to pass a class. Without cheating. Without cheating. I had to cheat to get out of high school. I'd like to be able to, to feel like the little switch in my brain, I like to feel like I control when it turns on, not something else. Uh, but, you know, but I, I got fairly far in spite of that. And, I, you know, I, ha I created these little systems that work for myself. And these may not be the systems that work for you. You're going to have to find the systems that work for you, and you're going to have to experiment. And there are a lot of people that may tell you, here's a system that you should use that you're going to pay. Maybe a therapist, maybe a psychologist, maybe a psychiatrist. They may give you information and none of it may work. And it's going to be up to you to decide, am I going to accept that they gave me information that doesn't work and use that as an excuse to never seek help in the future? Or am I going to use that and say, you know what? You aren't really good. You didn't give me the answer that I needed. I'm going to find somebody else and see if I do get the answer. I'm going to go to with, do what I did with employees when I talked about in that therapy video. You, don't, you can't fix MacBooks. Let me find somebody else. Oh, you can't fix them either. Let me find somebody else. You can't fix them. Let me find somebody else. When I put up an ad on Craigslist for a job, I would get 300 applicants. You bet your ass if the first five of those applicants sucked, I am going to go through every applicant in that list of 300 people before I find what I need so that I can get what I need. I can pay 
for what I need to be the, to, so that they do the work to the standard that, I, that is necessary for me to run a successful business. And so many people don't put that standard in themselves. They find one shit therapist, one shit psychologist, one shit support group. And like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, see, they don't listen. There's no point. They gave me info that doesn't work and they had a PhD. They're all cracks. Why? Why? Why are you willing to put less effort into that than you are finding a goddamn soft drink that you like at the store? You don't like one soft drink to have a Chipotle, eh, throw this out, let me try another one. Eh, let me throw this out, let me try another one. People will iterate and try so many different things in so many areas of your life. You will try five different cars. You'll try eight different smartphones. You'll try 10 fucking distributions of Linux before you try two or three different people that are professionals that might be able to help you with your problem. I gave you two links to what, hel to what helped me. Well, do I know if that'll help you? I don't. But all I hope is that the people reading that that have those types of problems would, um, you know, be open to trying more than one thing before you give up on it or saying, fuck it, nothing's going to work. Anyway, that, that's a bit of a rant, but yeah, let's, let's continue. I am behind on chat by a fair amount. Uh, let's see. They should ban OH areas. Who needs more pompous busybodies telling other people what to do for no good reason? I don't know. There's a lot of people that actually choose to live in shit like that. I haven't mowed my lawn since I moved here. You know what? It's, it's kind of like my, 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 it's like my way of... I'm making up for having spent a year living in a place with an HOA. So when I moved to Texas, I, lived, I, I moved to one of the least free parts of America where you have neighbors in Round Rock that literally, I don't know, they have to have fucking binoculars. They're like, they're, they're using a micrometer or some shit to measure the goddamn grass blade so that they can call and bitch like a Karen to the head of the HOA to that. I need to like, it's not like I didn't manage it. Like I paid people to come by and mow my fucking lawn, but God forbid it go over this by a millimeter. These people would be on it. Uh, it's like, you know what freedom is? Freedom is not mowing your lawn for almost a year and not giving a fuck because everybody here minds their own fucking business. I mow my lawn as often as my neighbor does, which is never, and it makes me happy. You order Framework 16. I have not. I am using my ThinkPad P50. I have dropped this off of a ladder many times, installing camera systems. I will likely, I will use this until the day that it dies. Um, I, it's not because I don't like Framework. I want to be clear here on that. It's I don't need a new laptop. This thing has a 9,000 CPU benchmark score, and it has an NVIDIA Quadro GPU, so I'm able to use it to, uh, you know, encode my video. Uh, you know, I mean, you better use it for DaVinci Resolve. Like, my, my video editing is a joke. It's literally me sitting in a fucking chair. I'm not, doing color, I'm not doing color grading and shit. The most I ever do is if I accidentally forget to use partial color space instead of full in OBS, I'll just, you know, drag the curves over so that, like, it, the video doesn't look blown out. Like, that's the most that I do. I don't do anything on the... There's no effects on video. I'm not doing special effects. The most special effects I do is running the, the default plugins in DaVinci Resolve for a DS or in a compressor that will run on a, on a Pentium 4 from 2001. So... Like, I don't, it's not that I don't like Framework. They're a great company, and I hope they continue to succeed in what they do. I just have no need for a new computer because I, a computer from 10 years ago is still more than fast enough if you're not using Windows 11 or some other bloated bullshit to do what I need. XFCE will run on a computer from 2005, and it'll run just fine and just fast. You could probably run XFCE with 256 megabytes of RAM on a Dell Inspiron 8200 with a P4M 1.8 gigahertz processor made in 2002, and it'll be just fine. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to use this, you know, I may get a Framework 16 if I keep dropping this off. I've been, you know, doing a lot of work with cameras. Uh, I, I, you know, I installed a bunch of sensors on my house for, like, glass breaking, uh, door sensors, all that shit for, uh, I don't want to deal with subscriptions and deal with the other fuck faces with the normal security company. So, I, you know, I put my own alarm system in and all that. I've been on a ladder a lot. And for the cameras, I need to stand a lot. I never use my phone because the screen is, I want to see the camera, what it looks like from my computer screen. I put it on the top of the ladder, and you, you, you know how that ends. Like, you, you know how that ends. You just, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of careless with that shit. So it's fell down a lot, but it still works. Talk about your Tim Pool interview. Uh, I don't know. Again, it, it goes back to what I said before. Uh, like, when it comes to right to repair, I will try to talk with almost anyone about it. Somebody was mad before because of a website that I showed up on. There are probably more mad people that I showed up on that fucking show. Uh, I was hoping to spend a little bit more time talking about right to repair than all this other culture war bullshit, but, you know, it is what it is. If I even got one other person to, t to understand what right to repair is as a result of it, I'll live with it. Um, you know, there wasn't really much. Uh, it wasn't really... Uh, one of the funny, oh, somebody's mentioning ADHD medications. One of the funniest things, uh, I shouldn't say funny, this is fucking sad. If you look them up, I'm not kidding, some of these medications, this is where like, there's so many good things that have happened with pharmaceuticals. There are so many positive results that people have now that they would have not had 70 years ago. There are certain medications 
where literally the number one side effect is suicidal idolation. Now, if you are somebody that has problems paying attention, it that probably sucks. Oh, literally the number one side effect on the label of the medication, not, not number two, not number eight, not number 15, number one, is you may want to jump off a balcony that's a lot higher up than this one. Ah, that sucks. I'm just, I'm just going to say that, that that sucks. That is, uh, th th there's, let, let's just say that there are some medications out there that are better than others. I'm not going to get into saying specifics. Um, yeah, like, let's, doctors are professionals, and they know a lot. But do doctors are professionals like any others. You can listen to their advice. You can pay them. You can put the money on the table, listen to everything they have to say, and you can also get five other opinions and then do what you want to do. I'm not saying listen to everything they tell you. I'm just saying go out there and get the, get the counsel. And then you, I think going out there and getting the counsel is better than not doing it at all. I'm not saying you have to do everything they, have to, they, they tell you to do, but see one or two or five or ten different people, get the information, and then you choose what you want to do. I have not finished my third cup of coffee. This is, I've actually f only taken two sips. So technically at this point, I've really only had two cups of coffee and I've been talking into a camera for at probably faster than Destiny and Ben Shapiro combined for five hours. Caffeine destroys me. One of the reasons that I very rarely drink coffee is because it just destroys me as a human being. Like it, the, the hype and everything else, it's just... I, I only take this as a very rare treat because I don't think I have the ability to to properly handle coffee. It it really does kind of it does something that is not ideal. But this this I haven't even finished that one that I brewed yet, which is crazy. I'm not even close to finishing the one that I brewed. Let me bring something up on here. One moment. God forbid I finish this cup. If I finish this cup, I'm actually going to wind up with a hole in my ceiling. Everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. Somebody, uh, in the beginning of the stream, many of the comments in chat were asking if I'm on drugs. Caffeine is a drug. It is a stimulant. And one of, the re you know, one of the things that's really interesting is I think the DSM does not classify caffeine as a drug. And I think, I'm, I swear to God, I think one of the reasons for that is that a lot of the people who get to decide what is and is not considered a regulated substance or a drug are people who are themselves addicted to caffeine and not able to admit it. I'm able to admit, like, this is what caffeine does to me. Like, caffeine, f it, it, it Fs me up uh, in many ways, which is why I also do it on a limited basis. Well, like there are a lot of people that get become dependent on it to be able to wake up or start their day or pay attention or do anything that are not able to be honest with themselves and tell themselves the truth, which is that this is a drug. And it does to you what, you know, many other drugs do. I see you on again, watching some old live streams the past few days, and then you suddenly stream again. Yeah, I haven't done this in a while. And Google could tell me to celebrate people spending money on Super Chats. It doesn't make me feel good. I don't know. You don't, just don't pay attention to it. You don't have to pay money in order to be a part of the stream. You don't have to be, pay money to be a part of what, what goes on here. Just enjoy being present in the moment. Ritalin is not legalized meth, saying meth implies abusing the drug. A tiny dose of stimulants under doctor's provision is different. Stop calling it legal meth. Uh, meth is different in a lot of ways for a number of reasons. A, it's usually a much higher dosage. Uh, like when it comes to stimulants, like I know at least like if you're taking Adderall or generic, like most, there's a lot of people that really fuck with this and go overboard. Like if somebody's on 10 milligrams a day, maybe even 20, whatever, there's people that go up to 50, 60, and then once they cheat, they go up to 60. What a lot of people wind up doing is they wind up going to another doctor, pretending they only have one so they can get 120. Then they wind up destroying their brain altogether and they wind up turning into this shit. Any of you watch Batman Beyond? You watch Batman Beyond? You remember what happened in uh, Batman Beyond with Bane? Uh, like, you, you have the old Bane, and then you have this shit. Like, they wind up doing this to themselves. Let's see. Uh, let me mute, because I don't want to get copy, copy fucked, copy struck, whatever they call it. Yeah, like, there's the guy that's helping him, and, uh, like, this winds, yeah, like, this is what happens to people that wind up doing 120 milligrams of Adderall. To be clear, there's nothing wrong with Adderall if you take it properly. But, like, just, just don't, don't become this dude. 
if you do take any sort of stimulant like that, one of the really important things to do, to be clear, I am not a fucking doctor. I am pleased to like, ask your own doctor about any of this before you do it yourself, is there something called a holiday. So when you do drugs that are stimulants, uh, there's something called a stimulant holiday. So let's say that you take 20 milligrams of Adderall or 30 milligrams or 10 milligrams of that or phenamine salts or anything else like every day. Uh, if, you, if you take scheduled times where you say for this, for this 12 hour period, I will not take any. For this 36 hour period, I will not take any. During time periods where you, um, where you want to, to like just kind of take, where you're not gonna have to pay attention to things like crazy. It, that, that actually means that you'll be able to use the lower dosage for a much longer period of time and it kind of break. And it's not about not becoming addicted to it. Rather, it's about being able to stay at a lower dosage. Because once you get on a stimulant path, again, similar to coffee. Coffee is not far away from these types of drugs. Once you get on the stimulant path, you really don't get off of it. You're going to be on that path for the rest of your life. And more importantly, you're going to have to take more and more and more in order to get the same effect that you did in an earlier state. And I think when people call Ritalin or Adderall legalized meth or amphetamines or any of that legalized meth, they're referring to that basic concept that you have with a lot of drugs, whether with heroin, which is a downer, or cocaine, which is an upper, that it's not like alcohol where, you know, you take three drinks and you get buzzed. You, you know, you're the type of dude that gets buzzed after whether three drinks or nine drinks. It's fairly stable. Like, once you have this many drinks of this particular thing, that's the amount it's going to take for you to get buzzed for most of your life. You know, you build a tolerance sometimes. But for the most part, you'll be able to get drunk at this. When you start using stimulants like that, what may, what, I think the reason people refer to it as meth when they're not doing it in a negative, when they're not doing it from an insulting way, is they're referring to the idea that when you get on that path, you really don't get off of it. And if you don't take holidays frequently, if you don't take it in a very, very stabilized way, you will need exponentially more of it to get the same result. And it's very easy to get to go down that pathway. So uh, one of the reasons I think this happens to people is because they're not just using it to pay attention to things, they're also using it as a mood stabilizer. So sometimes Adderall or amphetamine salts or anything like that, they wind up helping you as a mood stabilizer more so, because remember, it's not just about helping you, you know, giving you more neurotransmitters, it also gives you a kick of dopamine. Uh, they wind up using it as a mood stabilizer so they don't want to go off of it when they don't have to pay attention to something. So let's say like they have to pay attention for four days like crazy because of a crazy work project or you know they have eight hours of classes and five hours of homework, but then they're off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They can't take that holiday because they, they've realized that this is not only helpful for my ability to pay attention, but it's also helpful for my emotional regulation. Uh, so, and, and there are a lot of tactics that people can take part in to help them with emotional regulation so that they could take holidays from the stimulants that they take, whether it's Adderall, Ritalin, or, let's be real, hell, even Diet Coke. There's somebody I know in my life that I think has been treating their own ADHD with Diet Coke for the past 30 years, who may or not be watching the stream right now, and they know it's fucking true. You don't have 13 cans of Diet Coke a day, by the way, and not have an addiction to it. There's no way in hell I believe that. You, you, you're, you're, you need your stimulant at that point. Uh, but... If you can learn certain skills to help you with emotional regulation so that you can deal with when you don't have as much dopamine, which are really hard to do. There's, again, lots of therapy, lots of reading, lots of self-reflection. It's not easy. It's easier to take those holidays so that you don't wind up using stimulants, whether it's caffeine, Adderall, or Ritalin, in the way that people are implying you would be when you use meth. Because people do a little bit of meth and do a lot more. It's, it's wind up being this exponential path. You know, if, again, if you're using 10 to 20 milligrams on a regular basis, you're probably fine. If you want to use 10, then 20, then 30, then 40, then 60, and then at 60, it's like it's not even about paying attention anymore. It's just, man, I feel good on this. Yeah, then you're on the path to using it like meth. But it doesn't have to be. But that's, again, that, that's between you and your doctor, and that's something that you should read about online. This, this applies to almost, you know, this applies to a lot of different drugs, really. It's not even just about stimulants. Drug holidays, it's a good thing. Regardless of what it is, it's, it's a good thing to not build up such a tolerance that you need, to, that you need something in order to survive. Don't be... It, Anything that you can do to avoid becoming this dude over here is, is probably a good thing. Like, you know, Bane did not take drug holidays. Bane realized he needed like 10 milliliters and then 30 milliliters. And, you know, he went from being able to throw Superman through a rock to, to be in this. And anything you, do to, you can do to not be that is, I, I support. Okay. But as always, you know, talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor before changing anything. All the standard, uh, I am not a doctor. I do not provide medical advice. I have no qualifications. Same as... You know, all the standard disclaimers. If you take your medical advice from a man that fixes MacBooks for a living, you, uh, you're, you're going to fuck yourself. I am behind on chat by 20 minutes. Dear, yeah, god damn. What you guys don't realize is Lewis is hypnotizing you with the rocking motion of his chair. I already ordered a ThinkPad, an e-bike, and I'm looking at life for a cat. <laughs> don't pay for a cat, by the way. Cats are free. There is an abundance of cats. Why do they want to dope up children with addictive drugs? There must be a correlation between addiction and early childhood. Prescribing drugs like Ritalol and Adderall. 
Ritalin and Adderall. Yeah, it's when you're younger, it is. Yeah, again, the, the problem with the overdiagnosis of things like ADHD is the, the, the stigmatization of the diagnosis to the point where people will say, that is diagnosed. Everybody, fuck this. I'm, I'm like, who? And then the people that actually seriously have it don't wind up seeking help. And again, a lot of the people that have it, you don't, some of them, listen, you can choose to not do, you can choose to not take a single drug. You could choose to not even drink Diet Coke. Like some people that fix iPads and do data recovery for a living may or may not uh, you use in a manner that's similar to cocaine, for lack of a better way to put it. You could choose to not do any of those drugs, and there are simple coping mechanisms that may help you massively improve your quality of life without taking a drug. But as long as it's stigmatized to that degree because it's so over-diagnosed by, again, not even just doctors, but fucking teachers that think they're doctors, uh, then, you know, that, that wind up getting into the parents' heads that their kids have something that they don't, so they wind up looking for something that's not there. That, that, that people that actually do have a problem just say, oh, yeah, that's overdiagnosed. I'm not even going to bother. Do you still do macro repairs? Uh, I, I train, and I manage a staff that does. I'm trying to train Patrick. He's the shipping dude. You know one of the things that we believe at in this business? We believe in training. I do not believe in this bullshit idea that you need to have a... Again, I do not give a fuck if you've been to college. I don't give a fuck if you graduated high school. I don't care if you have a GED. I don't care if you spend five years in prison. If I believe that there's potential in you, I'm happy to train, I'm happy to take time. My shipping person is a good dude. He's a good dude. He cares about doing his job properly, and he, there is a lot of potential there. He did not believe that he could become a MacBook Board repairman. We're going to prove him wrong. It's been three months and he's gotten boards fixed without asking for any advice, and he gets that little kick of dopamine when they work, of knowing that he did something. Uh, I don't fix, do I fix boards on camera? No. Do I, tr what I'm, I'm in the stage where I've, but what I've done is I've tried to walk some of the people that are, you know, like, um, that are on the lower totem pole level of the company. I want to walk you through. I don't want to give you the answers, but I just kind of, I want to ask enough questions that you can figure it out for yourself and that you could do it. That's back in that book. I, I quoted that book earlier, The Five Levels of Authority by John Maxwell. Um, again, forget about all the courses and the leadership and the sponsors and the paying thousands for speakers to hear these people talk and all that bullshit. The book itself, The Five Levels of Leadership, it has a lot on this. And one of the things that it talks about is, you know, this positional authority. It's the lowest form, which is, you know, I have a name tag that says I'm the boss. Listen to me. I have a name tag that says I'm the teacher. Listen to me. The next level uh, of it is, you know, I've accomplished something. The third level after that is, okay, I have you know, I've helped somebody else accomplish something. And then it's like, I've helped somebody else teach other people how to accomplish things on their own. There's a lot of different levels of authority. And one of the things, again, I, you know, I already got to the, like, I got to the point, I got to the point where I was fixing nine or 15 boards a day by myself. And I got to see them work again. And I got to kick a dope me. And I got to show up on CBC News. And I got to front page Reddit with 53,000 upvotes a ton of times for fixing boards and showing people that something that Apple and other tech shops that was impossible is not just not impossible, but also something I can train somebody that didn't even graduate high school how to do. I kind of experienced all that already. And, you know, at the end of the day, after you do a thousand fucking border pair videos and you write a hundred articles for your own wiki site, it gets boring to do the same thing over and over again. Teaching other people how to do that from nothing, going from I operate a shipping label printer to I fucking fix boards without a proper, without a full education. Man, that's cool. So, yeah, I, I don't really fix boards anymore, but I'm kind of in this. But for the last several years, I've really been in the stage of like managing a company that does it and trying to get people who work at that company up to speed to be able to do all that work to the same standard that I would do it if I was doing the work myself or better. And when you see people do work that started off thinking they couldn't do it, that later on are doing it to a better standard than you, there is no better feeling in the world. There is no better feeling in the world than people who work for you, surpassing you, and being more qualified to do your own damn job than you were before you started teaching them. That's cool. I, I, but yeah, I don't really do the repairs anymore. It's, it's not, it's not, I don't really find, I, I've done it for a long period of time. I have people that work there that do it. I'm interested in finding the next thing to do with life. I don't really know what the hell it is. Again, at first I thought I was going to become a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Then I thought I was going to become a loudspeaker engineer, went into the wrong industry, started recording music for a living, uh, failed at it horribly, became a recording studio tech, became a MacBook tech, uh, kind of backdoored myself into becoming a social media influencer, became a lobbyist, nonprofit director, and now I like work for the WhatsApp billionaire. Like, my, my, who the fuck knows what the next thing in life is for me? But board repair, like, again, I climbed to the top of that hill. I enjoyed my time at the top of that hill. I did as much as I could to get other people into the profession and make it easier for other people to start doing what I did while I was at the top of that. It's just kind of, you know, it's, it's, 
it, it's not, I, I don't feel the same way about it that I did in 2013. I'll leave it at that. I'm a high school student. My local school district is installing a full monitoring screen recording program in every student's laptop. No opt out. I would not use the computer. I would do my homework on pen and paper. I'd use another computer, honestly. I mean, it, I'm not saying that this is going to come off very insensitive, and I'm sorry if it does, but I realize it's going to come off insensitive. Like, if you're, for the average, for homework, just based on how behind schools are and just based on, like, again, you're, you're going to be doing book reports, answering basic-ass math questions and shit, I can't imagine that you can't do what it is you need to do on a ThinkPad that cost $25 from 2006. It's hard for me to imagine that you can't use this, like a computer from 2007 that literally costs $40 on eBay. I would buy a $40 computer and not use that one. I don't want to be monitored all the time. It's fucking weird. It's creepy. And above all, when you start doing that to students, when you do that at a young age, you're conditioning in their brain that that's normal. I don't run tracking or monitoring software on the computers at my company because that's fucking creepy as hell. I don't, my, my employees don't need to be fucking watched all the time. There's certain things that I do. For instance, like having a camera Above a desk, I don't do that to monitor employees. I do that so that if, it, if somebody says, hey, man, I sent you that computer with a case and it's not mentioned in the notes, I'd like to be able to load up the camera system, go to the moment that your computer was unboxed and see it. For stuff like that, yeah, okay, there's, there's utility in that. I don't use it as a tracking service so I can see if my fucking employees are like, God forbid they took 90 seconds to, you know, read some joke on 9gag or some shit so I can fucking fire them over it. It's, it those things have utility. Uh, there's some, but I try to have at my company the minimum level of tracking so that I could have that level of utility. Did somebody walk in the store and steal something? Let me see, like, do I have a camera to see your face? On the shipping desk, can I see what you unboxed, not because I want to watch you all day, but so that if somebody says, this computer arrived, I had a solid state drive in there and you shipped it back to me without it and it's not in the notes. I, thank you, Cesar. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. I don't really think I've succeeded there. I want to succeed there someday. I don't think I have, but, you know, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, even though I don't think I've succeeded there, you saying that kind of makes me feel like maybe there's a chance that I could succeed there someday. And it makes me feel better about the prospect for the future there. Uh, you know, like, if they said they sent it in with something that they didn't, I'd like to be able to look and see for that so that I can protect my own employee rather than blame him. I can say, no, 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 customer, you're wrong. Here's why. But I, I, I'm not installing fucking tracking on their computers. That's, 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 that's creepy as shit. I don't, I don't, I don't want to create that environment for people. I don't want them to think that that's a normalized thing. And if you start, the worst thing about doing that from a young age, the part that I think is the shittiest thing to do about doing that from a young age, is you're normalizing it. You're normalizing doing that to people, and that is not right. Uh, Uh, you know, that, that, that's, it, it's not right. Like, people are going to, like, if, if you do that to people in second and third and fourth grade, and the worst, here's the worst part, it's not even that the, that the teachers do it, it's that if, let's say, your parents and say, well, you know, that's what they're doing at school, so that's what you have to deal with. If they do that to you, and you accept it, that means that like, you're more likely to believe that that's the norm later in life, and if you believe that that's the norm, you'll tolerate it when you shouldn't. Like, I didn't deal with that. In, honestly, I, I dealt with a lot of shit in school that I probably shouldn't have, but that, you know, that, that's beside the point. But, like, but later on in life, I still realized it was bad, but a lot of people are not the type of people that are going to push back against that stuff in their own personal life. One moment, i got to get myself the food. I usually make my own sh crappy food, even though I'm a shit cook, but I'm... I am, I ordered something, I treated myself to ordering something for two reasons. A, I don't have any junk food in the house and I kind of wanted some. And B, I'm not going to cook something if I'm streaming for six hours. So I will treat myself to something good. What the, what the fuck is that? There's always some weird shit going on here. That's what I like about this neighborhood. This is the opposite. This is kind of the opposite of a neighborhood where it's like, you know, keep your music down or whatever, or don't do. I, I like living in a neighborhood. I kind of like having an area where people kind of do what they want. Like, they like freedom. They like, you go outside and you hear music. You'll hear random people playing shit at all times of the day or night. You know, people will be fixing their cars on their lawn. Uh, it's. It's, it's nice to live someplace. It, this is literally the opposite of an HOA. It's anti HOA in every way, and that's beautiful. Give me one second.
Oh boy. Yeah, yes. Damn. Yeah. I've been streaming for so long, I literally have to adjust the ISO on my camera. Wow. The sun has literally completely gone down. Okay. Let me catch up in a little bit. Where? You'll excuse me. I'm gonna eat something. Actually, I think I turned it a little too much. Let's turn this light down while I eat. <laughs> Does this work? Oh, shit, this doesn't work anymore. Hello? Oh, here we go. Oh, you're not connected anymore. Oh, this is that stupid ass lights that connect via Wi Fi or some shit. Damn technology. I mean, I I'd rather just walk around all these things and put them on myself. Anyway, okay. I'm gonna move this to the side for a moment so I can eat. This is junk food at its best. True junk food, it's finest. I like your advice, thank you. Hopefully it was hopefully it was worth something. <laughs> My advice is worth what you pay for it. Do you still do MacBook board rep oh that was old. How do you recommend preparing for AI taking more jobs? Folks are already losing jobs. Uh, well, I would say prepare for it the same way that I am preparing for the death of the repair industry which is um, learning new stuff. I don't know. Like, you know, when I was doing, let's say the recording studio technician job, like when I, when I was doing that and I was focusing a lot on the recording, I'm um, like doing that, I had to cope with the fact that I was learning the skill set. Like, man, I could, I could, uh, you know, not only align and bias a Studer A800 and a Studer A27, but when the shit stops working, I can fix it. Like when a Neve 8088 console has a broken 31102 module, I know how to make that shit work again. Uh, when, um... You know, like when an SSL J9000 has bad bus switches, I could fix it. And in, hell, even the Neve VRP, I fucking hate the Neve VRP. It's not a real Neve. The Neve VRP is really kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a shitty Siemens creation. Not to shit on Siemens too much, but you know, when you have a company that makes fucking washers and dryers, they're not, they're not the people to make an artistic audio console, particularly when you're taking on the legacy of one of the best sounding equipment manufacturers of all time. Man, the Neve VRP is a piece of shit, but unfortunately a lot of people like the Neve VRP. And one of the... You know, I was one of the few people that knew how to service the bus switches and switches in this console where it worked. You walk into any studio in New York City in the mid-2000s, or early 2000s, mid-2000s, any of them, you will see toothpicks in every one of the Neve VRPs. Every single one of those stupid consoles had fucking toothpicks in it, because even the technicians that were charging, back then, even the techs that were charging like 60 bucks an hour had no idea how to make those switches work again, had no idea how to replace them. I could replace them, and I replaced them cheaper than everybody else. And I, I, I put all this effort into learning the skill set so that I could become really good at something that nobody cared about anymore. And it's, I, I felt so fucked because I got into it like, I loved what I was learning. I loved what I did. I had this internship where I worked like 12 to 16 hours a day. I was cleaning floors for free and being a janitor at Avatar, working at Progressive Music, eventually like kind of go bouncing around to all these different studios in New York. And I was doing all this work to learn something right at the tail end of it being useful. And it was kind of useless. So, I, you know, I kind of had to learn some new shit. Like, listen, it's not easy. It sucks. I, I get it. Le learning new shit sucks. It, 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 the part of it that sucks is when you're afraid, you don't know what it is you need to learn, you don't know how your skills are going to transfer, you don't know if you're going to be able to actually learn the new thing. It's all very difficult. It's like, what advice would I have for somebody who is, like, you know, getting displaced by AI? I mean, listen, you can't fight against it. It's like technology has always moved forward. And at the end of the day, when you really think about what technology does, what technology does is it puts people out of work. Like, it's been doing that since the beginning of time. But simultaneously, as you've put people out of work, you wind up with, uh, with, with more jobs in other areas. Like, for instance, I was arguing this with uh, one of the dudes at work, Harpo. He's a cool dude. He's, waste, he's a million, he, he developed some of the software there. He is essentially, like, imagine me, but if I had a functioning brain. He's a really smart guy. Like, I, I have a lot of respect for Harpo. He's a cool dude. And anyway, one of the things we were talking about is bank tellers. Like, 
why did bank tell, why is it that with the invention of the ATM, we wound up with more bank tellers? And one of the reasons is that, well, now you actually, well, the bank tellers were now able to do customer service. So yeah, uh, there was far less demand to deal with a bank teller to make a withdrawal or a deposit because you could do that via the ATM. But then what that meant is that instead of getting a fuck you or you can only have customer service via mail and wait two weeks, or you could call us and get a busy signal, now you could call and actually speak to a banker. And to be clear, if you're dealing with any major bank, you're probably not going to be happy with the phone conversation you have with that banker. I sincerely doubt they're going to be good at solving your problem, but you could speak to them. Yeah, and then also, banks wound up opening more branches because the cost to operate it was less when they needed less tellers, and then you wound up actually having more. So uh, the first thing is, when technology evolves, I don't necessarily uh, buy the fact that it will be overall bad. However, in the short term, yeah, you know, do you know, when you watch Mad Men and you see them directing phone calls like this, when you have free PBX and it's open source, I could download that shit for free, run it as a virtual machine. I ran that shit on a fucking Celeron. A, a Nook, a Celeron is enough to run my entire business phones. I don't need patching all of the shit. I can see the status of a ticket on the caller ID. I don't need a person who's going to patch the call through to Steve, a person to patch it through to Kevin, a person to patch it through to me, a person to patch it through to Patrick. I don't need something special. I don't need to then have somebody who then not only tells me what the call is about, routes it to me, and then tells me that this call is for, um, is, is, oh, you, they're, they're going to want this tracking number. Like, it literally does all of that for me. I click a button after they call. I can see their tracking number. I can read it to them. I can explain everything if they didn't get the email. Like, this stuff is not, like, there's so many people that get, ta that get tossed out of a job when new technology comes out. That's what technology has been doing since the beginning of time. It's been, you know, technology puts people out of work. Uh, even just with farming and agriculture, like, we, how many people in the United States used to be involved in working in agriculture 150 years ago? How many now? Are we all unemployed? Now, I think the scary part about AI is that, you know, it's not, uh, is that people are afraid of it not being a tool, but as a replacement for us. Uh, you know, it was like uh, the free PBX at its core, like it's kind of, it's a replacement for the person doing this with the phone system. It's a replacement for all the physical infrastructure that used to have to exist for you to be able to route phone calls. Whereas I think the scary thing about AI is that, you know, they, people think like ChatGPT 20 or ChatGPT 50 is not a replacement for an annoying task. It's not a replacement for a certain tool. It's not a replacement for a certain piece of equipment or process. It's a replacement for this. I think that's the scary part. And it's going to be a while before that's the case. Like AI is exceptionally helpful at a lot of shit. It's also really stupid at the rest. Like it really does need a lot of human interaction. You know, um, my accountant, one of his best friends, is a very, very high senior level programmer at Microsoft. And I remember, you know, my accountant always has these questions for people because he, 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 the way he learns about the world is by constantly asking shit and stupid questions, just like my other mentor. Like, are you afraid of like, getting put out of business as a program because of this? And he laughs and he's like, are you kidding? I write more now than I ever did. All the base shit that used to, like, it used to take me, let's say, two weeks to get all this base stuff done, and now I can get that stuff done in three hours instead of it taking two weeks. Now, is this going to write the whole program? Absolutely not. But I can use that to do the annoying parts of my job that otherwise would have taken me forever before. I think that's pretty cool. Mm. Oh, food is so good when you haven't eaten for six hours. Mm. I have not eaten for six hours. That, this wrap with this sauce, that's what we call junk food right there. Every now and then a little bit of junk food. Just in, in moderation is a good thing. Mm. Marketing is a waste of time to consume and produce. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I used to think that way. I think I had a more socialist mindset when I was a teenager. And like when I was 21 and 22, I realized a lot of it was because I didn't have, I was bad at advocating for myself in general. It came from a bad, like a lower self-worth that doesn't belong there. And when like during that phase of my life, I always felt like marketing is evil because any of the money that I spend on marketing means that I have to increase my price, which means that I'm ripping somebody off because I'm charging somebody for something that doesn't add value to the transaction. I was very strict about that. However, what if nobody knows you exist? Somebody, like, what if somebody exists that's ripping people off left and right, and the only reason everybody's using the person that rips people off left and right is because they don't know you exist? 
like, what good are you doing there? Like, you can have this idealized view of, the, of how things should be, and I think there's too many people that think about how things should be rather than how things are. If nobody knows, if you charge $200 for a service and everybody else charges 1000 and you think, well, marketing is bad because it increases my price, if you had to increase the price of your service to 300 to make up for the additional customer acquisition costs as a result of marketing, is that not still a net good for the world? Like you're still helping people that otherwise would have spent a lot more money. You're still helping people that would have went to drive savers and paid three thousand fucking dollars for having a bad iPhone screen. I'd rather market and know that even one person, even if I lost money in the end, just knowing that one person was saved getting scammed, ripped off by drive savers, not being told the problem with your phone was a bad screen, but being told we recovered your data. That's twenty seven hundred dollars. I feel good about that. That person may never know I existed. You know why they know drive savers existed? They paid for marketing. They pay so much money for marketing. AdWords, affiliate programs, being present on every fucking college campus in America, being the first go-to from all these different small computer repair shops because they pay out good affiliate um, revenue. Now, marketing in and of itself is, I understand what you're saying. I really understand the spirit of it. Like when I watch a shitty YouTube ad, when I see a banner ad, shit like that, yeah, I, I get what you're talking about. There's a lot of stuff that's just never going to make me feel like buying something. Mm. Oh, that's a good wrap. That is not a question asked in good faith. You go away. I know when those questions are asked in good faith. Hmm. That is a... P Hi, Oreo. You have your food over there? Hey, you have canned reveal and dry halo. That's more than good enough. You don't need my food. No. No kitty. No kitty. You get a pet, but you don't get my food. I should want to get a sauce from the kitchen. If you try to eat my food while I'm up, I'll know because it's on camera. They're all watching. I dare you to try to eat my food. His shit is like $2 a can for three ounces. The cat literally eats reveal. And he's come. The same thing that I said about people building tolerances for certain medications, it kind of applies to spoiling your cats when it comes to food. This little bastard, like literally... You literally eat the best cat food that there is. You have dry halo, canned reveal, and you are still meowing because you want my food. Shit, the shit you're eating is probably healthier than the shit I'm eating, not just for you, but for me. If I ate, was in my cat's bowl right now, I would probably be better nutritioned as a result of it. Yeah, I'm doing something evil right here. Oh yeah, I'm pouring steak sauce on this wrap too. Yes. This stuff is good. I got this when I went to a, this town of like 500 people. They make their own sauces. Just be... Mmm. Whoa. That is amazing. Hmm. Thank you. Right now I'm having a hard time choosing between the system and path and the programmer path. My current job is more so IT stuff. IT life system in work and the most programming I do is p -shell. Um, I think a lot of the IT and system and shit is going to be moving to like that, that whole like infrastructure as code shit. Like, and I think that becoming a programmer or get, getting more into programming with your already existing skill set is going to make more sense <laughs> because a lot of systems administration, I think going into the future really is going to have to do with programming and becoming good as a programmer. And I also think you'll be better prepared for the whole like infrastructure as code shit if you start like just focusing on that now. Also keep in mind that my career advice is essentially, like, is fundamentally worthless because I have just, I, I, I have no credentials with which to, t um, to, dem to tell you that what I have to say is at all relevant. I am literally a dude that could not get hired for anything other than selling Spectrum Internet on commission at Walmart. <laughs> I'm running a short academic like course in sustainable and ethical digital service design. Companies are going to pay their employees to attend it and I don't know if they will like the outcome. I don't, uh, let's be real, um, 
This is going to suck. I hate this. If employees are being forced to go to a seminar, a course, they're probably already going, there's probably going to be a baseline level of resentment for the fact that they even have to be there. I don't know about you, but like if my boss said, you have to attend this presentation, or you have to attend this class on XYZ, if I want to get a certification that's going to make me better, if I want to get a certification that's going to like make it easier to get a job in the future, make it be make me better at what I do, that's what. But like, you know, digital ethics or fucking human centric design or some shit like that, or like a class on sexual harassment or whatever, like I'm, I, I'm a, I don't even know if they're going to listen to what you have to say. Uh, I'm just being honest. Like, I, I am, I've been a business owner for 15 years, but I'm not so far removed from the experience of being an employee to understand what it is that I would have genuinely hated as an employee. Um, there's a good chance that none of them are actually going to pay attention because they don't want to be there because they're being forced to go. This is a good rap. This sauce that I put on here is from Fathead Spices in Mason, Texas. Fathead Spices, Mason, Texas. There's also a bakery in a small little restaurant and bakery in that town that has the best pecan pie you will ever eat in your life. The best pecan. Anna. Every other weekend, I'll drive to some, I'll, I'll just, I don't put anything in the map. I just drive on a random highway to the middle of fucking nowhere until I find some interesting place. I just explore around a little bit. I try to take in all the things. I try to take in the environment, talk to some random people, pretend I'm at the end of the 25th hour movie and I'm thinking that the, and I'm living the, the dream part, not the miserable reality part where he just kind of starts over. Every now and then, it's kind of fun. I'll see you later, Blue Freaker. Thank you for coming by. Hmm. I think you bite some subscribers. Huh? I hope not. That would suck if there was people in this food. What kind of thing that laptop do you mean when you mention one for 25? <laughs> if you want a laptop from, two, if, you like, you, if you buy a ThinkPad from like 2007, you'll find that shit online for like 25, 50 bucks on eBay. Don't get me wrong, it's not gonna be pretty. It'll probably have a couple little cracks in it, but a ThinkPad is fine with a couple little cracks in it. <laughs> Oh, no, Polygon, I was referring to somebody else, not you. That was a different question. <laughs> I'm in the, I'm my bad. I was referring to some, I didn't say their name out loud. It was somebody who had a really, like, it was a pretend concern question, but it was just asked to like, be insulting. That wasn't you, my bad. I didn't mean you. I'm in the Bay Area, and no programmers that have been fired that can't find work, as you don't need as many programmers. These guys are scrambling to figure it out. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> This is good. Ideally, we would place all marketing with the computer database protocol that gives everybody market transparency. Eh, no. Market, a lot of marketing is I'm sharing my opinions with you, but also I'm sharing my art with you. Like, I get where you're coming from because a lot of marketing is shit, but like, at the end of the day, a lot of marketing is art, it's rhetoric, and it's opinion-based. You know, and to have a computer decide that is insane. Like, there are people on Mac Rumors that think that my business is a beard, I, um, I do horrible work. Mm, you know, some people just think that my business is fake and that this is literally just some bullshit that I made up out of thin air so I'd have a purpose to have a YouTube channel. And one of the things that people are always going to view marketing differently. 
everybody's going to view uh, an advertisement differently. There's somebody that may see my video and think, this guy really knows his shit. He cares about his customers. He wants to do things in a very precise way, and he's probably not going to rip me off. Other people may view it and say, fuck this guy. Where's his anti-static bracelet? Like, why is he wearing a t-shirt? Why did he say a curse word? Why did he use flux in the board? Forget about the fact that he ultrasonically cleans it. Why is there so much? Uh, you know, you can't outsource that decision-making to a computer because we all think differently and we all take marketing in differently. We all, you know, marketing is the, is the process of making an argument in an artistic way and we get to decide how that argument is interpreted ourselves. What do you think? Is uh, Apple Vision be repairable? Dude, I can't even fucking fix half of the new Apple laptops anymore. I've been working in that business for 15 years. I can't even get parts to do some basic MacBook repairs. And you want me to know if an entirely new line of shit is fixable? I don't know. Probably not. I haven't even looked into it, to be honest with you. Remember me? Ask you on reniting abusive ex girlfriend in October, and you told me deny and go to therapist. I said her no. Late, randomly, met in huge city, and you may say I'm mad, but we've reunited so far, not bad. Thoughts? Well, did I, I guess the question there would be, did you call her abusive or did I call her abusive? If I called her abusive, then it's very likely I could have been wrong because I don't know your situation. However, if you, by your own definition, called it abusive, you did not seek therapist or that type of advice, and you went back to going out with that person, um, that's, yeah, that's bad. Again, like... If somebody else says that, you're, that, you're, that your partner is abusive, that's one thing, because that's not your... If you say that that person is abusive, and then you go back to them, again, I'm going off of what you say. So either A, your definition of abuse is not true, or B, you're going back to somebody who has abused you without seeking the help or outside counsel of somebody who may help you with perspective to understand whether or not what you were dealing with was actually abuse and whether or not you were... Uh, Making them, the, making them the villain in like the way that you know, somebody with borderline personality disorder makes the villain out of everybody, or if you were being a doormat in the way that people that, you know, I guess, didn't really learn have competence in themselves do. Like, I don't really know, but it's helpful to have somebody else kind of walk you through that. If, if, if I said that they were abusive, who cares? Who is this? I don't even know who these people are. But if you, know, if you, by your own definition, call somebody abusive, it, it may not make sense to go immediately back to them without talking to some sort of professional help. Lewis, don't quit YouTube. You're one of my favorites. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Why did you put up with New York for so long if there was so much out there? Um, you know, I built a business there. Yeah, to, be, to be able to move away from where you are, you have to be in a privileged position. Essentially, you have to have enough money that you can start fresh and like, be fine. Like When I started this business, in the beginning, I made less than $400 a month. It was a while before I had my first month where I made $1,000. <laughs> it takes time to build up a client base, and when you start fresh somewhere, you're starting from zero, like literally zero. You can't do that. You can't start from zero if you don't have something saved up. Also, you know, you need to have a certain level of reputation in order for the time it takes you to build back up to be something that's fast rather than slow. You know, it's easy to say that type of stuff when, you, when that's not what you're dealing with. <laughs> like... Even this is what people miss when they say New York is really expensive. Let's say that's true. I'll give you that. New York is very expensive. Let's say New York is really expensive. If you make twenty four hundred a month and your rent is two thousand and your utilities is two thousand, that sucks. You got four hundred you could put away. It's very now if you move, your rent may be one thousand, but your income could be zero. Your income could be six hundred. Um, you know, it's, it's, so the reason people stay where they are is even if a place is expensive, there's a certain level of certainty involved that you don't get when you just pack everything up and move. And that goes back to the point I said before about immigrants having more balls than me and really probably more brains than me. If you want to leave a country and go someplace that you've never been before, 
that does take some level of balls and confidence that I can figure shit out. So like, first, the first thing is, I did not consider moving until Malin was at least 50% of my income. Because Malin is business that you know, you're not gonna lose out on if you move someplace else, walk-in is. So for most of my business, my walk-in business was like 90, maybe 85, 95% of it, and I had been slowly building up. I had always done Malin, I always had ads for it, but I didn't really start making a concerted effort to put as much into it as possible until 2013. You know, I traveled a little bit, not a lot, but I just kind of got to see what the rest of the country looked like, and I said, I want to have the freedom to be able to work from somewhere else. So I started then, and I knew that it was going to take a long time to build that, that up. And, you know, there are things I didn't like about New York before, but I had that certainty. I pay this rent, I have this income. If you move, there is absolutely no guarantee that even if your rent is cut in half, that your income is not cut by 90%. And at the end of the day, it's not your expenses that matter, it's the ratio between your expenses and your income. That's a long-winded way to say, you know, I, I kind of stuck with what worked, and I stayed in my little, my security bubble, my security blanket. And that worked for me. There's also uh, the separate facts, which is, if I move, I will not be able to take everyone with me. I used to have 12 employees. Now I have six. The reason I went from 12 to six, I mean, part of it is, like, a lot of those employees were doing repairs that I literally can't do anymore, like... I had several of them that would just crank out screen repairs all day with when I could buy the panel by itself. I can't buy a panel by itself anymore, so essentially having them employed was almost kind of like, <laughs> it contributed to my company not making any money, and also, you know, it was, was kind of like UBI at that point. That doesn't really make sense. But a big part of it is a lot of these people were not able to move because they had lives, they had families, they bought houses, they got married. You, you can't, you know, I, I would be letting go of a lot of people that were, that were really good people. Like, I don't mean good just as employees, good people. I mean good people like, in, in, in their soul, they, were, they, they, meant, they wanted to do good for the world. And you really don't want to let people go and tell them, yeah, you know, best of luck finding a new job in a really niche field where there's not a lot of companies that pay more than 30 or 40 bucks an hour. Like, let's be real, you know, no, very few people, the reason most other companies that do this kind of make more money than me is like, they're not, they're not my, the salaries I pay here, to be clear, they're not amazing. Like, if you look, if you go to LinkedIn and you look at salaries for, like, senior level data engineers, you know, like, senior Python programmer, uh, you know, like, a fucking lead electrical engineer, like, they're going to shit on this. But, like, for a job that you can get with three months of, you could literally do three months of work in your house, like, to just kind of experimenting on shit, and then get a job at some place like here, without needing a high school, without even needing to have graduated high school. There's not a lot of places where you do that. Like, you know, I, last time I checked, I remember, like, I figured it was You Break, I Fix, or CPR, but I was like, a fucking manager a year and a half ago was something like seventeen fifty an hour. It's like, bitch, my interns make more than that. What the fuck? My shipping guy gets paid more than a fucking manager at these other stores. So you get the point. Like, I would have to tell these people, hey, thank you for your years of work. I really appreciate you helping me build my company. Have fun going to You Break, I Fix to make $12 an hour. Like, that's... That's a shitty thing to do to people that are good. And the only, and I couldn't justify doing that until I got to the point where I realized if I stay here, this city will literally destroy me. At some point, I had to care about myself uh, and care about my own self-preservation more than I cared about helping others. Because if I stayed there, even if I didn't get my business destroyed by doing business in that city, the stress of, have, of wondering what will they try on me next would have destroyed me to the point where I wouldn't have had a business anymore. I couldn't handle the stress anymore. Like, it was always something. It was always something. Like, always, always, always something. I didn't even know about that lean until, like, six months after I moved. I didn't even know about the lean shit until six months after. Like, I'm sure I'm going to keep figuring out more stuff as time goes on, and I'm going to be very, very thankful that I made that decision. Hmm. You know, it's very easy for somebody in the YouTube comment section to say, like, why don't you abandon six people, uproot your entire life, start over with no certainty somewhere else? Yeah, I don't feel, I feel like doing that. You know, when you become an employer, to be clear, I, I, f I feel sick when I hear people say that their employees are family. No, they're not. Like, I, that, I physically wretch when bosses and business owners pretend that their employees are friends, family, or like them. They are not. They are your employees. And behind your back, the moment they leave the room, they talk with each other about how much they fucking hate you. Which is, admittedly, I consider that a healthy thing to do. You know, employees, 
Essentially, they need the ability to shit talk their boss to other people. Uh, that being said, aside from all that, I will never say I see my employees as family, friends, or anything like that, because that's cringe as fuck. Any boss that says that's f it's fucking horribly cringe, they're out of touch with reality, they forget what it's like to be an employee entirely. That being said, you are somewhat responsible for other people. Like, to some extent, I'm not saying you take responsibility for every decision they make in life, but you know, your decisions genuinely do affect their lives. So if I'm gonna make a decision that's going to fuck with the lives of 12 people, there really has to be a certain threshold that I go over before I, before I do that. Uh, especially if I'm not only, so even for the people, let's forget about the people that can't move. Like, let's, okay, that's like six people that get fired. The six people that do move. What if I move and instead of being, you know, let's say, you know, let's say instead of being a business that like, uh, like takes in 100,000 and like pays 95K in expenses or some shit like that, I become a business that takes in 40,000 with 60K in expenses. They're gone. They're all gone. Like, you know, if, if you mess something up, you know, I, I can't, that's probably why I wouldn't, be able to, I wouldn't be able to be an effective politician, and I definitely wouldn't be effective at running a giant company, because you have to make decisions when you're at that level that are going to affect and admittedly negatively affect the lives of thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people so that you could help somebody else. And you, you don't even know if your decisions that you make are actually going to be the right one until after you do it. So it's, it's just a very difficult one. Thoughts on no, from Kiwi Farms, any chance of a collaboration? Not even close, no. Uh, again, as I said before, I have posted on Reddit r slash Apple because I get talked about there. I've posted on Mac Rumors because I get talked about there. I've posted on Kiwi Farms because I read that there's a website where people fuck with you endlessly, especially if you're famous. And I was just kind of curious. It's a crazy curiosity. Am I mentioned on this website? So I found my thread. I have only ever used that website to comment on a thread where dozens of people were discussing me for several pages. Like that does like I, I'm I'm not I don't I don't I don't go barbecuing with like the moderator of Mac Rumors or Analog Kid like a guy who spent like 15 pages talking about how I'm a piece of shit that makes shit up and all that like I don't I, I don't you know I, I don't go to meetup groups with the guy that runs Reddit R slash Apple and I don't do collaborations with these people like it's like it, it, it's not it, it's not that type of relationship like I you know again like that they have their own problems with remaining on the internet and a lot of that is a reflection of like the culture and content of the site. There's the principled standpoint of whether or not something should be allowed to be taken off the internet, and then there's just a the whole, like, based on everything else, is this something that people want to preserve and something you want to be associated with? Yeah, I, I kind of don't. Maybe that makes me a piece of shit. Possibly it does. I don't know. That's not the hill I feel like dying on. I'm doing a good enough job dying on the hill of uh, failing to get meaningful right to repair change already. I'm failing enough trying to get something passed that I believe in with all my heart to, you know, fail, like, having, I don't guess, having a website that everybody just uses the N-word nonstop staying up. Like, it's just, I'm not invested in that. I just don't care. It's not my hill to die on. Mm. One more bite. One more bite. I did the thing you're not supposed to do. I got two. <laughs> I got two.
Steak sauce from Mason, Texas is some of the best stuff I've ever had in my life. I'm going back to that place. Probably next weekend. Fathead spices. Fathead spices. Sizzling steak sauce. Damn good. Ask me, what's the extra A in AMAA stand for? Ask me almost anything. So an example of a question that is not, is not with, included within the almost is, Lewis, who is your current girlfriend or slash what are you dating right now? I learned that lesson. There's literally one fucking time over the course of my life. Okay, admittedly two. One was very, very, very low-key, though. You, you didn't even really see her face. The other one was partic people participated in the stream of, man, she got stalked. People followed her. Literally, somebody followed her around the fucking country. Somebody figured out where she lived and fucking started harassing her dad and shit. Like, no. Just, I'm sorry. A lot of you are good people, but some of you are incredibly sick fucks. And because I can't really differentiate between which one of you are good people and which one of you are sick, twisted fucks, I, I kind of keep that shit private. Also, admittedly, from watching the Destiny situation, you know... If I start dating somebody that, like, tries to convince me to let other people fuck them or whatever, and that ends poorly, like, it, again, that's, that hasn't happened yet, but, you know, if I'm ever so unlucky, I, I, don't, I don't need that shit on camera. There's no benefit to that. Be there's, there's really, there's a lot of downside and not a lot of benefit. I, I, I strongly agree with the Eli the Computer Guy stance, which is you will never see my wife, you will never meet my wife, you will never hear from my wife. Like, you know, if I, ever get that, if I ever get serious enough about a girl that, like, I'm close to the whole marriage and kids thing, like, you, you're not going to know she exists. I, learn, I, I, let that, I let that wall break once. I will never do that shit again. I'll do a collab for you. Uh, co collaborations are boring to me because you have to have a premise for the collaboration, you know? Like, and usually what you have to do is you have to invent the premise, and inventing the premise for the collaboration winds up making it feel artificial and boring. Maybe I'm just too autistic for it, I don't know. If you watch the collaboration that I did with, uh, like what I did with Linus in 2015 or 2016, it's so autistic. I come on. Like, what am I even doing there? It just doesn't make any sense. Like, I came up with a false premise, which is let's replace a chip on a board that I don't even know if it works. I don't even know if this is the problem, but let's just like replace it just so I have a chip. It just, it just came on, I don't know, I'm not good at that shit. Like the, the stuff that went well, like, okay, Jessa Jones, like anytime I've done a video with Jessa Jones in it, like the mailbag reading, that was fun. I did, an, I did, I did a talk with Rich Rebuilds for like 20 to five minutes. That was fun, because like Rich and I are kind of on the same level. We agree with, on a lot of shit. Uh, I, I look up to him as a human being, not just as a content creator, but like for who he is as a person. Uh, he's one of the few people on YouTube that I have a genuine level of respect for off of the platform. Uh, he's one of the, you know, I want to see him become as successful as possible. He's a genuinely good dude. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, like, uh, there was one video I did talking about Tim Herman a while back where he managed to beat a large company at Border Pair when he was 18. And like he fixed something they could, and that was cool. Uh, the people from Edison Motors, like, I didn't really see that as a collaboration so much as it was a meeting of people that had mutual respect for each other to talk about a topic that they would be talking about without a camera. When I hear the word collaboration, I think of video that is being created for the camera without any sort of real-world context to it <laughs> so that there is content to have been created. Uh, and, like, and so that there is, so that, like, cre making something so that there is content to be created and that's, you know, like, uh, with a, it's, it's, just, it's just not really the theme of this channel. Like, this whole channel from the beginning has just been me talking about whatever the fuck was on my mind as I go through life. Like, it wasn't even supposed to be a right to repair channel. It's just like, I talked about my frustrations as a repair shop owner. I didn't know that two million people would tune in and listen. I talked about my frustration with finding New York real estate. Like, why the fuck are 600,000 people watching me measure a space? It's, it's you know, this channel, it's kind of like the, this channel was the process of me living my life. <laughs> It was not really, it, it's not like, it, it, there's nothing like scripted here. It's not like, you know, I, I wake up and I say, 
I need to produce something today. Let's make a script. Because there are people I've I'm not going to say who because it would be tactless. But I've been in the room with other people who have larger channels than me. And I literally watched this dude literally just start Googling to figure out what was trending. And then just like say, okay, what's somebody saying on Twitter about this? Okay, what can we say about it that'll get views? And then they just make a video. And it's like, there's really, no, like, you're literally just making more people argue for no good reason. You don't even necessarily believe in the shit that you're saying. You're just saying that because you know if you say that, you'll get, do a YouTube video that makes two to $3,000 rather than get, you know, actually provide value to the world. It's like, I, it's not, you know, it's, it's just not like what this is. And like, I don't know what it was, but watching the actual, like watching the, watching the gears move when I was in that room as the person was going over it, it just, ugh. I hope Rich moves out of there. Sad things are so expensive. I, the last time I saw Rich, I actually, it was Seabrook, New Hampshire. Very nice, honest shop. He, he, I think he lives in Massachusetts. I could be wrong, but has a shop in New Hampshire. Would you consider appearing in Joe Rogan's if invited? Yeah, sure. Listen, I talk to almost anybody. I've talked to National Review and American Conservative. I've talked to Tim Pool. I've talked to Destiny. I've talked to, uh, who was the other guy? Sam Cedar. I've talked to, I've talked to New York Times. I've talked to, I've talked to a number of different outlets. Like, I'll talk with almost anybody, like virtually anybody. If I believe that I could have an influence, <laughs> if I believe that I can have an influence or like plant a seed that may change shit, I'll talk to people. What pivotal moment in your life made you write to repair advocate? Hearing that one person say in 2015 that an Apple lobbyist told them that when I replace a component on a board or run a wire, I'm converting a MacBook to a PC and then misrepresenting it as if it was a MacBook to my customer, which is, which is fraud, because after that it's not a MacBook anymore, it's a PC. And wanting to kill myself because I did not have a camera in the room. After that, I thought to myself, any time this topic is ever brought up, I'm going to have a camera and a microphone in the room. And I don't care if it's the best quality. I don't care if I have the best arguments. I don't care, if it's the, I don't care what it costs me. Anytime this topic comes up, I'm going to have a camera in the room so that the rest of the world understands what lying sacks of fucking dog shit all of you people actually are. And uh, that, that, was, that was it for me, like hearing that thing. I, and like realizing that nobody would ever believe that you said ridiculous shit like that because I didn't have a camera. Like, why would you believe me if I don't have, I don't have proof of it? I wouldn't believe that. I would not believe myself if somebody, t if, if I was one of you and I was listening to me say that that was what I heard. Like, why would you believe that? It sounds so ridiculous. So I'm like, I'm going to catch you. If you ever do that shit again, I'm going to catch you. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to lead to change. And honestly, a small part of it for me, it wasn't even really necessary. Like, I didn't even think that we would lead to, it would lead to change. I didn't think, well, if I, if I reveal that you said this lie, that that's going to mean that a bill gets passed. That never really was went through, what went through my head. What I figured is, if people get to hear the bullshit that you tell the public, something's going to change. I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe it's not the law. Maybe it's not who people vote for. Maybe it's not the, maybe it'll be the minds of the people that watch. Maybe it'll be their level of engagement. Maybe it'll be the level of awareness they have in their own personal lives as to how they're being lied to by people like you. And maybe that'll result in a world where we have better outcomes. I don't know what it is. It was, what it was is just realizing the fact that you're allowed to say that stuff in a closed room and never be held accountable was so aggravating to me that I did not care how much money it would cost. I didn't care, like, buying camera equipment, flying around the country, taking time off of work. Whatever it was, it was worth it so that you don't get away with it. It was a feeling of anger. Uh, just hearing people lie and slander the entire industry like that. Like, I'm, you're, you're literally telling my local politicians that govern my city and my state and my district that I am committing fraud. Fuck you. Rossman called me on his last video with the other Mark Schaefer. Are you the iPhone fixing Mark Schaefer in Florida or a different Mark Schaefer that's the imposter of the real Mark Schaefer who fixes iPhones in Florida? There's no way there's two people with that word. I refuse to believe there's two people with that name. That's just, that's too much of a damn coincidence. Yeah, it was just, it was realizing that you, you got to get away with slandering my industry and I'm never going to get to say anything about it. And this really kind of goes back to the point I mean before about whether I talk on Reddit, Mac rumors, uh, r slash Apple, Websites that are like filled with random garbage. Like if I'm, be it, it comes back to this basic principle. If you're going to talk about me and you're going to talk about me in a negative manner, I want to be in the room for it. I want to be in the room for it so I can answer. Not just so that I can answer, but so that I can let you know that I'm watching you, you shit. I'm, I want to let you know that if you try to say this bullshit, that I will retort it in a manner that ensures that you never have a reputation ever again. Unfortunately, that didn't actually work. Those people have been able to continuously lie for years and years on end, in spite of how many times you record them, they just, they, yeah, they, 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 keep, they keep winning. So, But listen, I put in the effort, so at least I can't say that I didn't do anything. At least I can say that I put in the effort, that I did what was, you know, that I did something. 
Um, yeah. Did it work out the way I wanted? Not really. Is it better than doing nothing at all? I hope so. You'll at least learn some skill sets along the way, you know? <laughs> I, I definitely became a better speaker. If I look at the way that I talked in 2012, then the way I talked in 2018, then the way I talk now, I feel like it made me a better speaker. I feel like it made me a better strategist. You know, it comes down to a lot of this, like even the stuff that I learned in this job, like my boss saying, you know, hey, you know what, it means someone. It's like the you know, co-creator of WhatsApp tells you, like, I feel more comfortable spending. I feel comfortable on these things when you're in the room. I don't really know how to quantify that. I don't know how you add that as a line in a resume. I don't know what you call that skill. When somebody that's worth over a billion dollars says, I feel more comfortable, you know, throwing money at things when you're there, that's cool. Like, I don't, I think a lot of those skills I got from like all these things that I took part in, uh, and you know, I, I didn't even realize I was picking up all these skills that came along, like organizing, um, f organizing, fundraising, rhetoric, uh, you know, teaching, like there's, there's a lot of little things that, little soft skills that kind of helped. Wear shirt, white shirt and not get anything on it. Uh, I probably did, you just can't see it because of the lighting. It's all, it, having a dark room in this lighting and whatever settings I have, it, it's very, very tricky. Like the shirt is not, it, it's almost like virtual, uh, it's, it's like, you know, video filter bleach. How old are you going to put your effort into making your business? Uh, this one, 19. Again, it didn't really start to click and not suck until maybe 23, 24. I started, like, it took a while. I, I moved out, on, uh, like, instead of having to live with other people, I didn't have an apartment where I lived on my own until I was 20. And again, that was really a, like, lived on my own is really kind of a meme. You know, I, I, could, I, I lived in a place that was filled with termites. Um, I had a landlord that would say, what are you, Pinocchio? They're not after you. Like, that's, yeah, like, lived on my own. It was $400 a month, 400 bucks a month. You're, you're, you're going to live with something. If, if not roommates, pe something that crawls on you. It's, you're not, there's no such thing as, as privacy at that budget. How do you file a question? Listen, do you have an opinion on non-oversampling NOS DACs for something like more normal? I have an opinion that if you had an ABX blind test setup, that there is nobody in the world, I mean nobody, that would be able to get that 12 out of 16 times and be able to pass a basic hydrogen audio test that's existed for a long period of time. I do software and live in Indiana. Uh, i just been following for a couple of years to beef up my hardware understanding. That's cool. What kind of software do you do? I'm always interested in these things, what people are doing. Uh, I check Social Blade and Lewis has over half a billion video views. 90% of those are probably a subway grate in New York City. You've been talking for six straight hours. Yeah, I really thought the stream would be like 15 minutes. I keep trying to get to the end of the chat, but there's no way to actually get to the end of the chat because it just keeps going and going and going and going and going. Thank you, Devin. It really means a lot. I have the only option of what passes as a basic flip phone. It has Kai OS and is absolute garbage. It's nearly unusable. Huh. I was thinking about doing the same thing you was talking about, exploring and driving around a highway without GPS, just exploring around. It's fun. Just make sure you, you have a decent tank of gas and you know where the, you know where the gas stations are. If you think you are correct, but where's the fun in that? Uh, the fun in that is when you have a wallet. Uh, you can spend, if you want to spend money, listen, I guarantee you 90% of the people that spend more than 20 bucks on a DAC have no room treatment, no acoustic panels, no bass traps, no nothing. Um, spend money where it matters. Do not spend thousands of dollars in bullshit speaker cable. Your speaker cable for your setup should not cost you more than 50 fucking dollars. And when I say 50 bucks, I'm assuming that your speakers have to be far away from your amp for whatever reason. That's the only reason I'm giving you a budget of more than 20 bucks. Your... Speaker cable should be like 20, 50 bucks, max. You should not be spending money on DACs. You should not be spending money on preamps. You should not be spending money on amplifiers. Spend your money, good speakers, room treatment. Because nobody has that. When I see that somebody has like a $5,000 DAC and they have fucking sheetrock and drywall untreated in their entire room, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? What is the point of all this? You're never going to enjoy any of that. Like, you're not even going to enjoy it because your room is such a clusterfuck of flutter echo and, and standing waves and bass. It's like plus 12 dB at 60 hertz, minus 18 dB at 68 hertz, that there's no point. You're not going to enjoy it. You're going out of your way with this, in, dare I say it, like, there has to be some sort of psychiatric diagnosis for somebody that will have a room with a $6,000 DAC where you can barely even fucking measure the difference with hardware, but then have nothing, no room treatment, no nothing else. 
maybe the psychiatric disorder is, you know, I don't know, marrying somebody that doesn't have the same values. So you can't hang that stuff in your living room without getting yelled at. But I digress. They have... No, they, they will spend $5,000 for a difference that you can barely measure with a fucking sound card. But they will not spend $20 on some Owens Corning 703 to put on their wall that will make a difference that you can hear immediately. It's insane. It's insane. When I see people with fucking Wilson speakers, when I see people with Paradigm Studio 100s, when I see people with Vandersteen Model 7s that go for $70,000 in a room, like an untreated living room, what the fuck are you doing? You could have a Vandersteen Model 2C from 1984 that you got for $300 on Audio Gone or Craigslist with a room treatment that costs you $500 that will sound better than those Vandersteen Model 7s in your untreated shit-ass room. But God forbid I spend any of my money on shit that actually matters. I don't understand it. It has to be a mental illness. And it's a, it has to be. There's no way you could tell me otherwise. It shit's insane. It's actually insane. Do I have the best room treatment? No. I, I really should have more panels and more than just two-inch uh, panels over here. And I have, I have like 13 bass traps. I'd have 14 if Kick Acoustics would actually fucking send me the 14th one I paid for two months ago. But that's a... Uh, but I, I have a lot of bass... You know, I have a lot of shit here. It's not... I would even say it's not enough already. But I would rather have this with speakers I paid $1,000 for than speakers that I paid $70,000 for and no room treatment. It would literally sound worse to have the $70,000 speakers. Buy... Some Van buy some used Vandersteen Model 2 on Audio Gone or Craigslist for 300 bucks. Create some acoustic panels using Owens Corning 703 that you buy from some insulation shop. All you need is some 2x4s and some burlap. You build that shit. You hang it on your wall. That will sound better than an audiophile system that somebody spent $300,000 on. I promise you. Don't know much about it, SK. Don't know much about it at all. Also, why would we type the same comment and literally have nothing else added to it but two pieces of punctuation? That's just mean. You know that I'm trying to answer questions from like 700 people at a time, and you do that anyway. That's fucking selfish, bro. Come on. You can make your own quadratic diffusers. There's a calculator to give you the dimensions you need for your room. So what are, you going to, what are you going to with YouTube API cutoff? See, that's another one of those sentences that I don't understand. I don't use the YouTube API. I don't, re I don't recall ever using the YouTube API, so I don't believe I have a reason to care about the YouTube API very much. I haven't used it personally, and I haven't used it for business. It's not really, uh, not really relevant to me at this point in time. Gray J is called Gray J because it's called Gray J. Can't do much about the acoustic room itself, but definitely got to put in the effort to get the most out of what you've got. Why not? Why not? Why not? You can't afford acoustic panels? Fine. Buy some, buy some fucking Owens Corning 703. Get some 2 by 4s I don't give a shit. Cut down a tree in your backyard. You probably have some nails in your garage. All you got to do at that point is buy some Owens Corning 703. Buy some cheap-ass burlap. Use a f with, you, that's all you need. That's all you need. Uh, you know, I, more users would always be nice, some rise. More, more users would always be nice. I'm I'm quite relaxed underscore. I don't I don't have all caps in my username. I'm a, I do advocate passionately that people spend three hundred dollars on room treatment rather than spend seventy thousand dollars on speakers. You can be relaxed while being a, uh, while being a passionate advocate for something. Here I'm a passionate advocate for people to not care. Insulating room with Rockwell sound insulation helps also help. Uh, I don't I think Rockwell is not even so much about audio. It's more about you know, it's kind of like weathering, like, you know, it's not even about that. I think Rockwell really has a lot more to do with, uh, you know, like weather insulation kind of shit. Like, you know, keeping it war keeping your house warm and stuff like that. Owens Corning 703 is awesome. It's just expensive. But it's way cheaper than, like, buying pre-built acoustic panels. Like, you'll still save money off of buying pre-built acoustic panels. You buy Owens Corning 703, which is one of the best because it has a lot of, not only does it absorb a lot, but it's also very linear in its absorption. So it's not like, like, like you know, wavy shit. It's like... About to be a white collar engineering manager for the first time. Only if I shit managers myself. Advice: Don't assume that you don't assume that there weren't good reasons for your managers to be shit. Because if you think that person was a bad person, I'm not going to be a bad person. I'm a good person, therefore I'm going to be a good manager. You're, 
you're going to go into it and maybe realize that the reason some of your managers sucked was because of the circumstances they were in. Instead of going into it assuming that your managers were bad people, I would assume that your managers were good people that had to deal with miserable circumstances so that you stay on the watch for it. Don't assume that you're the good guy and that they're the bad guy. What I've the more, Again, I'm, to be clear, I'm not an engineer. I, I, barely, I barely graduated, you know, I barely had, was able to get out of high school. So please take what I say with a grain of salt. But a lot of people, I think they assume that like the world, all these people are evil, and if I get into that position, I'll be able to do things better. And the problem with that is that it, that gives you blinders because you're not expecting to be challenged in certain ways, and you're also more likely to make mistakes as a result of not fully thinking through why your manager did something the way that they did. I'm not saying that you should do the things your manager did, nor am I saying that you should listen to them and you know like really try to mimic their mannerisms, mimic their policies, or mimic the way they dealt with people. Just oh, assume until you know better that the reason that they did the things that they did were because they were dealing with difficult circumstances rather than because they're evil people. If you see yourself, very rarely is the person that sees themselves as the good guy or the savior actually the person that is the savior or the good guy. Like the older I get, the more I realize that like shit is the way it is for a reason. I'm not saying that, uh, that, that it should be always, but like it, there's usually a reason. Try to understand the reason that those people sucked as managers to you before you go in there and decide I'm going to change everything. I'm not saying you shouldn't change everything. Just go in there with the understanding. No API plus jobs and no API. Uh, no API usage, no thank you. No, no sir, no how. I would never use an a I would never use an OA YouTube API without their permission. I I would never use the YouTube API without their permission. That's not not no sir. No sir. I uh, API is not for me. Mm. Or bad circumstances, James Rudolph. Never attribute to malice, but is adequately adequately explained by stupidity. No, like I, you know, I kind of went into the LCD screen supply business with that same idea. All these other companies suck and they do all these things wrong. I'm not going to do it wrong. Do you know why all those other companies are doing it wrong? No profit margin. Because if you, God forbid, you say, I'm going to charge 50 cents more for this part, you go from 1,000 sales a day to 10 or 30. Why is that industry sucked the way it does? It's pe pe people, that, that's what people want to pay for. That, like, they, they don't want, you know. You, you, you learn why, th like the, the higher you climb on the ladder, the more you realize that the shit is fucked up the way it is for surprisingly rational reasons. I'm not saying the world isn't fucked. I'm just saying that the reason that a lot of this stuff is fucked is for a reason. I got my water, Michael. I'm good. I'm good. Cheers, Lewis. I think a lot of it was because career-wise there was nowhere else for them to go other than up into management. They prefer being individual contributors rather than management. What would be your biggest advice to a tech startup in California? I have absolutely no advice when I have no context, no idea what they're trying to do, no idea of what their problems are, and no idea of their industry. My advice is ask better questions. I want to get off streaming services and get a nice 4K entertainment set for my apartment. I have no idea where to start. Any advice? Um, what I would... Well, that's a difficult one because all again, the first thing is if you want to get off of streaming services, thank you, underscore. Thank you very much. Uh, hope you get a water as well. Uh, th so the first thing is what type of content do you actually want to watch? Because there's a lot of content where like you can only get it on a streaming service. There's certain content that's on Netflix that I literally cannot get anywhere else. So even if I wanted to get off Netflix and I wanted to purchase it elsewhere, I cannot. The only option at that point is piracy. Um, I prefer to avoid piracy if it's from a company that produces content in that way. You know, one of my friends has always said uh, like one, of the one of the worst things for, for you as a musician is when nobody even wants to pirate your shit anymore. I don't even want to create fake demand for it that way. And one of the things you find is if you want to get off of streaming services, you'll find out that you start consuming different types of content altogether. Uh, like for, for me, like it, it almost doesn't even make sense to have the TV that I have right now because 99% of the content I consume when I'm watching video is shit that's like produced by amateur people on YouTube and stuff like that where like th the, the quality of the video is secondary. It's not like I'm watching you know, some, some movie that was filmed that cost $38 million to do. Uh, so the first thing is, what type of content do you want to consume? If you decide that you want to stop using streaming services, you may uh, decide, okay, I'm going to do a lot of indie content, or you may just be relegating yourself to a life of piracy if you decide that you don't want to watch that stuff on the streaming services, because you want to watch stuff that's exclusive to streaming services. That may be very, very difficult to do. You know, there's a lot, like there are a lot of pieces of content now that don't, e where the content doesn't even show up on physical media anymore. Even if you want to purchase the physical media, you can't. Have you ever fully migrate your content to Rumble or Kick? 
It's a waste of time to even answer that question. I have content on Rumble, and again, 100% of the people that have asked, will you move the content to Rumble, don't even look to see that it's already there. Like, it's, just, it, it's a waste. Even the people that advocate for use of other platforms don't actually use those platforms themselves. So it's a really interesting paradox where the people that say you should use other platforms don't actually use them, because if they did, they noticed that I have a, a profile there with the exact same username that I do here. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing, though, to think about. Also, when you move to another platform, again, like you wind up with, with three viewers. It's just it, it's it's an it's an unfortunate reality of the way the world works. Like you get a platform, everybody shows up on that platform. Uh, getting people to show up on something else is virtually impossible. Whatever platform is the one that everybody's on winds up sucking the air out of the room for everybody else. I'd rather own media and pick and choose the physical media I own. Thank you, Picus today. I wrote an assembly program to dive 14 by 2 and add 23 just because I can. Well, Linux guy, that you have a skill set that I don't. And listen, if you if that worked and you accomplished it and you feel good about it, then good on you. Okay, I never thought I'd get to the end of the chat. I feel like I'm cheating because there were many, many times where I was so behind on chat by like 10 or 20 or 40 minutes that when I would scroll, it would literally delete 20 minutes of chat. So this doesn't really count as having answered everything. I feel like I, I missed out on quite a bit, and that's unfortunate And because I, I still haven't figured out a way to deal with YouTube's uh, chat system where when you get far enough behind on chat, when you scroll down, it literally scrolls. It just skips ahead and deletes everything in the beginning, which is fairly disappointing. I really do like trying to answer everybody's questions, whether they're paid or unpaid. I don't expect you guys to pay to get a question answered or to be able to engage in conversation. Uh, unfortunately, that's the reality of the communication system here. Sometimes I'm going to miss stuff. Uh, I'm about to get out of here because I, I, yeah, I, I kind of needed a little bit of, uh, yeah, I guess I needed an excuse to do something other than standard work and everything else. And I did that for about six hours and 36 minutes. Uh, I haven't streamed in a really long time, so it was kind of fun. Uh, it, was, it was a pleasure. Even, you know, the people that were trying to, like, quote uh, actions or things I've said, insanely out of context for the purposes of obvious slander. And even, you know, even fun, the, the, the people that were kind of trolling and just, like, saying nasty political shit just the fuck of it. You know what? I had fun with all of you. It was fun. It was a good afternoon. Uh, I hope you had a lovely Sunday. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And above all, I hope you have an enjoyable Monday morning. Many of you uh, probably don't enjoy waking up on Monday morning because you got to go to work. You got to get started with the grind again. I actually enjoy waking up on Monday morning. I enjoy waking up every day that I'm alive because, you know, you know what the alternative is to not getting up on Monday? You know what the alternative is to getting up on Monday morning? It's not getting up on Monday morning. And um, that sucks more. See you in the next one. And uh, enjoy your evening. Oh, and get a rocking chair. Really does. Yeah. Even if you don't have a view, some, a nice window to look out, nice stuff like that. Wherever you are in life, you get a nice rocking chair, a nice recliner. Ah, oh, it's fun. It does, does a lot of good. Anyway, see you later.